Alright, here we go on a Friday. Ah, it is. Ah, ah. I want it. Now it's time for Pass Puntino. Breaking ball, smack back up the middle, base hit in the center field. Garcia's in to score. Went races around third. He comes to home like a blur. And he slides across feet first safely. Throw back to the infield was cut off. Two run single, Vinny Pasquintino. Quiero ver el lado de tu bot, quiero ser tu bot boy. Que la sinceña es a tu ritmo, tu ubicación favorita. Swing and a liner down the right field line. That's in for a hit. It'll go all the way to the corner. Bobby Witt just jogs in from third base to score the 10th Royals run. Vinny's at second with an RBI double, his third RBI of the day. You think we weren't going to start with Pascantino again today? He had three more ribbies again. <laughs> that man has eight RBI in his last two games. It was three for five yesterday, three RBI. The Royals just destroyed the Astros yesterday oh, right here ass kicking. on 610 Sports Radio. 13-3, to three, a nine-run first inning, 11 hits against the starting pitcher in two thirds of an inning. That's the first time that's happened in big league history, I believe. That's what I saw yesterday. Just nuts. It was, Vin Mazzaro was a name that came to mind for a half second. That was two and a third, I think, and 14 runs and in in something like that. Dude, he had to the, wear it This yesterday. kid would have matched the Vin Mazzaro if they would have just left him in there. He would have he, he would have been the new Vin Mazzaro. Hunter Brown, I think it was, for the Astros. The Royals stay hot seven in a row. Yeah, so Vinny's staying hot. The Royals are staying hot. Are you, are I you, didn't curse anything. You didn't I'm curse anything. Great. Yeah, the, the Vinny stuff is all on you. I, my, I can't go ahead and give you credit for the seven-game winning streak. They had already won five in a row. No, the only two of the was games. Hot. Vinny, full, full, we got to keep doing it until something changes with Vinny. And the team is likely going to keep on winning as long as Vinny stays hot. So here we are, and they're the hottest team in baseball, and they get a clean sweep of the entire homestand. So, it's only happened three times in franchise history. So, in the, so in the two days that you've made that had that performance Vinny had a career night and then something happened for the first time in big league history yesterday uh-huh. is what you're saying yeah and Vinny Pasquantino is I mean he's legitimately seven for his last nine with a walk and eight RBI in his last two games since we started doing the Pasquantino song again so yes I will be doing a, another live version of that song today to carry us into the weekend then I have to drive down to Wichita for my daughter's dance thing should I be sending out a social media video on Saturday and Sunday Am I still obligated to do it over the weekend? Or you could one Friday yesterday. performance carry me yeah, through? Look, if you're going to do it when Drew and I are on the show, then I expect you to do it when we're not here as well. Oh. I expect it to happen on Saturdays yes. and on Sundays until, uh, again, I, I guess until there's an Ofer day or something. That That's how long you have to keep singing now. Until there's an Ofer performance from Vinny. I mean, even if the team, even, no. even if the team stays hot, uh, the, the song is tied to Vinny Pasquantino. I mean, borderline remarkable. I I can't even. I can't believe that this is the kind of run he has been on during this time because it, I mean, it defies logic. One that like we thought the Royals would be much more competitive, obviously. Right. I mean, who wouldn't have, who wouldn't have thought that we, we we thought the Royals were going to fight harder in this thing, but I certainly didn't think that they were going to win seven games in a row, have the best run differential in baseball and then Vinny Pasquantino was going to turn into an unstoppable hitting machine. And yet, you know what? Here we are. This is the best. This is the most fun the world's been in so oh, long. Yeah. And look, I'm not saying that because, like Vern said, don't say they're not fun. No, but it is fun. But it is. <laughs> it's both. They're both good, and it's fun. That's the difference. No question. I mean, yesterday, when you have an inning like that, I mean, how can you not? Uh, you see the smiles on everybody's face in the clubhouse. And just, this team is loose. This team is all the confidence in the world. They're a loose bunch. Nobody's pressing anymore. Mm-hmm. All the things that the bad months of April usually lead to, you know, a weekend and you already can sense everybody's feeling the pressure. They have to go out and win. Now they're going out and they're expecting to win and they're, they're just ultra loose and nobody's feeling any pressure currently. And that's the beautiful thing. And, Hopefully it continues on the road. They're in New York tonight. They're going to open up a series against the Mets. You'll hear it right here on 610 Sports Radio at City Field. They got a couple against the White Sox after that, who are the worst team in baseball maybe then other it than gets the Marlins. And because they got the, the Orioles, who are very good. But and they'll be back home at that point. And mm-hmm. they got the best run differential in baseball. The best run differential in baseball. This plus 39 is the single greatest run differential streak in Royals since like 1977. Okay? Just let you know. 
For this amount of games, they haven't had this stretch of domination since 1977. That's where I don't think, like, we walk in today, and I'll ask a question in a minute related to it, but when we walk in today, I don't think anything is absurd if you were saying, hey, I now think they're going to make the playoffs, or I think they're going to win the Central, or can this team win a World Series? Like, look, I think it's early, because it certainly is, but I don't think it's unfair to talk about those things anymore. Not with the team playing like this. What would the record have to be at the end of April, by the way, for you, Gold, on May 1st to say, 100% 100% the Royals are making the postseason. Uh, well, there is no well, number. Fine. 80%. Yeah, 80% there's nothing. the Royals are making the postseason. You officially think it's going to happen. What would the record at the end of April need to be? There isn't a number for April. All right, we've been around Damn. this point. Yeah, no been, number. No, because we, we, we've been around baseball long enough to know that that's just not how that works. You, you're, you, I, I don't care what kind of April that you actually have. You're, there, there's no April. You're like, well, now I can just ignore what ha- I'm not even worried about what happens the rest of the season. They're going to find a way to get there. Look, what I, I think we're seeing they got 12 uh, is, left. yeah, I mean, look, if this winning streak, be, you know, becomes 19, you know, 20 in a row or something. Okay, fine, Cody. I'll give you it then. Like, other than that, no. You know, uh, that, that's there. Yeah, they have 20 games left, I think. 18. Okay, so if they if they want to drag the winning streak on for another 18 games, Cody, then I guess I'll have to give it to you. But no, there's nothing you can do in April that you can say 100% means you're making the playoffs. And I've been very optimistic about the team. I had the highest win total on this show going into the season. So I'm not changing the the, the playoff uh, expectation yet. Yeah, we're all very firm in there. You were 78. I was 76. Drew was 77. Yeah. So, look, I, I would tell you right now, if you made me guess a new number right now, I'd guess a new number. And I'd guess a higher number than 76. My yeah. my assumption would alter, and I'm assuming yours would too, if you were just forced to pick a new number of win total. I would choose a different. But if, how how, how much more? That's 12, the question. Like you know, oh, for me, it's, you know it's, it's baseball. Of, four or five games. Yeah, it's 70, 80, 81. Yeah, seventy-eight. I'd go to eighty or something. Yep. Yeah. Um, if they went twelve and six, I would. I would think they're making the playoffs. I would like come on the air and be like, "This team's making the playoffs." That would put them. They're already five games above five hundred. Six more games above five hundred. When that type of shit, they'd be eleven games over five hundred in the month of April. I would then start to believe, like, because that is. Hey, can you play 500 baseball the rest of the way, right? It's it's the normal thing. Can you give me normal average baseball the rest of the season and this team can make the postseason? That's when I would really start to think, okay, we're there. But I don't think it's crazy to start imagine like daydreaming. Like coming into the day, sure. it's kind of fun to daydream a little bit, isn't it? Absolutely. Like even like, oh, what if this team, you know, I just never thought they they didn't just beat the Astros. I mean, they wrecked them the last two games. That's one of the better teams in baseball over the last five years. Look, it was easy to stick it to the White Sox a little bit. That team stinks. And I still go back to what we talked about at the beginning of the season. They are 9-4. and four. They could easily be 11-2. and two. I, Just easily. And look, I'll take the 9-4. and four. I'm not complaining no, about that. No, I hear that. you. I, I, but yeah, they've you. played so good. Now, look, they, I mean, I get it. They, we can do, it's baseball. We can do this throughout sure, the whole year. Sure, they had to come from behind to beat the White Sox in one game, remember, because the White Sox had like a lead late into a game and they still had to beat them, but... I this team is playing so well. Yeah. They are starting to alter how I'm feeling about them versus just going into the year. All I wanted was I was just thirsty for some competitive baseball. They're they, they're playing far beyond that right now. They are. But and that's what I think this start has is cemented to me. I think it is cemented potentially being competitive the entire season. I don't think it's cemented that they're just going to be a five game above 500 baseball team now the entire year. I think that the same way I think we're used to it because the the first two weeks of the last couple seasons, we've all viewed the season being over two weeks in because of how bad they've been. And so now they're off to a great two plus weeks Mm -hmm. and we're asking the question, well, are they, are they making the playoffs? Just because you, you can get yourself out of the playoff race already two weeks in, you can't put yourself in two weeks in. And I think that's where we're, where there's maybe a little bit of confusion, at least for me, on, on how people are, are, are reacting to the question you posed. You know, th- like what, th- this, I think there's this, a number start, in April where I'd start to think it, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just, and I, I, I feel great about where things are trending. I just think you got to be very careful about April 12th saying that, you know, they're they're now definitively doing anything. I think the only thing I can definitively feel confident saying is uh, that they're, they're going to be competitive. You know, that was my biggest question. Could they be competitive throughout the summer? I feel very confident that that's, a, that's something we're going to see, but I don't know how I can sit here even, even on April 12th and be like, well, in August, they're going to, yeah, they're going to be in first place in the AL central. 
I hope that's the case. Trust me, financially, it'd be very nice. We've talked about our preseason bets. Oh, yeah. uh, AL Central, 30-1 to 1 bet. Yes, I, I feel very good about where it's trending. A uh, hedge opportunity, but I can't definitively tell you they're winning the division. Someone says wait until July before we get too excited. Look, oh, you I, can get excited now. I think absolutely be excited. Why wouldn't you be yeah. excited now? Why wouldn't you just enjoy it? Yeah, that excitement is one thing. Saying they're making a playoff to, to me is is more than excitement. Look, I've told you before. One of the single, like, I understand the World Series years. I'm telling you right now, the enjoyment I got out of the 2003 Royals rivals that of some of the best seasons when they were actually winning because I was so starved for it at that point that it was just like, ah, oh, look at this team. Anything is possible with the 2003 Royals. And they came up short, obviously, in the postseason. Although they did, I mean, they, I think they won 83 games that year, if I remember right. And then the following three years, they lost 100. Uh, right. Uh, well, what's the, no- okay, I guess I get another way of phrasing what you were asking. And they were 17 and 7 that year in April. I just went to go look it up. Uh, uh, so, I mean, you know, they were 10 games above 500 and still missed. Another way of phrasing what you were asking, maybe, the, if I to lock in a win number. I guess that's a better, other than saying like, hey, uh, it's definitively saying making playoffs, things like that at the end of the month. Right this second, if I threw out an 83 win season, would you still lock that in? I think you have to, personally. I don't want to. I, I would lock that number in, yes. You'd lock in 83 and be like, hey, next year's our year. Absolutely. And 83 gives you a chance to be within a game or two, potentially. I don't want to lock it in. Okay, that's fine. I I'm know just that, curious. Look, this is logic brain versus the heart part of it, right? <laughs> if, if, if you had told me before the season, hey, man, lock in 83, how could I turn that down? Right. I mean, legitimately, how could I have turned it down? And the answer is I couldn't. It wasn't really a choice. So what's the number where you stage. wouldn't, where, where you would, if I told you. 86. I need like a number that would win the division. <laughs> okay. All Give right. me a number that would like have a chance to actually take on the AL Central. And then we're talking a little bit. Okay. Um. But no, I love it. I mean, how can you not be enjoying the hell out of what's going on right now? And I hope, and we'll talk more about this in the 11 o'clock hour, where things are pacing and what maybe could happen on this road trip. The Royals come back home next Friday. I mean, if they have a winning road trip or even just a 500 road trip or whatever, the numbers of attendance have to go up next weekend. Have yeah. to be better. They're, they're the third worst in baseball right now. And they've played 10 home games. They've got less attendance than teams that have played three or four. Yeah, it's not good. I... And I don't know if Vinny was calling him out last night or if he was just being like, hey, fans, are you enjoying a good time? Because I think you could probably take it. I probably should have just asked him, but um, I think you could have probably taken that either way. But it made me think of it as the point. When Vinny said that last night, he's like, hey, fans, are you enjoying it? My initial thought was like, there haven't been that many fans enjoying it in the building. Like, there's been plenty of people who've been enjoying the Royals and have enjoyed this. But yeah, attendance is embarrassing. Yeah, Especially I get for, for like the mountain of people that tell me like, I love the K. I'll never leave it. You can't rip it from my cold, dead hands. You're not showing up like it matters to you to that level. Yeah. So, I, like, yeah, I, I would, like, I, I can't speak for every player on the team. But, yeah, there should be more people out at the K. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame fans yet, though. I mean, I think that's a little unfair. Let's remember, you, you just mentioned it, the track record prior of, you know, they won 56 games last year, and you had multiple years before of miserable Aprils. Uh, so you know, school is the whole, you know, school is still in session weeknight stuff. I totally get, I'm just saying if they are still five plus games above 500 next Friday and Saturday, and the weather's good out at Kauffman stadium, then yeah, they, they should draw a, a big number uh, that that's when I think it's fair to be critical at that point. But right now on a Wednesday night game or a, a Thursday day game in April, I'm not going to, I'm not going to really when school's still in session. And, I think I won't really judge until school's out. School's out yeah. the true test of attendance. So you got to get to June, really, into May, June. Yeah, because they're not the only team struggling with attendance. And let's just be honest. The other team struggling with attendance have a better season ticket base than the Royals do. The Royals don't have a bunch of people lining up to season ticket. The only two teams you'd mention they're above stink and have no base. One of the teams they're close to, the Rays, at least have been a World Series right. competitive team this has not been in a- the last couple of years. The Royals have lost 100 games every year in perpetuity seemingly since 2016. And so, no, I don't blame them for that. But the way they're playing right now, yeah, I, again, they're not asking me to say this, nor are the players, but like, and I can't speak for them. Yeah, I think that more fans should be out there if they keep playing this. Hell, if they go, like you said, 500 in the road trip, I think some more butt should be in some more seats at Kauffman Stadium. Yeah, let's see what happens next weekend. Let's see what happens next weekend, depending on what the road trip is. 
uh, and what the weather is like next weekend. Let's, I'll be curious to see what the attendance numbers are. But I, I'm not going to fault anybody for a team that lost 56 games last year, and it's April, and it's a Thursday afternoon, or it's a Wednesday night uh, in, in on April 11th or 10th. I'm, that, that point, I think I understand why the numbers are. But they should be heading in an upward trajectory if this team continues to, to play great baseball. That's exactly what they are doing uh, at this point in time. We'll talk a little bit more about baseball, but uh, the latest details around Shohei Otani and the, the translator, the FBI, coming out with their details Ooh. yesterday uh, on what occurred. And some of the details are unbelievable. That's coming up in 15 minutes or so. But let's talk a little bit uh, about the draft. Bink was just in hosting uh, on Fesco in the morning. He's going to join us today during Club 610. He had his draft special last night. This is Bink's wheelhouse right here, man. This two-week stretch, this is what he lives for. All right? The draft is 13 days away, something like that. Uh, And now you think about... Uh, the rumors that are out there and the track record of this organization before the show Bink came out in the bullpen and he was talking about just how little they have spent on first round picks here during a Super Bowl run. And so the question really is, do we think that they are going to focus more on offense? This draft in general, if you just look at the, what people project in first round picks between quarterbacks and wide receivers and I mean, offense, it, heavy first round. Yeah, and it, it kind of is usually to begin with. And um, that's certainly what the talent pool looks like. I do think the chiefs are going to focus more on offense across all right now, seven picks. I think eventually they maybe only have six. Uh, but if you told me they have seven picks right now, yeah, I, I think at least three or four are offense. Well, and, and they the, should be. Most recently, it's been like five have been on defense out of like, let's say if it's seven. The percentage have been like 75% defense, 25% offense over the last couple of years. First off, what a treat for Bake. He's going to get a live performance of Pasquantino. There'll be I'm another sure that's why he's coming in, in studio. I'm sure. Honestly, I don't even know if he would have come in. And actually, to honor the original song, Despacito. I got Coronas today, you know? Nice. Let's let's lean nice. in a little bit, you know? I got Coronas today. I went to the store to pick up some beers to match the energy of this show. But from a, I've told you last year, and I think I was a little more on an island last year because you and I kind of went back and forth. I told you last year, I thought that I wanted him to go defense again. And look, I don't regret it. They were a Super Bowl winning team with the best defense in the NFL. I thought they should have gone heavy defense. I'm back. We've hit the swing. I'd like some offense now. It's been long enough with enough players coming close to the end of their contracts. You almost have to go 70% offense in this draft. You have offensive linemen, only one of which is locked up long-term, and that's Jawan Taylor. You don't have long-term answers at left guard or center or right guard yet. Now, you can make options or certainly left tackle. Your only wide receiver is locked up semi-long-term is Rishi Rice. Then you have no qualifying answers. Tight end's a big mystery and how long that'll go. Running back, et cetera. Running backs just fall off a cliff. So other than Mahomes and Rishi Rice, you don't have a lot of, oh, for sure this person's locked into that position. I think it's a big year for the go heavy on offense. I don't know if Brett Veach is going to do it, but I don't see any reason why not only 70% of your draft but two of your first three picks should be on that side of the ball, if not three out of your first four. Yeah, break down the needs of the team. I mean, you, go, you can go through, and the top two needs, now that you've done a great job at uh, addressing, I think, the defensive line, you retain Chris Jones, and you you brought back most of the same defensive front, uh, and you have invested already significant draft capital two straight years on a edge rusher in both Felix and Carl Loftus, yeah, it's time to swing it back over to the offense. And your biggest needs, I still think, heading in are wide receiver and offensive tackle. So that makes sense. If, if we agree on that, uh, then, then you need to make sure you're able to uh, find some stability at those positions. Mm-hmm. And the best way to make sure you extend the window in the dynasty is, of course, through the draft. They're not a dynasty without all the success they've had through these draft picks. It's why they were able to go ahead and trade Legereus Sneed on the defensive side because they had success drafting Trent McDuffie because they had success drafting even Jalen Watson and Joshua Williams in other areas. So now it's time to give a little boost to the offensive side. Yes, you got Patrick Mahomes. That's always the, 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 the biggest trump card of the whole thing. But you need to continue to build and support. And, I, and you and I uh, look at Travis Kelsey and how many years he's going to play differently. But at some point, like you, you, need to, you need to also have a position well where offensively at the wide receiver spot, you can have some guys you feel you can rely on for the long haul. Whether you think it's this year that they need it, but it's more about even 2026, honestly, uh, from the wide receiver draft as far as I'm concerned. Like this year going in, if you told me they had Rasheed Rice, let's just assume he's not missing games, but maybe he does with a suspension. Rasheed Rice and Hollywood Brown with Travis Kelsey, 
that 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 would work for this year. But long term, Hollywood Brown's only on a one year deal. Travis Kelsey will be a year older every every year, and that's how this thing works. Uh, that's so how life works. It turns out. It turns out. Wait, everybody, everybody, I'm going to get a year yes. older every uh, year. Every twelve months, Cody, you're actually going to get older. I'm not planning on being on this show for my fortieth. I'm just going to take it off. What day of the week? Oh, is I that? thought you were like, I was like, what do you have other plans? You're just saying you're just going to take the day. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I need you to want... work on my 40th birthday. Didn't we just have a conversation? And in... I told you, you should not be shaming people for taking their birthday off. What day is your birthday again? Uh, September 1st. No, I thought, no, that, I think it's that was Sunday. the opposite take I thought you had. I no, thought your, I, your take I, I no, thought Parks was. was the person who said you got to. Okay. Yeah, I was you, like, I th- okay. You, Somebody was t- totally anti uh, taking off. Look, if it's a Friday, it's one thing. But I don't think like taking a random Wednesday because it's your birthday. Is that, what, your unless, birthday is on a Sunday. Oh, no, you have to take it and off. Then, and then Labor Day is right after. Cody will take the Friday Jackpot. and the Monday off. I will be probably taking the well, Monday. It's Labor Day. I'm already taking uh, it off. Sometimes the, you know how this is. That's a off-air conversation. Sometimes Last we year work. we had Labor Day off. Yeah, it depends. So. The Chiefs play that Thursday. Sometimes we have to work. Mm. Anyway, mm. it's football season, man. Mm. That's it. my sister's birthday. I can't work on that. Day. <laughs> yeah. Can't work on September 2nd. It's too busy. We're really tight. <laughs> That that's the sister I see the most. Nice. It's not. It's not. It's the sister I see the least. <laughs> but you know. Oh well. For the sake of this argument, you know, whatever it's gonna take on a Sunday, huh? That's a terrible fortieth. A Sunday? That just means you can have fun on Saturday. I don't know if it's terrible, but it's, it's not. It's not. Yeah. Sunday's nothing Wednesday. wrong actually. A Sunday, you'd rather have that than a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Yeah, but right. then Thursday, you're pretty much into the weekend, so you can just roll that bad boy in. You know how that works. It's not better than Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. But you're right. It's so I guess it's medium. It's right in the middle uh, across the board. Drew, I guess it is probably since they've already teed off and teed off like three hours ago. Can we get a Masters update? Yes, we can, Cody. Tiger Woods just birdied the third hole, by the way, sitting at even par for the tournament. Right. Okay. Yeah, a little bet to, for him to make the cut, remember? We do, we do. Clubhouse leader Bryson DeChambeau has not teed off yet. He'll be teeing off here in the next half hour or so. Still at seven under par. The lead, solo lead for DeChambeau. Max Homa on the course. One under par for the day. One or six under for the tournament. He is the leader in terms of players who have started their second rounds. Corey Connors for you, Gold. He's off to a good start. Bounced back on the back nine. Two under par. A lot of guys okay. set at two under par. Current projected cut, by the way, is set at two over par. So um, a lot of guys in the mix. It'll be interesting to see as there are very windy conditions out here at Augusta National. Uh, that is your Masters update on 610 Sports Radio, brought to you by Twin Peaks. Each drinks scenic views. True Nance providing updates throughout the day. Thank you. You got to wear just quarter zips if we're going to do these. Tiger, I, I like, really I like missed with Tiger. The, hey, I, Tiger I makes the it. cut. That's all we need is Tiger to make the cut. I missed the bar, too, today. I should have wore I should. I should have I should have come you in the proper been in a attire. Zip. Yeah, and, you, and you know, like, now that you bring that up. Parted your hair different. You should have oh, wow. leaned in, you know? Wow. <laughs> Thin my hair a little bit. Wow. Taking out Nance's hairline. Well, look, he's... So I don't, I don't know how old Jim is, your, but... They're recording your master's updates and going, oh, to, fantastic. going to sleep listening uh, to those on loop. From the uh, 785, he said it was it. Dusty who filled in on Cody's birthday last year. Oh. He said children stay home on That's birthday. That's who said it. Yeah, it wasn't me. That was mm. that makes Look, sense. I'm just going to tell you. Grow up. People can take up. If you don't want to take off your birthday, fine. No one's making you. You hate the celebration of your own life? I don't <laughs> care. But you can't, like, I think his critical take was of the people opposite. for taking days off are silly. Yeah, I think his was the opposite was grow up and don't take off on your birthday. I think that was his take. <laughs> grow up and don't take I, it I off on your birthday? Was, I think that was the uh, the flip side of it. What do we take? And like, I don't care. I don't care if you work on your birthday. Why do you care if I don't? Yeah, I don't know. You shouldn't care. I don't, you know. If like, somebody else takes I'm off, I'm not a it, birthday it month matter. person. But, you know, if I want to be off on my birthday, my birthday's always around ish Labor Day, too. It always seems to like hover somewhere near there since it's the first Monday and mine's the first day of September. So it's inside a week almost every time. But September 1st, Kansas will launch sports betting. That's my birthday. Yeah, we will all remember. <laughs> we will all remember that, uh, of course. Why did they leave that? I'll never understand why they left that in the edit. Because it's funny. Man. I don't know. That had to be it. I don't think they know. I just don't think they caught it. I don't think. <laughs> two years ago. It happened two years ago. Uh, we have already, uh, by the way, our master's card. I don't know when we're going to update, uh, give an update on that. We've already crossed off some of those. Yeah. Guys, it's we'll not, yeah, we'll, we'll check, check in. Great. Yeah, we'll check in. I mean, like, there's still some hope. There's still some hope out there. That's why you spread oh, yeah. the betting card around. Not yeah. every bet's going to be good. One of our guys is in second place, Scotty Scheffler. We did we did cover ourselves a little bit with that on the betting card. So we'll, we'll check in. So good. 
He's consistent, man. Very, very consistent. All right, guys, coming up next, we'll, we'll get back to the Royals a little bit with who's pitching uh, in the last couple of days, in particular uh, what J.J. Piccolo had to say about Brady Singer. And more details are out around the betting scandal with Shohei Otani. Hey, it's Brady Singer. You're listening to Cody and Gold. Weekdays starting at 10 on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more. All with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Hi, it's Trey Smith. And in order for our team to get a victory, we need honesty, teamwork, work ethic, humility, and the golden rule. That's why my truck is from the dealer that embodies all those values. Victory Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. And Victory Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram also supports Giving Hope, whose sole purpose is to feed and clothe the needy in Wyandotte County and beyond. Giving back in the highest integrity, that's how Jeff and his team do business. For your next vehicle, visit or go to VictoryChryslerDodgeJeepRam.com. This spring, let Smokehouse Barbecue make your life easier. Many events are coming up, and Smokehouse can help with catering at home or with a party at one of their restaurants. And don't forget about Mom on Mother's Day. She'll love dinner at Smokehouse. Whether it's Independence, Zona Rosa, or Gladstone, make sure you ask about the new barbecue pizza. And if you're grilling out, don't forget Smokehouse has amazing sides that go great with everything on the grill. Check them out at SmokehouseBBQ.com for over 35 years. Locally owned and family operated at Smokehouse Barbecue. Outdoor America with Tommy Bench. Saturday mornings on 610 Sports Radio at 5 a.m. and the Odyssey app. This week, Tommy answers your questions. Outdoor America. Presented by Wholesale Batteries, the right battery the first time. Rob Brenton from The Drive here to tell you about the best window and door company in town, Renewal by Anderson. They're the full-service replacement window division of Anderson, who's been building quality windows and doors for more than 120 years. Renewal by Anderson windows and doors are proudly made right here in the U.S. of A. They custom build every window using their Fibrex composite that's twice as strong as vinyl and backed by the nation's best warranty covering windows and doors for 20 years. Their installers are factory-trained, highly-skilled craftsmen who treat your home with a level of care you do not see anywhere else in the home improvement industry. When it comes to windows and doors, go with the experts, my friends over at Newell by Anderson. And right now, save 20% on all windows and patio doors, plus take an extra $500 off your entire project with no interest for four years. Just call 913-364-0200 that's 913-364-0200, 913-364-0200. Are you hungry for a good deal? With the Royals Value Menu, you can get your ballpark favorites for $5 or less. Hot dogs, popcorn, pretzels, soda, and yeah, even a beer. Five bucks or less. So I guess the next question is, how hungry are you? The Royals Value Menu. Found at select Crown Classics and Hot Corner Grill concession stands in Bruin View. Learn more at royals.com slash fan value. Angie's List is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is, and it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. Get ready for grilling season with the ultimate burger perfection flight for just $89.99 when you shop OmahaSteaks.com and use promo code SIZZLE at checkout. That's 24 rich and juicy Omaha Steaks pure ground burgers. They're guaranteed to deliver an explosive combination of tenderness, juiciness, and unmatched quality. Each six-ounce burger is guaranteed to satisfy with every bite. That's OmahaSteaks.com SIZZLE at checkout to unlock this exclusive deal. Hurry, supplies are limited. Omaha Steaks, America's original butcher. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. Um, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. 
And now Martha Stewart for Skechers. When I make a dish or embark on a craft project, I always use the finest, most fabulous ingredients and materials. Which is why, when it comes to footwear, I love Skechers. Because Skechers is the comfort technology company and uses the most luxurious, innovative materials and designs to make wondrously comfortable footwear with all the fits and features like Arch Fit and Skechers' world-famous air-cooled memory foam. It's exactly the way I'd make shoes. Find Skechers at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Some people just know there's a better way to do things, like bundling your home and auto insurance with Allstate, or hiring someone to move your piano instead of doing it yourself. So do things the better way. Bundle home and auto and save up to 25% with Allstate. Bundled savings vary by state and are not available in every state. Saving up to 25% is the countrywide average of the maximum available savings off the home policy. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Timmy, everybody. Great job. Next up, we have Samantha. Ten times better performance can make a big difference. Castrol Edge motor oil gives your engine ten times better high temperature performance. Castrol Edge, better oil for maximum performance. Now through April 23rd, get a $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic, only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on Sequence 3 H test versus API SP test limits. Progressive asks, what do a late night pizza craving? Pizza place. Can I get one large pepperoni pizza? A newly licensed teen delivery driver. A guaranteed delivery time or it's free offer. And your front fence have in common? Uh-oh. That's my fence! They can turn your stomach upside down in under 30 minutes. I'm still getting a tip, right? Bundle your home and auto with Progressive for great savings and round-the-clock protection. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states or situations. Baseball is back, basketball is heating up, and the NFL Draft is right around the corner. Listen to the latest on the teams you love with the free Odyssey app. The biggest sports radio stations in the country providing unrivaled local coverage of their teams all in one place. Exclusive interviews with players, coaches, and team executives streaming live and always available on demand. Stay in the know with your favorite teams with Odyssey. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Download the free Odyssey app today. Got the hook while my DJ revolves it. Just getting started here on a Friday. Cody and Gold, Alex Gold, Cody Tap, Drew Nixon with you. You can always hit us up on the J Southland Tow Service text line, 913 586 7610. 913, I'm convinced Cody's a teenage girl. <laughs> Those are the only Why people is, who oh, get all special about their birthdays. I didn't say I got special, I said I took it off. I didn't say I held myself a, you know, a personal <laughs> cake party. And also, if I did, you shouldn't care. Why do you want to suck the joy out of people's life, you know? Why do you want people to be happy? Why do you want people to do things that make them happy? If I played golf on my birthday every year, would that make you feel better? Like if I did a thing that you thought was, mm. or if I worked on cars, mm. I just changed like a carburetor every year on my birthday, would that make you feel like I'm less of a, I'm more of a man? I don't know. That's what the, that's the text line. I don't know. I'm with you. I'm with you. This goes back to... You don't take yours off very often, but it's also uh, right in the middle of the playoff hunt, typically. Very often. Yeah, I mean, I never do, but it's always, yeah, it's always in, it, always in January. Turns out the Chiefs are in the playoffs there, yeah. and so it's not going to not gonna take up. But Again, uh, please do. Yeah, but if it was if it was July, I don't think... It, it, if I had a trip already, like, planned that was crossing over, I would. I would. I probably wouldn't just take it off, take off a random Wednesday, but that's fine. Whatever everybody wants to do. Hang on. What, 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 Speaking of which, I got to leave a half hour early next week. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> when is your next birthday Friday? Gold? I got to leave at one thirty. When is your birthday gold? January twelfth. Is that why you don't want to take it off on a Wednesday? What? Not not saying that there's nothing to do in January around Kansas no, City. No, it's during but playoff I think that... time. I wouldn't take it off. Especially one, I wouldn't take it off anyway. But truly, like usually, the Chiefs are in the you know divisional round yeah, of the playoffs. Right. Anyway. Those are f- those are busy and fun weeks playoff pushed see in kansas city the chiefs are always in the playoffs true in cincinnati you're right i probably could mm-hmm. if i was covering your Bengals, i probably could uh i could hold off hey you know what two of the last three years they've been there in january that's true <laughs> i like that everyone's like carburetor is kind of a basic job really. you should <laughs> try for something a little harder uh, oh, there you go i'll change the water uh, pump and timing belts every uh, birthday all right, i want to get to the details that came out yesterday uh, investigators had a press conference uh, around the Shohei otani betting scandal but really it is around his interpreter and fbi 
has made it clear that Shoy Otani is the victim. I know before everybody was speculating, like, okay, how did this all happen? Well, we got we got some more insight yesterday. They alleged that Ipe, who was the ex interpreter of Shoy Otani, stole sixteen million, not the originally the original four that was reported in this gambling scandal, sixteen million dollars from Otani's bank so accounts much. to cover his gambling debt. So the District Court of California laid out all of this, and they citing wire transfers, text messages, phone records, interviews, uh, alleging that Ipe used his position, exploited his position of trust with Otani to fund a very frequent gambling habit. Here are some of the details. 19,000 wagers between December of 2021 and January 2024. He's betting 25 times a day. The average wager was $12,800, largest wager 160,000, total losing bets 182.9 million, net loss 40.7 million dollars. So he was clearly addicted and he was also a horrific sports better. He had his one wager, his smallest wager was $10. I have Okay, you're you're averaging $12,000 wagers. You, you're losing 40 million, you're betting 10. Unless that's the one that got him hooked, maybe. I don't know. You know, he he had a he had a 10 10 30 leg parlay that hit for 50 grand and he was hooked. I I have no idea. 16 million dollars from Otani and again, they made it clear that he is actually the the victim in this despite everybody's speculation. The text messages are incredible. In the criminal complaint, there's dozens of messages allegedly sent between uh, the interpreter and this bookmaker. Remember, that's how this all started. This federal investigation with the yep. bookmaking operation. This is a real text. Quote, I'm terrible at this sports betting thing, huh? LOL, dot, dot, dot. Any chance you can bump me again? As you know, I don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about me not paying. He allegedly wrote that on or about November 14th. And for those that don't know, bump meaning his limit, right? He's got yeah. a limit with the bookmaker. He's asking to get his, his limit bumped up. That's what they're saying. Another text. Quote, I have a problem, LOL. He wrote on June 24th, 2023. Uh, the other one, quote, I'm going to be honest. I ended up losing a lot of money on crypto the last couple of years. I took a huge hit, obviously, with the sports, too. Just wanted to ask, is there any way we can settle on an amount? I've lost way too much on this site already. Of course, I know it's my fault. These are all texts allegedly from uh, Ipe, the, the interpreter. So he thinks that, but by the way, his argument that he thought this was a legal sports book. Do you think you can just like, I can't text up FanDuel? Right. Or draft kings and be like, hey, bro, think you could, uh, you know, up my limit a little bit? That's not how bookmakers work. So he had to know that there was something at least semi-shady about it. eBay. Okay, so I, so I disagree a little bit. Because if you have FanDuel, you're not betting on credit. So you have to have the money when you're betting. Yeah. Whereas, like, the, the bookmaker, you bet on credit, so people get bumped all the time. Now, this is a certain circumstance where we're talking about millions of dollars, and this guy probably doesn't bump his limit unless, yeah, to your point, he thinks Otani is actually either the one betting or backing him. And that was, we found out all the questions. He was of, making it seem like. A lot of the questions we thought were like, how does he do all these wire transfers from Otani's bank account? Well, it turns out in, in the criminal complaint, this guy was turning off the notifications. So we all have a bank account. I don't know if you get notifications, Cody, when a, uh, a deposit is made. Like, if something gets deposited, I get a notification on my phone, or I get, you know, if, if X amount of money is, like, a certain dollar amount is withdrawn or charged, I get an alert. Otani had alerts set up. This dude turned off the notifications right before he would make the wire transfers, so Otani was never alerted. And he would allegedly call the bank when they needed to verify the transfer and impersonated Otani. That's how he, we wondered Look, how he was able to do it. That's how this story certainly makes him seem like a genuinely horrible person and awful friend to Shohei Otani. Yeah, Otani trusted him, and he took a massive advantage of him. It's wild for it to take years to realize sixteen million dollars is slowly being siphoned from my account. Man, you got to get a better guy and charge your money. How's the how's your money guy at some point being like, hey Shohei, seems like a lot of money's falling out of your account and not going back in. Like, a typical spender. Like, what do you mean? I mean, we're talking $16 million over a three-year span. Like, after reading the criminal complaint and everything in there, I think there's a pretty good chance Shohei didn't know. I wouldn't put it at 100% because it just seems like a wild amount of money, but it seems like the odds are Shohei was kind of in the dark about this, and Ipe took massive advantage of their close relationship and his close proximity and access to Shohei Otani's fortune a number of ways. The amount of money, the fact that he bet 
$180 million in bet. And he was a single client of this bookmaking operation. No wonder the federal government found out about them. Are you kidding me? They had one person on their site betting $180 million in total bets, losing $40 million out too. of there. And uh, like, yeah, I don't think ePay was their only client. No, and that's what that's what's fascinating. Now, none of them are, you know, in, tied up in in uh, with a star baseball player uh, some way. But man, I mean, that that is nuts. That that is wild to to think about. Uh, something could happen. Someone's like, is there not any limits? Again, this was a not these aren't they, they weren't betting on FanDuel or DraftKings or ESPN bet. This was an illegal bookmaking operation. This is the kind of stuff that happened before legalized betting. And some people still utilize that method because either they're trying to hide something or they want to bet on credit or whatever it may be. There's all kinds of reasons why somebody might still want to utilize that and tax purposes too. that. that ultimately, that's why the F, the, the IRS and FBI care about the entire money. They, that's why, why they care about the illegal bookmaking operation is it, it's not because they were trying to, they deep down cared about ePay, although now they find out he was committing fraud, but it's because this, this bookmaker, nobody was paying taxes on the, who knows how many millions of dollars ePay didn't pay the, taxes for the well, not just e- the book, the bookie. Yeah. Who was clearly backed by other people? Because in this the the report, uh, I think it was the Associated Press actually just put it out uh, from the criminal complaint that at one point Ipe stopped answering text and phone calls from the bookie, and somebody from that operation made it out to California and had a visual on Shohei, and they were about to confront Shohei because Ipe wasn't answering. Think about how close we were to who knows what would have happened. At the very least, this would have been the uncovered. worst part of the entire story. Yeah. That he's getting some guy, some like old muscle guy for an illegal bookmaking operation to come like break knees. You know, like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, you better pick up the call then. He should have come clean then. Had it three years, man. Three years? Well, he's addicted. I mean, you read the text. We read the text. I mean, someone said, what, you know, why, if he was just trying to embezzle money, why bet just keep the 30 million? He's because he was, he's addicted to gambling. Yeah. He was, it wasn't about stealing directly from like, his goal wasn't to meet like, oh, I'm just going to steal money from Otani and he's not going to know. Like that. He might have got away with that. It sounds like he would have got away with that. Yeah, he, his he thing could have was, been off in some he, island in the Caribbean by now. Or he whatever. was trying to sup, you know, to cover his ridiculous amount of gambling debt through this illegal bookmaking operation, and all the text messages. You can clearly tell this guy was flat out addicted to sports betting. Yeah, the texts are nineteen thousand wagers, dude. We we were joking the other day, just like you know, different uh, different amounts of of bets and like how often do you bet or whatever. 19,000 wagers in a three-year period that you said it 25 wagers per day or something is what it comes out to be. Yeah. Just an ins- What so are you betting on? 25 I mean, times a day. He's betting $12,000. That's an average. Obviously he's got some bets that are bigger than that, but 25 times a day, he's just throwing $12,000 <laughs> down. Is that what you bet? Yeah. Yeah. Cody. That's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what I do. I had a lot. Of course, as you can imagine, I've had a lot of people. You had tweet a profitable year. You yeah. should have been following you this year. Uh, last year, or I don't know. Yes. This year. I, don't, I don't know if you're having a profitable yeah. year in 2020. Well, I just had to pay taxes. Normally, I'm quick to file the taxes, and I waited till oh, about four or five days ago because mm, I actually... The old tax man wanted a little I, cash, huh? Because I owed a little more money than normal based off of uh, some, some gambling winnings, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, but unfortunately at the same time, I guess. Um, yeah, it happens. It hap- Look, it's a good thing. You won some money. Someone says that any of his net... Any of his nets hit? Any of his bets hit. Yeah, oh, of course. They're just par- okay. Did any of his bets hit? Yeah, of course. He won. So he bet $180 million. Of those bets, he won $140 million <laughs> for a net loss of 40. 40- Look, if it were anybody else, it would seem like, let's just say my sports wagering amount for the month is $100. Let's just say it set a really low number. I'm only going to bet $100 this year. That would be like, I bet $100 and I only got $75 back. So, you know, I lost 25% of my stake. Doesn't seem so bad when you're betting 100. Seems real bad well, when you're betting his money. $180 million of not your money. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Shoei Otani's money. Now, if you're wondering, he faces a That's maximum the amount somebody loses. A maximum penalty of 30 years in prison if he's convicted of, of bank fraud. That's what they're going to get him on. And he reportedly today is going to surrender to authorities. He'll have a bond hearing. He's not expected to enter a plea, and then they'll go through the long legal process but again uh the u.s attorney office saying that yeah Shohei otani they are treating him as the victim in this whole thing feel bad for Shohei. i know some people are always going to be skeptical of yeah someone's always going to um, that's the other tough part about it. someone's always going to say that it was him making the bets and this guy's mm-hmm. falling for him right I, and then I mean, like normally i think in the past i could say well what you why would it, i still think i can say it but people will throw out all kinds of conspiracies but 
what incentive would the federal government have to cover for Shohei Otani? That's just ask that question for those of you saying like big rich, big rich, powerful people. It's I the know. machine. I know. Well, I know. I you know. know what I know. We'll get the text. I already. Be. I already saw that because that was like initially people were like, well, the FBI is just covering for Shohei, and I would ask you why. And then of course, again, now if you don't agree with anything, people just say, well, we'll, we'll throw out anything, and that's what we. That's what we do now. I did the math, by the way. It's seventy-seven percent. So, like, honest to God, I think an average sports better that might not be a that might be a normal rate. Like for the people who bet sports casually and like betting sports casually, Nothing. winning eight cents on every do- like winning eighty cents on every dollar is probably not crazy. The sports operations make money off people in general, right? But it's just like it's the amount he was wagering. It's not <laughs> like it sounds yeah. so much worse than any of his bets. Like, yeah, sure, that's what brought him back. If he just if he couldn't just lose one hundred eighty million dollars straight, that I cut him off at some point. Yeah, I just not nothing though. This guy did was normal oh. on the betting end. Oh God! I mean, like that's the thing is like, you know, there's there, there's nothing there that was normal when you're talking about that kind of money and that amount of wagering going on. Yeah, he was crazy. Says he won seventy, lost one hundred and ten. Yeah, I mean, it's just nuts. <laughs> it's just I don't. When I, I will be interested to see whenever that Netflix doc comes out on this. Well, there will be one, I'm sure. Because you think like some of those text messages are wild. Eventually, we'll get even It'll more be the detail. Balco thing because like we only saw some of the text messages, and even those are crazy, crazy. Just like I'm terrible at sports betting, and please don't you know hurt Shohei. Like, because at some point he's like, "Hey, this thing says you were stealing from Shohei." He's like, well, "I was definitely stealing from him." <laughs> like that's he admitted the text in the text back. messages, which is yeah. also, I mean, this guy clearly wasn't a smart guy to begin with. But he uh, he admitted in a text message to stealing money from somebody. What was his salary again? Oh, I don't remember. I've been mean, making decent money translator for Shohei Otani and the Dodgers. A few hundred thousand dollars a year. I would I would think. But he was addicted. Uh, paid upwards his highest years. He was paid upwards of half a million dollars a year. So he's making a half a mil. There are ways. And we all know where all the money was going. Yeah, addiction is crazy. Spend twenty or thirty million dollars, or twenty or thirty years in prison potentially. This is not just gambling aside. Addiction. Yeah. Gets oh, the yeah. better of a lot of people in a lot of different varieties, but God, just the God. <laughs> text line says, guys, we don't unit shame. That's true. That's true. We don't unit shame on this show. Mm-hmm. There was definitely no shame in the uh, the dollar amount. <laughs> it's it's just tax. not your money is the problem. Yeah. $12,000 bets on average. On average. Now, I got to know what that $10 bet is. I demand in this documentary, yeah. you tell me what that one, if it was, because if it's like somewhere in the middle of all of this, like if you already placed like a twelve dollars or $13,000 bet, and he just threw some like, Ten dollars on like a Hornets parlay. I gotta know. I'm guessing it was just a long he was shot college, parlay. Women's college yeah, soccer, was, dude. He was in so deep. When you are betting 25 times a day, you're obviously not just betting on the pro sports. You're you're going deep. You're you're pulling up. We've all seen it. You go on FanDuel Live. They had snooker yesterday. Who the hell is betting on snooker? I don't even know what snooker is. We should bet on snooker. What? This show should I, start betting legit, on snooker. I honestly, you know? can, I deep I down, think they have like table tennis on there. I've as well. seen that. What is snooker? Uh, it's billiards. Oh well, it's it's a pool, such so as pool. It's pool, but it's a it's it's a game of. It's pool. not like eight ball, okay. or whatever. It's not your typical game of pool. I don't I guess, I, right? look. I'll be honest. It's not pool or nine ball. It's not eight ball or nine ball. So I don't know what the rules are, but it's played on a pool. It's a billiards game. Okay. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's all. If you're doing that on a Wednesday afternoon, you got a problem. Get, is there? Can we bet on some snooker oh, today? Gosh. Come on, let's just see if we can bet on a little snooker today. Just one <laughs> time for the show. <laughs> here she brought it up. Uh, here are the live bet. These are current live sports that are going on. Let's see how many are there. I need there's, some snooker. Wow, fifty-four. Holy crap! Fifty-four. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there's seven basketball games <laughs> somewhere in the world. Four hockey, twenty-five tennis, five soccer, one golf, one cricket, eight snooker. Two oh, table Jack. tennis oh, and baby. one volleyball. Oh, baby. Here we go. Um, who do you like on the snooker? Ken uh, Doherty plus 150? Who do I like? Marco <laughs> Fu? It's a money line bet. It's the world championship, man. Don't come on. Don't. It's the world championship. <laughs> I, uh, I don't even like. So, for example, it said, I don't even know what, what are they playing to? It says 6 3. Is it like tennis? I have, I truly have no idea how this works. I'm not going to bet on something I, I don't have I any idea about. I honestly have no clue either. I don't. I don't. No, but like that's what's funny about it for this one time on the show. Look, I'll be honest with you. The closest bet from a money line perspective, the other ones are total blowouts. They think <laughs> Zach Shirty is going to kick Gao Yang's ass. Like Zach he's Shirty. minus eighteen hundred to win They're his nice. snooker match. Twenty five hundred now. Ken Doherty is plus one fifty. He's currently up five four in his match for whatever that means. So we could still get a plus one fifty on the money line. 
Plus 150. Do it. Doherty. We betting Ken Doherty? Oh, Over Marco Fu? Jeez. What do you guys want to put? Like 15 bucks on it? 10 15. bucks? No. How much do you guys want to put on? Five bucks? Let's just get a snooker bet in. I just... <laughs> One snooker bet. How addicted. I'll let you make that. I don't even want to have it on record that I ever made a snooker bet. I'll let you I'll, I'll let you make this snooker bet. bet that's been placed. Okay. That's been placed. Ken Doherty's our guy. Drew, I'm going to need, when you give us the next Masters update in the 11 o'clock hour, I'm also going to need a Ken Doherty update, okay? Well, well if the match is done, how do, how do I find it? Do I just Google, Google his name? Google Snooker yeah. World Championships. Yeah. Go- Actually, I found out those are on the 20th. This is just a regular That's a match. qualifier. This is a qualifier. It's not even the World Championship show. Where are these taking place at? That's the other thing. Are we sure this is, like, legit? Oh. I mean, sure. Uh, taking place in Sheffield, England. That's not a real app. Mm. I'm not betting on that guy's app. Taking place in England. Okay. okay. We got money on Ken Doherty. <sighs> or I do. Nobody knows who that is. <laughs> Nobody knows who that is. <laughs> uh, it, means, it means nothing. But that's um, that. What you just did is how he bet 25 times a day. He, he didn't even know who Ken Doherty was either. And he said, screw it. I show Otani's money anyway. Let me just give you a little update. Ken Doherty is an Irish professional snooker player who is a world snooker champion, dude. World Snooker champion in 1997. Dude, 1997. What, are you going to age in pool? Hang on. I wouldn't feel confident. His world ranking is 78. I already placed the bet. (laughs) I don't have to tell you about that. That was the closest one. The other one's like, we're either playing a massive underdog, which feels like kind of a risk, or, you know, he's been a pro since 1990. Nickname? The Darlin' of Dublin. (laughs) That guy can't lose for us. Ken Doherty? That was a smart bet, Cody. (laughs) Good play. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> how, yeah. how would Vern, you do- Vern wants me to give uh, Vern wants me to be on pregame tonight uh, for for bets for the Royals. I'll throw in a snooker bet as well while we're yeah, at it. Yeah. You know? How sure did, did you just sound, that. Cody? When, when you when you said fifteen and we were like no, and you said ten. How, how about five? Five. You really yeah, wanted say, to place this. Yeah, that wasn't you really good. wanted to place that bet. I just wanted to place that bet. So someone's giving us a breakdown of how snooker is played. Awesome game. We were playing it. So the pockets are not as wide as a regular table. Oh. So slightly different, slightly different game, you know. So says, what's your most obscure bet besides snooker? Oh, this is he easy. was betting during, on like during horse COVID. racing or something. Or during well, horse, horse racing isn't horse racing is not great. No, during COVID, it was uh, it was the what's the league uh, in Japan baseball? Uh, oh, Korea. Oh, you were uh, playing uh, Korea? Yeah, Korea. Yeah, the, you were betting on Korean baseball. Yeah, during but you COVID. were also betting on like were you betting on like virtual horses at not one point? Virtual. No. Okay. No horse racing. <laughs> Random horse races during but like COVID. like overseas horse racing oh, yeah. during COVID. Yeah, right? during COVID, for sure. That's probably the most obscure. I would still argue that uh, betting on Korean baseball might even be more. Like, horse racing was like the original form of sports betting. Sure. Sure. But like at, at the time, it was like you were betting on like, you know, tracks no one ever heard of. And someone says marble races. People were doing oh, that. People were definitely betting that. People are yeah. advising you to call 1-800. I think you'll be more That's likely awful. to get the result quicker than than I will be. I mean, I don't. Well, he'll know. He'll be able to see the bets set up. I was going to say, I think you'll, you'll, you'll find out sooner than I will. Because I just by Googling it, I can't find the match. So oh, you're saying I should keep an eye on it on the app. Yes. Someone said they bet on Madden simulations. Well, that's, that's Mad- crazy. Bet on Madden. That's wild. Madden, Madden simulations. By the way, who, who took that bet? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, which... someone, someone was doing that, I guess. I know you can do eSports stuff, but that's not a simulation. That's actually somebody playing a video game. Oh man, now I'm realizing this this match isn't even live yet. Or is it? Yes, it's five to four, I think, currently. Yeah. Like you said. How do I catch this thing on TV? You know, that's the real question. I don't think it's on television. I don't think it's on television, man. Hmm. Okay. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about that. That's been placed. Ah, <sighs> good times. Boy, Ipe. Can we get one more Masters update before we go to break, Drew? I heard Max Homa is playing well. Yeah, y- yes, he is, as a matter of fact. Uh, good morning, Kansas City. Max Homa currently 7 under par atop the leaderboard with Bryson DeChambeau, who is yet to tee off. He tees off, actually, here in the next few minutes. Uh, Tiger Woods, I said, birdied the third hole. He bogeyed the fourth, so he is back to one over par. Some of the upcoming tee times as well. Will Zalatoris at 2 under par, 12-24. Joaquin Neiman, one of the top live golfers in this tournament at noon. Corey Connors, 11-12. Uh, one of the other names to to watch in this one is Cameron Young. He is three under par through six holes. He is at six under, or five under rather, for the tournament. Tiger Woods, 
uh, directly in terms of his score is now two over par Ooh. for the tournament. Projected cut is at two over par. Gary Woodland, we mentioned him yesterday. He tees off shortly as well, plus four for the tournament. So still a chance for Gary to make the cut. Good after he doubled hole one, didn't he? Uh, yes, this Masters update is brought to you by Twin Peaks. Each drinks scenic views. All right, coming up next, we get to the 11 o'clock hour, the history of failed votes in this city. We'll talk a little bit about the stadium again because something's happening out in Arizona that reminded us of what potentially the circumstances could be here in Kansas City. Cody and Gold, brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. There is a back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion, and it is the Kansas City Chiefs. On your official broadcast partner of the Chiefs, 610 Sports Radio. It is severe weather season in Kansas City, which means you might start noticing some leaks in your roof. Don't let someone just come knock on your room and be like, oh, I'll take care of you, no problem. Work with a local company that's been in the Kansas City area for 33 years. That's Century Roofing, who's been voted best of in Johnson County two years in a row, best roofing company to work with. Look, that hail came through a couple of weeks ago. We know more severe weathers coming in Kansas City just based on the month, and you want to make sure that you're taking care of by a roofing company you can trust. They have installed over 30,000 roofs in the greater Kansas City area since 1990, which means they can handle every single one of your projects. They offer free roof replacement repair estimates, so you can just get them out there and be like, all right, let's see how it is. Did the hail get me really bad? Do I just need a few repairs? Do I need a full replacement? Do I need guttering work? They can take care of those things for you, and they're running free material upgrades right now as well over at Century Roofing to make sure you're taken care of. You don't want some roofing company fly by night, show up, walk through, and not around to make sure if you have questions down the road. Century Roofing has been in Kansas City for 33 years and will keep, keep being in Kansas City throughout that time. Schedule your estimate today from KC Base and female-owned Century Roofing. Trust the pillars of strength. CenturyRoofingKC.com and tell them that Cody sent you. This is an important notice to all U.S. taxpayers. The IRS is giving away billions of dollars in tax savings through a federal program called the Fresh Start Initiative to aid delinquent taxpayers. This initiative was established for anyone facing financial hardship and unable to pay their back taxes. Qualifying and enrolling in this program will stop all collections, settle your delinquent tax problem, and even reduce what you owe by thousands of dollars. Call the hotline at People's Tax Relief to see if you qualify and get this free information by dialing 800-351-4596. If you have unfiled tax returns or cannot afford to pay your personal or business back taxes, you can now get the help you need. One simple phone call can resolve your tax problem and save you thousands of dollars. To see if you qualify and to get this important free information, call 800-351-4596. 800-351-4596. Hey, it's Kling. There are many reasons I love hy V. The great values, the selection, the service, and I love to rack up fuel savers. And you can as well. Shop hy V on Monday, earn a fuel discount equal to the high temperature on Sunday and the amount you spend. If the high is 68 degrees on Sunday, I'll save 68 cents per gallon when I spend $68 on Monday. Heat up the savings every Monday through April 29th only at hy V. Must look up code 80007 to check out or promo code heat up when shopping online. See store for details. The best deals at the pump happen when you shop the aisles of hy V with help from the first Warm 5 weather team. This is KCTV5 Chief Meteorologist Luke Doris. Watch KCTV5 Sunday night at 10 for our official high temperature. Whatever it was on Sunday means you save on Monday with your hy V Perks card. If the high was 63 degrees, you save 63 cents a gallon when you spend at least $63. Watch First Warn 5 weather on KCTV5 this Sunday at 10. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, it's bigger game days and bolder fight nights. I mean, where else can you find a scratch kitchen that always comes in clutch? Every day from lunch to late night. Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Jim Nance's soothing voice, the birds chirping, the colors of the azaleas, there's no other tournament like it. We're featuring our new menu edition, the Tito's Transfusion, for just $8 all day. Head to Twin Peaks to see who gets awarded the green jacket in Augusta. 
It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash 610Bob and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 and present in Kansas. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Getting help is your best bet. Call 1-800-522-4700. That's 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Get ready for grilling season with the ultimate burger perfection flight for just $89.99 when you shop OmahaSteaks.com and use promo code SIZZLE at checkout. That's 24 rich and juicy Omaha Steaks pure ground burgers. They're guaranteed to deliver an explosive combination of tenderness, juiciness, and unmatched quality. Each six-ounce burger is guaranteed to satisfy with every bite. That's OmahaSteaks.com SIZZLE at checkout to unlock this exclusive deal. Hurry supplies are limited omaha steaks america's original butcher for more than half a century contractors and trade professionals have relied on weather guard for heavy duty truck and van storage equipment not just to protect their valuable tools but to protect their professional reputations for pros the weather guard badge makes a statement about what drives them it says bring it on been there done that we've got your back without saying a word and the folks at WeatherGuard, they're just as driven as the hardworking pros they serve. See what it means to be driven at WeatherGuard.com. You're listening to 610 Sports Radio from the Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Studios. Hey, Kansas City, it's Brady Singer. Tune in to Burns On Deck Show. One hour before first pitch right here on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. KCSP Kansas City, WDAFHD2 Liberty. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Trash of the day coming up in about 20 minutes or so. We'll also uh, talk a little bit more about what one league is doing to fix competitive balance. And could that actually be something that makes a lot of sense for another league and have a serious impact on one of the local teams as well? So we'll get to that. We'll continue to take your text here on a Friday, 913-586-7610, the Jay Southland Tow Service text line. This show is going to become uh, – Snooker experts, although someone told me it's actually pronounced, is it snook, snooker? Snooker table. Like, like, snooker, yeah, yeah, not yeah. snooker. snooker. Uh-huh. Snooker. We're going to become America? snooker. Snooker. <laughs> I'm going to stand by it. <laughs> Sounds like it has to... two O's in it. It does. It does. So I'm update the text the, line's uh, going to give us. It... on live here. Yeah, we'll get a live I update. tried to update the, the website that I found every uh, over the course of the break. It didn't update. It's still five mm-hmm. to four according to that. So Gotcha. Must be in a break, you know? <laughs> it's a long break. It's been that way for the last five minutes. We're determining how quickly we can turn Cody into Ipe. That's what's happening. <laughs> I mean, we're off to a pretty good start. I mean, if you gave me access to... You need 24 to... more bets to make today, just so you know. You got... you got 24 more that's, bets to make today? If you're trying to be Ipe, you need 20 more, 24 more bets, man. Look, I found a website in which you can watch this thing live. But you need no, gosh, that's, that's sickening. You need that's, that's, that's the fact sickening. that you looked that up actually... You're trying I found, to I found, well, it's free if you're, in, if you're overseas, but you have to have an account for you're going to sign up for a four ninety nine subscription for a f- to watch a, for a five dollar. It's probably it's probably not even it's probably four ninety nine. And I don't even know what the rules are. I don't even know what a good shot is. It's probably four ninety nine like pound. It's not 
dollar yeah. amount. Like you, you'd have to be yeah, break even. Yeah, I'm saying the to... exchange rate's not much different. I don't think anymore. I'm not sure where where we're at. I haven't. It might uh, be a dollar off, checked. I think, or something like that. So anyway, we'll we'll keep an eye. We'll get back to that. We'll keep dollar. an eye on that. One thing we we obviously are keeping an eye on here for, in Kansas City is where things stand. Maybe maybe moving forward with the stadium projects for both the Royals and the Chiefs and. Just a week or so ago, there was actually a story that everybody kept linking us to. It's like, hey, here's what they're doing out in Arizona for their hockey team. Mm-hmm. What, what can happen? And it was this beautiful rendering for the for the Arizona Coyotes of a $3 billion entertainment district and uh, a, a beautiful arena. And they were going to fully fund the whole thing. Like, Privately no, funded. They had to win a land sale, which they still haven't done, by the way. Uh, and then they promised to build this. And they've been wait for years trying to find a, an outlet to to build a uh, lo- location to build there in the Phoenix area, and it hasn't happened. And then there was a report that now it sounds like Salt Lake City is making a strong run at Arizona, the hockey team, and, of course, that would be somewhat publicly financed. Uh, and so we thought that was kind of interesting because it just a reminder, like, leverage and, and how some of this stuff goes in locations. Arizona – a hockey team that's been trying to move though for a very long time. So that, that's where the, the difference is you have an organization that I don't think is committed to Phoenix versus when we talk about the Royals and we talk about the chiefs, I do believe both organizations here are committed to staying in the Kansas city region. And we have the benefit of the state line, but it's always a reminder of like, there are better offers out there. The same thing applies for why would a team leave Jackson County for Wyandotte County or Jackson County for, for clay County. Do you think the attendance at some point will become concerning. Yes. Um, why wouldn't it? Because the argument would be these teams who were also having attendance struggles, they're still drawing five, six, seven thousand 7,000 more fans per game than the Royals are right now. Guess where their stadiums are? Downtown. Is the difference that if they were in the Burbs and also struggling with attendance, that it would be less? Of course I have to entertain that. And look, the... The Coyotes thing is kind of a perfect example of what we've talked about with this thing. And I'm not trying to, this is not a fear mongering part. This is just things change sometimes in these stadium deals, because let's just say the Royals are like, Hey, you know what? You're right. We'll privately fund this thing at this site because that's how bad we want it. And then Nashville's like, you don't have to privately fund. We got cash for you because that's what's happening in Salt Lake. They were working through a plan in which they might be able to do this and fund it themselves. And then someone was like, Hey, why would you fund it yourselves? We'll give you the money. And then all of a sudden you're like, ooh, well, turns out everybody won't not, you know, like it turns out not everybody's against giving us the money, just this area or not. I actually, I thought Rose Review put out a really good article that made me feel a little bit better, though, the other day. Because they put out a history of failed votes across different cities, ones that had taken place in Cleveland and Milwaukee, and Seattle and Pittsburgh and Minnesota and others. They had failed votes multiple failed votes that did not go through the original stadium plans that got reworked and all of those teams stayed there. So there is a history of what happened here in this city too. I mean, in the early two thousands, they went, you know, there there was a failed vote and obviously it still resulted a couple years later in both teams staying at the Truman sports complex. Yes. So there is a good history of for baseball. Anyway, vote doesn't go through. Let's rework some stuff, repackage, redistribute, and let's go back to the thing. It kind of makes me feel like I still think the Royals are going to try to go to Jackson County one more time. Maybe I'm wrong or I'm too optimistic, but I still think they'll go one more time. But then after that, then you have to worry about the if they privately fund something themselves, what's happening there in Phoenix? Because that that's a very real thing where they went to every municipality in the entire Phoenix area. They went to Glendale. Then Scottsdale. They were just going through city by city near Phoenix trying to get a stadium deal. Couldn't get anything. And they're like, fine, we'll do it ourselves until Salt Lake starts to maybe lure them away. And, and if they lose the Coyotes after all of that, it's like, what point? I think maybe the, they difference don't want the, Coyotes, is, who cares? And the difference is I don't believe the ownership group with the Arizona Coyotes or Coyotes, whatever the hell it is, uh, is actually dedicated to Phoenix. Like that, I, They don't have the same ties to the region or the city the same way I think there's been plenty of signs and indication. Uh, John Sherman, if we're just talking about the Royals for a second, is dedicated to actually staying in the Kansas City area. And so that's a huge difference here. You know, out in Oakland with the athletics, their owner stinks. Their owner had no desire to stay. Heck, he didn't even want to stay and have a real conversation about an extension until Vegas was ready. That's why he, they all along knew that Sacramento was, an, was a possibility for them to go to before uh, – 
Vegas. There were some documents that got released recently out there that they never really intended to try to work with Oakland on an extension. No, no. They wanted like, to go yeah, to Sacramento. It so different. it's different. Yeah. I think there's a difference where you have, I believe, deep down a commitment in Kansas City to stay with the Royals in particular and the Chiefs, but versus what's happening in Arizona. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see that play out. And it's not even a, the Salt Lake City thing's not even a done deal for for no, Arizona. No, it's just a new threat. And I think it's a serious one because Salt Lake, this is the other part. Like you and I talked about this, I think somewhere along the way is, you know, I know it's still a luxury is the number of teams, the number of cities, sorry, that line up for these teams. So if the Royals were open marketed and they were like, Hey, Royals are available and they want $500 million towards their new stadium in your city. Salt Lake would do it. Nashville would do it. Portland would do it. Austin would do it. Like, I just like, I, that's, that's a very short list. I can name 15 others. Like the cheeses. Can you do the same thing? Can you list off 15? I I stopped at four. That felt like I didn't know if you were going to, if you were going to do that. Um, But they can, you know, like, that's why I still know it's a luxury gold is the number of markets that would still take on your team. Even if you wouldn't take on your team. And again, there's maybe a better deal to be had. And I hope that there is. I hope that they continue these conversations. But, yeah, the Coyotes thing is fascinating because, like, I can't think of how many times people say they are going to see. They can privately fund it. Until what? Until they don't get that land sale and they just move to Salt Lake anyway. <laughs> they didn't privately fund yeah, they still anything. Haven't even they a, moved. They still haven't even acquired. Like, and it's Mm-mm. different. There's like actually a land sale. It's not like they're trying to buy out businesses in an area. Like, it is a it is a land sale that anybody – you. You know, how serious are they out in Arizona for yeah. actually actually doing that? So we'll see how it plays out. But, yes, that was definitely uh, an example that we got sent a lot uh, in the last couple of weeks from people. And, and then now there was another update on that as well. So we'll get to the trash of the day in about eight minutes. But one thing we noticed that, that, that's going on in another sports league that could impact what maybe baseball should look to do. And therefore, it could have serious ramifications for the Royals in competitive balance going forward. We know the NBA playoffs actually start up here pretty soon, play in tournament is next week and Yahoo sports had an article about Adam silver. Uh, basically the competitive balance changes that they had made and we can get it to some of them in a second. Uh, he, he, it's working, right? Like it's, it's now gangbusters. It, it's working now. There's some that would argue long-term it could have some ramifications, but if you look at how the playoff races are going down with a week left in the regular season, uh, that's probably the most successful thing Adam silver has done here recently, right? I mean, there, there, 13 teams in the league are between 44 and 49 wins. Half of the league is locked into an absolute middle ground of nothingness. Yeah, when you have, yeah, when you have thirteen teams during that, that's 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 nuts. And only the Celtics have the seating wrapped up. Uh, I think the, the the Nuggets just might have clinched the West the other night, if I'm not mistaken, um, or at least mm-hmm. took a one game lead uh, when yep. they beat the, the Timberwolves. But Boston's been way out in front. Other than that, this thing has been pretty wide open. And we there's only one playoff matchup that. Looks like we know what we're getting, which will be the Clippers in the four five matchup going up against the Mavericks. Other than that, it's been pretty, pretty competitive, which is always what you want. And last CBA in the NBA, his goal was to spread, uh, come up with an idea that would basically spread the wealth of the league, but also satisfy the franchises who want a chance to win. And that's As in the, the smaller luxury city tax. franchises. They created the luxury tax. Um, and the more a team spends, obviously fewer, fewer mechanisms it has. Uh, We know baseball does have a luxury tax, but there's a lot of issues with that as well. I guess the question here is, do you believe that baseball will ever do anything that will truly create competitive balance? Because I say the answer is no. So what I like about this is that it means it's not too late for baseball. The NBA had a massive competitive balance issue for its entire history, just like baseball has a massive competitive balance issue. They chose to prioritize it in a way where these franchises would still get rich. It does not require, by the way, this does not require the players to get on board. This is always and always has been about ownership and the willingness to luxury tax this thing to a disadvantage, essentially, to create that. Look at the markets right now. Let's just look at the Western Conference, because obviously that's the one that's really close. Denver, that's not their biggest market. Minneapolis, that's like Oklahoma City. Then you got L.A., Dallas, those are big. New Orleans, good, good-sized city, but again, not their biggest markets. You get down to 10 in L.A. or San Francisco at 9 in these play-in games. Everyone is, there are only legitimately like four bad teams. Everyone else had a real shot at it. The Jazz, Grizzlies, Trailblazers, and Spurs are the only teams in the Western Conference who were completely eliminated this year. And again, they had a massive competitive balance issue not that long ago. And I would argue, although the Celtics are the best team, 
after that, it's just as messy as the Western Conference. They just have less wins. It's a less good conference. Why wouldn't baseball look at this and say it's better for the sport? Competition is better for the sport. Every like every fan should want that. Screw the like TV numbers because that's one of the things like, hey, slippery slope. When it's not Lakers, Knicks. You know, yeah, we're gonna find out in the markets. We'll, we'll find out in the postseason. You know, do, do the you know not having Durant and LeBron James, let's just say, for example. Uh, making a deep playoff run versus some of the young stars like, you know, uh, SGA down in Oklahoma City and, yeah. and players like that. Yeah. Is that going to draw the, the same? We're going to all find that out together. Like we always say, I think everybody loves to say, TV ratings, everybody though. says, I know, but everybody says they love parody in sports, right? Yeah. I mean, we all say it, and I think I do genuinely like parody in sports. Especially because um, we're in a smaller sports yeah. market. Uh, but does that actually happen? I know you and I are correct in saying that. Uh, we don't care about the ratings. We're not TV executives, but we also know the reality of where these leagues are. The television dollars are ultimately what grows the grows the game. And in baseball, it's it's absolutely what could eventually one day change what what actually happens in the NFL. The salary cap goes up because of TV contracts right now. Right. That that's why the salary cap went up even more than everybody thought is because they have now a game on Friday and the Black Friday game. And they've mm-hmm. got the deal for streaming wild card games. And this is why the salary cap goes up. So it, it does. You're right that you and I shouldn't care about the ratings for the for the games. Yeah, I don't care. About that. But it actually does matter. I just think like overall, you might see a short ratings dip because I, I, I do understand that that would be the case. But overall, if you're running like, like OK, so you get a slight ratings dip, but. In the series gold in which the 8-1 in the NBA meant nothing forever, right? It, was, it meant nothing. Those teams had no chance. They go four or five games. You get no ratings for four games, and it wouldn't matter because the difference between the first team and the eight team was massive. How about in that 1-8 matchup gold, if they're separated by three games and it goes seven, are the ratings better if you get to air seven basketball games and get a game seven in an opening series? Like, the better and more competitive your sport is, the more likely, I think that's like an underrated part of the NFL that like, and I know people mention it for why they are king is that it does not matter who you root for or the size of your market. Kansas city is what? Like the 27th biggest market in the NFL, 28th. Like it's bigger than green Bay, but it's not bigger than very many outside mm-hmm. of that. And they have the best team in the league. Like you should like, as a sports fan, you should want that. You should want any market size to have an actual chance at competition for the NBA for 40 years. They didn't care about it. And Silver decided, you know, let's screw this. Let's try to make this sport competitive. And in two years, they made the sport rounded. Uh, I wonder All if it's, for it. I wonder, I don't know if it's about not, I think it's about, you know, the teams, like obviously, you know, Yankees, Dodgers, Lakers, Celtics, like that conversation. But the, the stars, it's the acceptance of up and coming superstars that people have, because Kevin Durant, a little bit older, LeBron, older, Steph Curry, older. All those guys are in the plan. Well, they're there for a reason. Let's look at the other teams who are very good. As you mentioned, Gold, SGA, Anthony Edwards, Nikola Jokic. You've got a bevy of superstars in that realm. Luka is up there. I think that it's the it's part of the fans needing to appreciate the entire league as opposed to just the specific. If you're limiting yourself to Aaron Judge and you know Juan Soto, yeah, and, and, then I think it takes away from Bobby Wood Jr. It takes away from some of the other guys for these other teams that are smaller markets like the Brewers or the Rays even. You know, these other, accepting them, I think, would help draw ratings a little bit more, pumping them up as opposed to always putting the Yankees on national television regardless because of the Yankees. Yeah, so like in, in basketball, they switched to a balanced schedule, and so you only have maybe four marquee match. You know, instead of 10, you maybe little, and there's only yeah, four of these sure. marquee matchups. That's what they brought up even in the Yahoo Sports piece. Uh, baseball, it, it's tough to make the direct comparison because one, 162 yeah, right. games, and it is so regionalized. It's why for years everybody's brought up Mike Trout, right? Star player, but he doesn't make the playoffs, and who's staying up? Most people aren't staying up till 11 o'clock but to watch no an Angels West Coast draws game. Draws a rating, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's, but yeah. because that's yeah. what, because of the regionalized nature, like mm-hmm. Shelly Otani's the closest, right? Where it's like, wow, I got it. We're going to talk about this later on the show because here in Kansas City. Uh, Messi is coming to KC tomorrow, and hopefully he's going to play, but he's in Kansas City to take on Sporting KC uh, at Arrowhead, 
right? So you talk about athletes that get you to go spend money that you feel like you have to watch either in person or watch on TV when they're ever on. Otani was the closest we've had in baseball in a oh, long wow. time. I, like, I get it. In Kansas City, Bobby Wood Jr. But I'm telling you, like, in New York, while his name is getting bigger and better, uh, I, I don't think, you know, Yankees fans are like, my goodness, I got to make sure I, I tune in a Royals game to watch Bobby Wood Jr. That's just not the makeup of the league. Well, and no. I, I think, too, the weird part about this is the NBA has div- the NBA has divisions, and they talk about division champions, but it means absolutely nothing. I don't know why they the it, 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 is, it is a conference deal, and I, I don't I don't know if baseball can do that. I don't know how that would if that would a good if, conference. If, why not? If, if that would impact What's stopping them from going if that 15, would impact 15. anything. I wonder. If, I don't know. And you would put what the top seven in the playoffs? Yeah, the same top, as you do now. I wonder if that would make things a little bit more interesting for the teams that are in the box. Because, but the, I don't want to do that the unless there's competitive balance. You know. Well, like right sure? now, there isn't competitive balance. So all the little small market teams that are together in the AL Central, like the yeah. little engine that could, until there's going to be a competitive balance, I'd rather the division schedule where the Royals can win 86 and go to the postseason hypothetically instead of have to outlast all four American League East teams that probably have a you know better record than them at the end of the year. Yeah. I don't know. It's just I just want sports to be more competitive. <laughs> that's all. Crazy. Trash of the day. By the way, bad news before we do the trash of the day. Currently, the Ken Doherty match is interrupted. I don't know what that means. It just means it's currently on pause. Irregular betting. Oh, my goodness. Irregular betting. Yeah. They took in a $5 bet from Kansas they City. They took in one single uh, bet from on, Kansas City. Uh, and they whoa, thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. snooker. And they're like, what is going on? Something in the middle of the day. Up. No, who knows? I so no currently idea. interrupted. I don't know. Does this um, happen a lot in that game? Is there? Is someone go to the bathroom? They get a bathroom break? How does that work? This bathroom break uh, has been like 20 minutes now. Uh, I don't know. Like, is, is, uh, if it remains interrupted without a final, by the way, then we are giving our bet back. That'd be kind of lame. You know, my first snooker bet. Someone says just... splinter injury timeout. <laughs> I don't know why it's interrupted. It hey. doesn't explain. That's that's bizarre. <sighs> Trash of the day has to do with uh, a, a woman in Florida, 49 year old Seminole, Florida woman told deputies that she didn't realize she was driving around on three tires. On Monday when Excuse she was pulled over. Me? Yeah, so she uh, she was spotted driving on three tires. Multiple people called in. Uh, she was driving a dark gray Nissan Rogue recklessly with no passenger side front tire. According to the authorities, they spotted her driving south on a road there. The sheriff's office says they conducted a traffic stop uh, to check on her. They smelled alcohol. She admitted to drinking. She told deputies she was unaware that the tire was missing. She failed a field sobriety test, bloodshot eyes, 0.16 illegal limit 0.08 how drunk do you have to be to be driving well, and not realize oh, you I got a told, wheel that, missing that drunk 0.16 versus the legal limit of 0.08 what do you think the drunkest uh, you've been on a bac scales been you know well not driving but not I, driving I, been, I uh i have no you idea you've been a 0.16 that's what i'm asking i bet uh, pro- I probably in college maybe yeah but it's been a long time and the last year what's the most drunk you've been you like I don't even know. Yeah. I it's not I don't I don't go out of my way to try to get drunk. No, I just casually that? drink. And then every once in a while, you know, a few yeah. extra. Have you ever yeah, I was gonna say when's the have you ever like I don't plan gone, gone too far over and you realize it after it's after it's too late. Not like recently, after. but I've been there before. Yeah. I mean there was this time in Vegas I was at a concert with Gold and our boss and I was yeah. supposed Cody to be was drunk. Then. Cody was drunk. I don't think I was a point one six then. I don't think I'd have been driving no. on three wheels drunk. You told but me I was that, drunk. He, Cody told I told me him the same story like eight times. Yeah, the yeah. exact same story eight times and I just kept nodding my head like, Oh yeah, yeah. 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 entertain the drunk guy. He kept telling me how he had a great lunch with Pete Sweeney and he told me six times. Fantastic lunch. On the fourth time, you're like, dude, stop. And then you realize. Nah, he just entertained. Well, he knew I was drunk. There's yeah. no solving Yeah, it was clear. Good for you, Gold. I'm glad. It was clear. Yeah, we were, nice I mean, it was, we were in Vegas. We were walking on the strip. Who cares? <laughs> I, I, I by been, the way, on the strip, I might have been like the 70th drunk person. I was not, way down the list. I was that way in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> in in uh, November. Oh, yeah, you did tell us. I was. You, you didn't make control. it to the football game. The whole point of your trip was the football well, game, okay. and you didn't show up. That's be- so my my <laughs> sister was convinced I had food poisoning because I I I didn't just have one incident where i was sick to my stomach i mm. had throughout the night so mm. i will i will say though after after drinking we uh after uh, while we were about to leave the bar my sister went to the bathroom i said okay i'll, I'll just I'll, I'll go over and i'll wait uh and i i realized it i didn't really move but i'm i'm leaned like this up against the wall <laughs> and i'm like man i really i, I was like I, I i told my sister she walked out she was like what are you doing i was like 
I'm really drunk right now. Oh, when you're on vacation and stuff, you're the willingness to just because you know you're just you're just walking back to your hotel room, so it's no big deal. Yeah. It's it's a much different vibe. I don't know how this lady though was driving three uh, wheels. How was it even staying upright? Yeah, like we know she was drunk, so that's why she didn't notice. But how? Yeah, how is the vehicle still traveling? That's a good advertisement to buy a Nissan Rogue. You know, when you think about it, I guess <laughs> even on three wheels, a damn thing could drive. <laughs> I mean, it gets you home even on. on no matter the wouldn't, circumstances. Wouldn't there have been, like, just sparks flying down to, like, the, the, the rim or the, you know what I mean? Like, would, wouldn't that have been very noticeable to everybody? I mean, they, everyone called, so I, I guess so. Right? Like, a bunch of people were like, hey, this person's driving on Someone three wheels. Someone says they bet Drew is a blast as drunk. I am very happy and very chill. I, I'm, a, I'm a happy drunk, which happy is... Happy drunk. I'm, I'm glad that I'm that way. Yeah, I'm a like I'm not in a bad mood when I'm drunk. No, I'm definitely not an angry or. No, there's some people though. I get louder. Flip a switch. I know, nah. It's hard to imagine. I get even louder. Louder than this. Than this? <laughs> Whenever I am normally, there's a couple other notches. Like that, 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 that <laughs> dial turns up a few more. That's my own. I got to be careful when I'm drunk of like saying something I shouldn't say mm. as loud as people can hear it. Mm-hmm. You know, because everyone, everybody, can everybody hear. though, I think everyone everybody, can hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm everybody already starts like, talking mm-hmm. louder when they've been drinking. Yeah. I would think. I, mean, yeah. I would feel like that's 99 percent so. of people. That's why bars get louder. Like that's just. I mean, not only are there more people, but everybody just starts to talking. Point that you do need to be careful. Yeah, yeah, that you have to be careful. I guess. Mm-hmm. Someone says, don't underestimate a Nissan owner and what they can do. Is there a thing? Someone, said, someone else yes. said Nissan makes sense. The Nissan Ultima Why are Nissan drivers all dangerous? This Is this a known thing? Yes. There, is there videos of this? Uh, th- whenever, whenever they, if they show people, like, like darting through traffic or whatever, it tends to be a Nissan. Really? Particularly oh. a Nissan Ultima. So <laughs> Nissan Ultima drivers catch this uh, stray. Interesting. I wasn't aware of this. I didn't That's, know Nissan Ultima drivers are so crazy. That I think maybe Chevy Malibus. The, those are the two. Uh, that are those come still up. on the road? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think it's Impala like that, that they stopped making, or one of one of them they stopped making. I think the Impala. Yeah, one, of, I think. one of them. I I don't know. I don't keep up to date with my uh, my Chevy line of vehicles. But uh, you're, you're you're not uh, fixing carburetors in your uh, free, <laughs> no. in your free time on your birthday. No, I'm, I'm definitely not doing that. All right, that's the trash of the day. Up next, guys, we get to the Chiefs' red half hour. One thing Cody says now happened with a recent signing and what it says about the future for the Chiefs. It's Vinny Pasquantino. Don't forget to follow Cody and Gold on the Odyssey app so you can listen on demand to my terrific football takes throughout the year right here on 610 Sports Radio. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Another year, another Super Bowl. Did you know that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl in their first year of their partnership with Window World? And here we are, five years in, the Chiefs are a dynasty, and they're still going strong with Window World as the official window of the Kansas City Chiefs. Window World windows are one of two windows with a good housekeeping seal of approval, ranked number one in number of windows sold in the country by Qualified Remodeler Magazine. In just over 20 years of business, they have improved the look and thermal efficiency of over 54,000 customers right here in Kansas City. So be sure to call this number, 816-799-0820. Learn more about the double strength glass that gives a strength that's not commonly used in replacement windows. Learn more about their products that are not only durable, but offer security, beauty, and energy efficiency. Give my friends at Window World a call. That's 816-799-0820. 816-799-0820 to learn more or also go on the website windowworld.com outdoor america with tommy bench saturday mornings on 610 sports radio at 5 a.m and the odyssey app this week tommy answers your questions outdoor america presented by wholesale batteries the right battery the first time it's playoff time in the nba and nhl baseball is in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game and right now new customers can get 150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 dollars in bonus bets win or lose you can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks all on an app that's safe super secure and easy to use what are you waiting for I'm so excited that baseball's back, and I know you are as well, and you know I love the NBA playoffs, and they are right around the corner. Visit FanDuel.com slash CDOT, use my promo code, and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook app. 21 and present in Kansas. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issue is novel drawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. 
See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas. Under agreement, Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem. Getting help is your best bet. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Hey, it's Rex here with RexBuysKC.com, your local KC home buyer. If you own a property in the Kansas City or surrounding area and want to sell it fast and at a fair price, write this number down, 816-330-6000. I'm a private real estate investor, not some hedge fund or large national chain. My family and I live right here in KC. I can pay cash and close on your timeline, even in as little as three days. Here at RexBuysKC.com, we are improving Kansas City one house at a time. I buy inherited houses, vacant houses, foreclosure houses, behind in payment houses, my tenant won't pay the rent houses, and properties that need complete rehabs. Do you own a house that's trashed and needs thousands of dollars in repairs? Great. If you own a house and want to sell it fast, call me at this number, 816-330-6000. That's 816-330-6000, or go to rexbuyskc.com. That's RexBuysKC.com, and I look forward to working with you. Choice for lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Paid for simulated client portrayal. I'm attorney Mike DeBasquale. When you call my law firm after your car wreck, you're our number one priority. After I was hurt in a car wreck, I couldn't work, and no one was helping me. That's when I decided to call Mike and his team. They took care of everything and made me feel like I was their number one priority. We're ready to listen, ready to help, and we'll treat you like gold. Call me. I've got this. Mike's got this. All you need to know. This is Larry Ryan at Ryan Lawn and Tree. Those local Ryan pros in the clean red trucks are employee owners, recruited from the best college horticultural programs in the country. They want to make your lawn the best looking lawn on the block. Schedule your free estimate at ryanlawn.com. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is, and it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. Get ready for grilling season with the ultimate burger perfection flight for just $89.99 when you shop OmahaSteaks.com and use promo code SIZZLE at checkout. That's 24 rich and juicy Omaha Steaks pure ground burgers. They're guaranteed to deliver an explosive combination of tenderness, juiciness, and unmatched quality. Each six-ounce burger is guaranteed to satisfy with every bite. That's OmahaSteaks.com SIZZLE at checkout to unlock this exclusive deal. Hurry, supplies are limited. Omaha Steaks, America's original butcher. A car is never just a car. Kelly Blue Book knows it's so much more than that. It's your commuting chariot, your road trip refuge, your I just need a reason to get out of the house. Your car is there for everything. And for everything car, there's Kelly Blue Book. Need a new set of wheels? Price it on Kelly Blue Book. Problem under the hood? Fix it with Kelly Blue Book. Can another car do the job better? Trade it or sell it on Kelly Blue Book. We're here mile after mile, moment after moment. Price it, fix it, trade it, sell it. KBB.com. Visit kellybluebook.com to get the journey started. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. Chiefs Kingdom. This is Mitch Holtis, and welcome in to the Chiefs Red Half Hour on Cody and Gold. Every day at 1130 on your official broadcast partner, the Chiefs, 610 Sports Radio. We'll get another Masters leaderboard update from Drew coming up in about 15 minutes or so. But let's talk some Chiefs football. A couple days ago, uh, Mike Dana's deal became official. It was reported last week that he signed a three-year extension worth up to 
$24 million, $13 million of which was guaranteed. And like any of these offseason signings, a couple days later, they come back into Kansas City, they get a physical, they sign the paperwork, they do some media stuff. That occurred the other day, and we had a short show yesterday, so we didn't have an opportunity to hear what Mike Dana said. And, and, and he did talk a little bit about his willingness to come back and what you and I had discussed at the time of the deal, which is like, you know what? This is a pretty reasonable deal for the Chiefs. And, and here's what he had to say, and you're going to like to hear uh, everything, I think, much all uh, what Mike Dana said about coming back to Kansas City. Let my play do the talking and being a person who kind of just, you know, uh, leads by example and just being a hard worker. You know, that's all I am, man. You know, that's all I want to be known as. And, you know, I'm just a grind. I'm glad. I'm so glad to be back. I kind of prioritize, you know, winning, you know, uh, the family I built here, my brotherhood. And, you know, uh, just like being here, it's just like I look forward to going to work every day, man. So it's just like when, I, when you got that feeling, you don't really want to let it go. You know, there's always elsewhere. But, you know, uh, I had a lot of stuff invested here, a lot of work, a lot of grind, a lot of sweat and tears. and you know, uh, why not go for a three-peat? You know, why not? Why why wouldn't he want to be a part of this journey, you know? So uh, I prioritize winning, man. You know, this is – there's there's no organization right now that's like this. And um, that was my biggest thing, prioritize winning. And my brotherhood I built here, and, you know, it feels so good to be back. You got to love hearing that if you're a Chiefs fan. And also prior to, prioritizing winning. Like, I, everybody can say that, but I would think that a little bit he, – he, he showed that with potentially the the contract that he ultimately signed. I think that I think it's pretty obvious he took a pay cut. I don't know if it's like a huge one gold. I, I think, you know, most of the time, 99, not 99, but 90% of the time, people just go to the highest check. Sometimes it's the same check or a similar check, which I would say qualifies and, you know, winning opportunity. But look back at that contract and what we thought should have been available for Mike Dana on the open market. That's less than I thought he was going to get. Man. But also, was that just the market, up? though? Like, was it as much for taking... defensive end since when? But he, but he was in the what would we call it, the second or third wave at least. He was. You know, and so if there was clearly more money out there, not just an extra mil a year, let's say like really more money, because we all thought he was getting the Ogba type deal. You know, three for thirty, he gets three for twenty three, and probably won't ever see the third year of the deal. I just think the market maybe also wasn't as as good as we thought. I mean, we're we're starting to find out. We look at the great defense from last year. And Willie Gay's no longer here. He's in New Orleans. But, like, that deal, I think at the time we were all like, that wasn't that big of a deal. You know, and so I'm just I'm wondering if maybe the market just wasn't what it was. So, yes, you take a little bit of a discount. But if he could have got, you know, considerably more money, uh, I, I don't think that offer was out there is what I'm trying to get at. I don't significantly more. Like, was there $15 million a year out there? No, I don't think it's that amount of difference. But the way he's talking, I do think, I really do, I think that there's a certain amount of money that he was like, you know what, good enough, right? He accepted the fact that this is good enough because of the situation he likes to be. And he's like, I just want to be the type of player who is, uh, you know, who wins. And I think it's really hard. Like, if your entire career, if you're Mike Dana, has been, your entire career has been in an organization in which what you do is win. And look, Jerry Sneed had to go through the same thing, and he chose the check, which is, I wouldn't blame him for but if I look back through the other players who were like at or around his level, he's a discount. He's a discount. Just look at the numbers. Even Chase Young, who can't stay on the football field, got $13 million a year in free agency. And I understand he's a former number one or number one, number two overall pick, whatever he was. Yeah. He's a former top pick who's coming off of a 10 sack season. I'm not saying there's way more money out there, but the fact that he was available for this and the way he's talking about it is exactly what you want, especially in what he does for a role. Rotational defensive lineman, all I want to hear is you're the hardest worker on the team who only wants to win. That's well, the kind that, of player I want. Mike it, Dan is a perfect signing for the Chiefs. And early in the year, he's going to be asked to do a lot. A, a minute Way here, more, yeah. Whether it's September or October or November, whatever, a minute here, most likely not September, a minute here coming off of the ACL, you're asking Mike Dana to, to step up in, in a big way. We know a minute you missed the first six games last year, and it was a little bit of Dana and Turk Warden for the first two weeks or so, Felix got some snaps. All those guys are going to have to contribute again because it, there's a chance a many you ends up missing the first six again. Hopefully it's not that many uh, based off of, of the injury that he had. I don't know anybody that can't like the Mike Dana signing based off financials, based off of six and a half sacks last year, knows the system, clearly sounds like a, mm -hmm. a team player. We actually had him on the show during during training camp. I remember we were yeah. talking about Michigan football with him at the time. He's a big Big, big Ten guy as well. And at the time, it seemed like maybe that was going to be the last year in Kansas City, especially six and a half sack season. 
Like, and oh, also, he's going to get more. And I, that's why I wonder if the market wasn't quite what we thought. Because if I told you six and a half sacks was going to be the number for Mike Dana and it was the final year of his contract, knowing that they had just spent two first-round picks on defensive line already, knowing that a mini who was here, you know, we'll never, know, we'll never know the full answer. If a mini did not suffer the ACL, and you knew right away he was He's going to be available game one. Would they have brought him Mike Dana back? Now, I'm, I think they I still know. needed Maybe. to anyway because you could always use depth. depth. But I wonder if that also gives you another opportunity for Mike Dana uh, to go out there knowing that you're going to get a lot of playing time, I think, early on in the season. What Dana does is he raises your floor. Does that, you know, because he forces the guys who would get drafted after him or like from just a year perspective, not a round perspective, or around him, it forces them to play well enough to steal his job. Like if you're a uh, BJ Thompson or you're Felix and UDK Uzama, he's not going to just give you the spot. Like some guys, right? Your second round pick. They're going to like, uh, I tell people this in radio. Sometimes like I would talk to like kids in college. I'd be like, Hey, you might have more talent than me. Plenty of people do. I'll outwork your ass. So like you, you can't just come take my spot easily because I will work harder than you. Can you do that? It forces guys like Felix or B.J. Thompson or anybody else they might draft in this upcoming draft to not just beat them from a I'm a better player perspective, but to like genuinely earn it, you know, actually come in there and take the job from Dana. That's why he raises he just he raises your floor. He constantly raises your floor. That's why I like going back and listening to his comments from a couple days ago and all those other things. It's why he was just like a perfect fit for this defense and for this defensive line and why I was so happy to see that he came back. Mike Dana uh, back with the Chiefs on a three-year, $24 million contract. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he'll be someone that they are counting on significantly early on. And if you're wondering just about uh, where he's been at health-wise, he, he played in 16 last year. I know that was the the story kind of the, mm-hmm. the season or two before. He only played in 13 in 2022. Uh, and then the year before, 17. But his rookie year only played in 13. I'm not really as concerned about the the, the, the playing time and the injury situation for Mike Dana based off of what I've seen in the last calendar year. So, I mean, his sack total has gone up every single year from two and a half, three, five, six and a half. Now I'm not telling you more and been more productive literally every year in his career. I'm not guaranteeing that he's now going to go from six and a half to become an eight sack guy. That would be great. Uh, But he has improved truly every single year since he's been with the Kansas city chiefs, his sack number has gone up and maybe they uh, give him some more help on the defensive line with a, Another mock draft. You know that's what the sounder is. Drew's got another one for us as we're 13 days away. Hope it's a big boy. Hope it's a big guy. NFL Hope draft. it's, uh, I don't know, at least Matt Miller or better. What do you got for us? Uh, it is Chris Trapasso. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's tough. That's seven, seven, seven rounder from CBS. Seven rounder? Seven rounder. We're, we're the hell's out here we're, doing seven rounder We're, we're getting to that time, time of year. Have we checked the Etsy store recently? Remember, I told you it got shut down. Etsy shut is there another, down. Is there another Etsy store? We have to support him. <sighs> Not to this point. Maybe actually we should have him on and give him ten dollars instead of the five or whatever. He, he wanted five dollars in appearance. Uh, so Pinkley came in like a week ago and was like, "I can't believe Chris Trapasso asked for five. Like he was still mad about it two years <laughs> later. <laughs> Trapasso <laughs> asked for five bucks. Sorry, Drew. Go ahead. Do you want to start with seven or? Oh or yeah, I will respect the sounder. Yeah, go ahead and start for round seven and All work right. your way up. Uh, we, we have a CFL draftee here at round seven, pick 221, cornerback Quantez Stiggers from the CFL. Star. Hmm. Star. He's sure. a star CFL yeah. player. Yeah, you tell me he's a star. That works for me. That's him. fine. All right, next. Wide receiver, six foot seven, mind you, in round five, pick 173, Johnny Wilson from Florida State. So, thinking of health, problem staying healthy at times. Who cares? Six, six Yes. You said, yeah. You, you said, how tall is he? Six foot seven. Six. Was that at the combine or Florida State's bio? Uh, bio. That was Florida State's bio. What's I believe the com- six five. Six five. <laughs> still great he, size. He, if that's yeah, the if case. you lower him two inches, and then hey. he, he still has, I think, a good vertical as well. I mean, he can go get the ball. So you think he doesn't and, need and to have a good vertical? You six think foot end seven. zone target? <laughs> late, Johnny Wilson could be it. Late round pick. I'm, I'm fine with that. He, if you want to see a wide per- receiver, yeah. yes. Yeah. Can we make him a tight end? Too, too, too tall to be a wide receiver. Six seven's too tall. He's not, but he's not six. He actually official measurement six six. At Name the combo. one six, successful six, six foot seven wide receiver. Well, I, I I don't know. Very rare size, right? He, he Great wingspan. Just make him a tight end. He was originally like a day two pick, but the injury concerns and everything like that are why he slides uh, at least in this mock to round five. Another round five pick, the earlier one, one fifty nine defensive tackle Tyler Davis from Clemson. Another D tackle uh, depth okay. piece, if you will. 
Round four, same position, Juwan Briggs from Cincinnati at pick 131 in the fourth round. And then we get into the next three Here rounds. Comes, hopefully offense goal based on our conversation earlier. Round three, pick 95, cornerback Mike Sanders still from Michigan, a guy that has been uh, mocked in the second and in the third rounds. Wide, uh, wide receiver Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky, a really popular name with the Chiefs, with the 49ers, uh, Debo Samuel type of comparison with this guy in the second round, pick 64. And then... Offensive tackle, Jordan Morgan in round one, pick 32 from Arizona. So you know I'm good with taking a tackle. The first one, my question is, is the expectation that he's a pl- he's a left tackle in the NFL? Or is he like, oh, he's a right tackle? Because if that, then... Jawan Taylor can be your left. At least I you know, have but a long-term I think they're done with that. One tackle. I think they're well, done the, with that. The, the, I think the, con- the thing is, the consensus is he'll play left tackle. Like, that, that every single time a defense or an offensive tackle has been mentioned at pick 32 is... Donovan Smith is gone. Here's competition, or here's sure. your starter going They're forward. They're talking about them like left tackles. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Do I mean, the Chiefs feel that way? To me, know? if you're drafting someone at 32 and this with where they're at, he he needs to be a left tackle. I don't want them. You I know, take the a right tackle at 32, but I, I mean, but I don't think they're. I think they're done I mean, with Juwan as the left tackle option. They didn't even start done. La- with, like, lasted what three weeks? That's what I'm saying. Like I, I, they were willing to shift off of him that quick. Yeah, that's probably not great. And they, he, he they was instead went inside Donovan Smith. He was labeled as talented and versatile, and he is a true left tackle all okay. throughout his college career, 2021, 2, and 3. How long in the arms? You know that's the question. Come on, man. You uh, know we have to know his arm. What's his last name again? Jordan Morgan, Arizona. It the arm have... thing is the minimum standard for Andy Reid. That's why. <laughs> it's not even a joke. Uh, it's a very pretty... real thing. 32 and 7 eighths inch. Pushing it. I, I will pushing say it. this I, again. Oh, I mean, God, I don't know, man. That's French. Pro football <laughs> focus numbers are iffy, but he has a, he had an 87.3 plus pass block grade in his career. Okay. At Arizona, he's which is uh, considered very elite, if not the best there you in go. that time span. No, I mean, I, pos- position wise, I don't mind the mock. Like just from a position standpoint, that sounds. I mean, that's cool with me how they they break it down. Uh, someone did point out Calvin Johnson six five. Uh, I said six foot seven, not so, six foot five. But he's not funny. six seven. He's not. He's not six seven. He's, six, he's at least six six. He's, he, 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 Fine, find me a six foot six jo- guy. Johnny Wilson six six. I made this argument with Brock Osweiler, and I stand by it. There is a reason, like with the arm length thing. There is sure. a reason why certain sizes don't work at certain positions. Six sevens, too damn tall to be a wide receiver. And again, he's not. You got to be a tight end or an offensive lineman or a shooting guard. I don't care, but not wide receiver. I think. That, I mean, I think that was the conversation with him even while he was in college. I mean, Harold Carmichael's a Hall of Famer. He was six seven to six eight. So it's happened. There's always outliers, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's a Hall of Famer. I've never even heard of that guy. My thing. Have you heard of that guy before? I think he played for the Saints. (laughs) I no, I haven't. I haven't looked him up. Someone texted in Carmichael. Is is he tall enough? Is he tall enough? Carmichael. The reason why, Cody. The reason why I six foot eight. Six eight. Tall man. He was six foot eight. The reason why I think Uh, different football time. Well, I was going to say that for that exact reason. Seventy eight. Johnny Wilson Thanks is six foot six. Eagles. His forty is is a four five, but he never was a fast guy originally to begin with, anyways. So he'd be a fast tight end or a slow wide receiver, a too tall slow wide receiver. Or, that's not even. I don't even. He's a six round fast even, Cody, tall tight end. I don't he's even know if that's slow because he ran faster than he ran faster than Keon Coleman ran at his forty. I, the, the F, I, Football speed. He's a he's a six round pick. I'm so cool with that. Plexico Burris. He was six five or six six. Yeah. Well, that did not work out great for Black. His R, his RAS yeah. was nine. Misfire, was, <laughs> Cody. His RAS, his, his RAS, if you want to know his RAS, uh, was nine point nine or nine point six nine. That's pretty. Good which high. is better than Lad That's pretty, McConkey. That's a pretty good athlete. He has elite size, great explosion, good speed, but didn't qualify in agility necessarily. Nice arms. He's at thirty five inch arms. He's six foot six. A six six. Good. He can play right tackle. A six six. You're describing things I don't want in a wide he receiver. Is a, he has a oh, he long almost, arms. Nobody's ever said that wide receiver's arms are so long. He's so much better at receiver. No one's ever cared about some long. Like get out of here. He's he's uh unless he's, it's like Calvin unless it's Calvin Johnson. It's a six round potential pick. It's a flyer at wide receiver in the sixth round. That, that, that's like, <laughs> like, oh God, that might be a home uh, run as a as a as a fifth round pick. That that's a home run. You're really defending this guy. You know, you really. I didn't want say them. home run. No, <laughs> I didn't say home run. <laughs> I didn't say home run. I'm just you don't saying. You get locked into home run. I'm not gonna say that. I wouldn't mind if you told me they took a flyer on a wide receiver in the sixth round that happened to be six six. Why not? I like how these people said Harold Harold Carmichael's great in Madden because you can use him as like the <laughs> legend players. He's too tall. Six eight man. 
That's, he's uh, six seven, <laughs> has thirty has thirty five inch arms and has a thirty seven inch vertical. I, I mean, if he, if he can catch the ball, which he did a pretty good job of that at Florida State. I, I mean, I can't believe this guy's not a first round pick. The way you're talking about him. Well, the injury issues, <laughs> like, like what Gold That's was it. saying. Injury issues. By the way, I'll just be honest with you. I hate this much because I hated this with Aaron Murray back when it was like the worst time to cover the Chiefs, and I had to like fight off Chiefs fans to tell them Aaron Murray should not start for this team. I'm watching him in practice, and I don't evaluate talent at the NFL level, and that guy stinks. He can't play. He can't throw the ball. And I had to argue people like, he'd have been, he'd been number one overall if it wasn't for that ACL. Not true. Okay, here's it's just the way. not here's true. The, uh, you can be as injured as you want if you were an incredibly talented player. You go higher than the sixth. You. Here's the uh, definitive list of tall wide receivers <laughs> in oh the NFL. Gosh. You want it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tall receivers going over 1,000 yards. Calvin Johnson, he's 6'5". He okay. obviously went over. All right, all right, Mike cool. Evans, 6'5". He's had a pretty damn good career. He gets 6'5's tops. Uh, Brandon Marshall. Is he taller than 6'5", or is he 6'5"? He was 6'5". These are all 6'5". That's a sweet spot. He's all 6'5". Oh, all 6'5". Yeah. Uh, Calvin Johnson, I mentioned already. He's on here multiple times. Vincent Jackson. I think he's a f- Vincent Jackson, Tampa. Yeah. Uh, Ed McCaffrey was 6'5". Chris Collinsworth was 6'5". To give you uh, also... Coach. I've not heard a single guy, you know, like, again... Well, I'm, I'm leaving six, out six, one name on purpose. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Kelvin <laughs> <Calvin laughs> Benjamin. 1,000 <laughs> yards one year. <laughs> he did have 1,000 yards. And he was take, a chief. Take Johnny Wilson out of the equation. Let's talk about my, Malachi Corley for a second. His comp is Debo Samuel, according to his draft profile. He's he's five, he, he is a, he's built like a running back, but has elite speed. That's he's, just because nobody wants to do a draft comp of... He's Greg Dortch. Nobody wants to just, like, no, mention he, the player they could be. No, no, no. no he, 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 the, he's legitimately he, – he, no, he, 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 he can play anywhere on the field. Yeah, and, and the comp for uh, who we were just talking about, Johnny Wilson, was, like, Devin Funches or yes. whatever. So. Devin Funches. <laughs> so it's not like they're all oh. giving him star player comparisons. Uh, but he, he's 5'11", 215, but he could – in terms of what Andy – he's he's a great player. Like, if you imagine what Debo could be – in the offense, not to say Malachi Corley will be as good as Debo, but if you think Andy Reid tinkering with stuff, yeah, I, it fits. I kind of love, I was looking, so I was like, all right, I need to look up, like, wide receivers taller than six. Six and five seems to be the peak of, like, you can be good. Yeah. It's like the quarterback thing with Osweiler. It's like, that seems to be, like, the peak of height you can be and still be good at wide receivers. So I'm like, hey, is there a single, like, okay, I need to look up wide receivers six foot seven or taller, who are six foot six or taller, who've been successful in the NFL. And this is a Reddit thread from eight months ago where people were arguing the same thing as us. <laughs> Literally about the same player. Someone is like, hey, I'm worried about, I mean, they're talking about the player we just mentioned in the sixth round. And then someone's like, Harold Carmichael's six foot eight. And he was inducted <laughs> into the Hall of Fame. Eight months ago on Reddit, somebody was way ahead of this argument. I don't know if it's because I lived in Pensacola and we talked about, we covered Florida State a lot, which is why I'm, okay, I'm okay. back in Johnny Fair. and why I love Keon Coleman. Well, yeah, Coleman, I get why people are excited about Keon Coleman. I don't know. I, I think that for, for a fifth round pick, for a guy that was mocked to be in the second and day two, I think it, that's where I I'm mean, at just like, in all seriousness, the Johnny Wilson things like you're gonna have a hard time complaining getting about Johnny time. Wilson. Dude. We will when he we comes in. I want like a six round pick. We're talking about guys. I, I fine. Like you're gonna have a hard time. Like if we're sitting here on the Monday after the draft and they draft anybody in the sixth round, you're gonna have a hard time tell, like convincing me like it's a horrible pick. It's a six round pick. I tell you what, we're all gonna regret this conversation if Johnny Wilson ends up being Puka Nakua. <laughs> He's just going for it, it is fifteen hundred yards well, as rookie. I, I have no problem with the pick. Uh, this mock is interesting because they they don't have a running back at all going anywhere. They don't have a mock for uh, the mock doesn't have them taking running back or tight end in any capacity. No, I don't need them to take a tight end. To me, last year was the year to take a tight end if you were going to do it. Last year had what you, everybody said was a deep tight end class. They could just go Noah Gray for in one terms more of year like future starters. Year. Yeah, last year well, they got Irv Smith right. He's he's going to fix everything. Uh, too. Yeah, that's right. Wish they taken Sam Laporta. Go go on ahead and make him your tight end too. Go. He's going to be tight end three. Go ahead. With some other op- with tight end three, but they'll put him out there. God, could you imagine they took Sam Laporte in the first and then Rasheed Rice in the second? Woo! A lot the, of teams. Wish they, a lot of teams, teams that skipped on Laporte, man. Wish the they Bengals did. skipped him, yeah. Man, that would have been something. A lot of teams wish they took Puka Nakua. The Rams maybe wish they took their the first, fifth. fifth round pick. They, t- <laughs> they waited until their third fifth round pick to take Puka. Mm-hmm. Turns out. It's hard. It's hard to evaluate. It was weird. I think th- 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 that's been the, the the label that's been put on Lad McConkey is he, he could be the next Puka Nakua. It's like the guy's going to get picked in the second round. I don't know if you can call him the next Puka. I would relax on the wide receiver who just set the single season rookie receiving record and did historically great in things. Terms of like, he could be the next that guy. You're like, <laughs> probably relax. not. Probably not that, that good. You'd take 800 yards, just like we all would out of a rookie wide receiver. Of course. 
2000 is a great year. Can we get a Masters update, Drew? We can. Currently atop the leaderboard, Max Homa still through eight holes is seven under par for the tournament. Bryson DeChambeau through two is even par. He is also at seven under. Scotty Scheffler yet to tee off. He tees off in about 45 minutes or so. He is at six under par. Tiger Woods at plus one, even for the day through eight holes. He currently sits tied for 34th. So in comfortable position, the cut line is still, or it was at two. It just actually changed to three over par. So a little bit more wiggle okay. room for, for, for uh, Tiger Woods. One of the guys that we bet on, Adam Scott, plus four for the tournament. He's right on that cut line. Uh, others who uh, we bet on are not going to be. Yeah, your uh, suggestion is Spieth. I don't think it's going to work Spieth out. is actually playing better than D- Dustin Johnson, believe it or not. He <laughs> is even further down on the oh, leaderboard. Oh, is he really? Dear God. Very, very windy uh, conditions out there. Still yet to tee off as well near the top. Joaquin Neiman, Will Zalatoris mentioned, Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau, Patrick Cantlay, uh, Matt Fitzpatrick, your guy, uh, Gold, who... I didn't come through yesterday, but no. had a good tournament. Um, all those guys still yet to tee off, among others. A very windy day, blustery. Out of, blustery. Out of, out of Augusta that's National. That's not just windy. That's, we're getting, that's, we're, that's extra We're windy. getting more and pants, more descriptive with these leaderboard pants updates. Pants flying today. every... Uh, the, the pants are waving everywhere. This Masters leaderboard update, by the way, on 610 Sports Radio, brought to you by Twin Peaks Eats, Drinks, Scenic Views. Coming up next, we'll get to what's trending and then right back into the White Hot Royals who have won seven in a row and are in New York tonight to take on the Mets. And it means we got to let Cody do it for another day. Hey, it's Brady Singer. You're listening to Cody and Gold. Weekdays starting at 10 on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more. All with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Erectile dysfunction affects many men in America today, but it's not just the man who's affected. It's also often their partner. But successful treatment of ED can truly bring relationships back to life. This is Jeff, the CEO of Promenic Restorative Men's Health, and that's why I'm pleased to announce the opening of our second location of Heartland Men's Health right here in Independence, Missouri. As a Promenic affiliate, Heartland Men's Health is a part of a group that has successfully treated tens of thousands of men over the last decade with treatments that are shown in medical studies to be effective in well over 90% of men. And unlike wave therapy groups or online pill sellers, we offer a variety of treatments to help you get the results you want. You could even find you're performing like you haven't in years. So call Heartland Men's Health today. Your initial visit is only $99 and includes a medical consult, blood work, and if medically advised, a test dose. And if that test dose doesn't work in the office, your visit is free. Call 844-447-6600 or go to heartlandmenshealth.com. That's heartlandmenshealth.com. Hey, it's Kling. There are many reasons I love hy V, the great values, the selection, the service, and I love to rack up fuel savers. And you can as well. Shop hy V on Monday, earn a fuel discount equal to the high temperature on Sunday and the amount you spend. If the high is 68 degrees on Sunday, I'll save 68 cents per gallon when I spend $68 on Monday. Heat up the savings every Monday through April 29th only at hy V. Must look up code 80007 to check out or promo code heat up when shopping online see store for details the best deals at the pump happen when you shop the aisles of hy V with help from the first warm five weather team this is kctv5 chief meteorologist luke doris watch kctv5 sunday night at 10 for our official high temperature whatever it was on sunday means you save on monday with your hy V perks card if the high was 63 degrees you save 63 cents a gallon when you spend at least 63 dollars Watch First Warn 5 weather on KCTV 5 this Sunday at 10. Made to shine. Real stories from Shane Company customers. I couldn't believe all the colors of stones you could choose from to create an engagement ring at Shane Company. I didn't even know there were like 16 colors of sapphires. And they had so many diamond shapes. I just didn't know what to get. They asked me where we met. And I told them we fell in love in the Caribbean. They showed me their light blue aquamarine. And I was like, that's it. The color of the sea. It was perfect for her ring. Exquisite diamonds and vibrant gemstones in a rainbow of colors. Shane Company, fine jewelry since 1929. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. 
Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash 610Bob and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 and present in Kansas. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Getting help is your best bet. Call 1-800-522-4700. That's 1-800-522-4700. Or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Com. This is an important notice to all U.S. taxpayers. The IRS is giving away billions of dollars in tax savings through a federal program called the Fresh Start Initiative to aid delinquent taxpayers. This initiative was established for anyone facing financial hardship and unable to pay their back taxes. Qualifying and enrolling in this program will stop all collections, settle your delinquent tax problem, and even reduce what you owe by thousands of dollars. Call the hotline at People's Tax Relief to see if you qualify and get this free free information by dialing 800-351-4596. If you have unfiled tax returns or cannot afford to pay your personal or business back taxes, you can now get the help you need. One simple phone call can resolve your tax problem and save you thousands of dollars. To see if you qualify and to get this important free information, call 800-351-4596. 800-351-4596. 800-351-4596. Texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Haven't seen you around the gym. Yeah, I've really fallen off. Since I turned 40, I just don't get the results I used to get. Could be a lower testosterone. I went through it a while back, I got Nugenix Total Tea and it's made a huge difference for me. I've seen that ad on TV. Is it for real? Oh yeah. The key ingredient is something called Tesnor, which helps boost free and total testosterone levels to help you trim up and stay lean. And it's made a difference for you? Man, I feel like I'm in my 20s again. At work, in the gym, and in the bedroom. Are they still giving out complimentary bottles for people to try it for themselves? Yeah, you just need to send them a text. Text REP to 321-321 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total Tea. Plus, text now and will include a bottle of Nugenix Thermo, our most powerful fed incinerator ever, to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. Text REP to 321321. That's REP to 321321. Products and statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or illness. You're listening to 610 Sports Radio from the Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Studios. Subscribe to the 610 Sports KC YouTube page for exclusive video content from Cody and Gold on your official broadcast partner of the Chiefs and your home for Royals baseball. 610 Sports Radio. KCSB Kansas City. WDAF HD2 Liberty. Always live on the free Odyssey app. What's trending? All right, let's check in on the hot topics. Trending, trending, trending. Number one on what's trending, it's the Royals who have won seven in a row. They kick off a six-game road trip tonight in New York at City Field against the Mets. It'll be Michael Waka on the bump, a uh, Royals team that's going for their 10th win of the season. Already on Friday, April the 12th, 6-10 first pitch. Vern's on deck show at 5 o'clock, and they have just completed the first seven-game homestand sweep. Uh, since like the 80s, I think I saw earlier. It's the third time ever since 1988, and then the other one was in 1985. Rare case for the Royals, but still a good one. We're going to talk more Royals baseball here coming up in just a minute. As for the second straight day, Vinny Pascantino was great. Opened the floodgates again in the first inning. Got the first two RBI to put him up 2 nothing in what ended up being a nine-run first inning for the Royals. That game was over. 15 minutes of the game. It was done by that amount of time. Next up on what training, Kentucky has officially hired BYU coach Mark Pope to replace John Calipari. If you're like Mark Pope, he was a national champion for Kentucky as a player. If you think it's going over well in Lexington, it is not. They think that they should be above that in the hiring circle. Mark Pope has never won an NCAA tournament game as a coach at multiple different stops. He's had some success, but he never finished higher than second in his conference in both the WAC. He finished fifth this year in the Big 12. Did a nice job in the Big 12. Got some good wins in the Big 12 this year, but got the Kentucky job. Felt like a huge leap forward. From a Kentucky standpoint, this is a much lower hire than what they would normally. Well, they swung big for Nate Oates and so Scott Oates Drew. And, and careful. And they ended up with Mark Pope. And that's, you know, he's obviously a very good basketball coach, but 
It's gonna he, he's gonna have to go prove himself more than somebody else on day one to the yep. fan base. Uh, but look, it's a completely different style. It sounds like the NIL money might be bigger because he's making less money. So that's the trade off. Some reports are saying like. You know, because his salary is not as high as Cal, maybe the donors are willing that that money will go to NIL and maybe they'll actually have some more success there. I don't know. They, it was never a talent thing at Kentucky. It helped uh, them we'll that see. they didn't have to fire Calipari and pay out the $30 million or find people to pay the $30 million. He left himself. You didn't have to worry about it at all. He took off, which meant you didn't have to like, you know, it is sometimes you got to convince the NIL boosters to do it. There is, we'll eventually hit, I assume it's like a housing bubble. At some point, I'm assuming we'll hit an NIL uh, big donor bubble in college. Well, sports. there's already an article sure about that. Haven't hit it yet. There's already an article about this donor fatigue is happening. Like people are like, wait, this NIL thing, I got to do this every year. Or, you know, there, there's there's already been some concern among athletic directors and, and school presidents. Uh, next up on what's trending, we knew this was going to happen yesterday, but it, and it did. That was Rashi Rice uh, turning himself in uh, to police on Thursday night in connection with his role in that six vehicle crash in Dallas last month. Uh, There was that arrest warrant. He faces eight charges in the case, six counts of uh, collision involving bodily injury, one count of collision involving serious bodily injury, and one count of aggravated assault. That, according to the arrest warrant, uh, he has already uh, bailed out. Uh, And so we'll see. He wasn't even in their system by the time they, like, announced that he was ever in. It was, like, they already arranged for how it was going to go down when he turned himself in and everything. But uh, we'll see, man. Like, there's obviously the, the court process, and then the NFL at some point could be, September before the NFL does anything. That's what's trending here on Cody and Gold. Except for we probably do we need another Masters update? You we'll, get, we'll get one here a little, a little bit? bit later. Yeah, we just had one like ten yeah, minutes sure. ago. We'll get another one from Drew. We'll, we'll obviously know the Masters is going on. Check in on uh, on that and uh, see how a couple of our our picks are going. Also, everybody keep an eye on Tiger Woods. Can he make the cut? Just uh, save par. That's big. Very good up big. and down. By the way, um, look, the Royals have been the story in the early going here sometimes by this time in april and yeah i know it's 12 days into april over the last couple of years we have already like began to be, uh, mourn the loss of another season where things have gone they're the number one run differential team in baseball they have the fourth best winning percentage baseball they have the second ranked defense in all of baseball they have the second ranked starting pitching staff in all of baseball they've been incredible look they they've it's been an unstoppable run here in the early going. I'll be honest. There's two players who have really stood out to me, and I'll, I'll get to one in just a minute. But Bobby, I mean, obviously, Bobby Wood Jr. at this point. Did you, I mean, just even like the simple things. He made a play yesterday look far easier than it was. He had to flip a player off his back on a ground ball and still just flicked it over to get the out. Eh, no problems. All said and done there. In a start that Brady Singer only went five innings because the starters have struggled it's relative struggled a little bit more than the early going. I just, he's doing some unheralded things to the point. I don't know if you've noticed the national media has picked up on Bobby Wood Jr. Big, 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 big time because of just how good he's playing. He's got the third or fourth best odds to win AL MVP, depending on the book you're looking at. Uh, and he's probably going to be right up there throughout the entire season. The way he's performing, had the two home runs uh, yesterday to get out of the ballpark. And you're right. The defensive play, I, I think was number seven or four, seven or four on ESPN's top 10 plays yesterday, because one, you're lucky he didn't get hurt or Lofton as well. Yeah. Uh, but then to make that play, just be locked in laser focused, didn't skip a beat. Never took his eye off of the no. first baseman. Salvi, like even like looked back. He was basically like, basically like, what the hell is that? Uh, cause Salvi was playing Lofton on the ground. Yeah. Cause Salvi was playing first yesterday with Vinny DHing and, uh, it was, yeah, it was it was another great play, great moment for, for Bobby Wood Jr. and this team. And as he said after the game, though, yesterday, you know, it's like, it's great. We won seven in a row. It's like, now it's on to New York. Like, the making, sh- like, making sure you keep this momentum and everything rolling. They're a confident team. They're, I think the key is also they're just loose. I mean, how can you not? You're, you, you said it earlier uh, about where the, this team typically is in April. And oh, yeah. we know after a first week or so, the last few Aprils, man, everybody's pressing because they want to be the guy that gets them out of the slump. No, there is no slump, number one, because this team has won seven in a row. But nobody's feeling any pressure right now. Everybody's hitting. Everybody's pick, like, there, there's just no pressure. Some, you, you trust somebody else is going to pick you up if you happen to have an off day. Right now, everybody's kind of having a good day, uh, the way things are trending during this winning streak. But confidence is a powerful thing. And when you're not pressing and you don't feel like, oh, my gosh, we lose tonight. We're... No, you, you don't have that. When you don't have that in the back of your mind, it's just massive. And they're going to take on a Mets team that, you know, is off to a like four, I think four and nine start or something like yeah. that. So they're a team that can be had. It's not like you're facing a juggernaut team that, that is Yankees also hot the right now. In the league. Yeah, you and the Yankees are the, the hottest teams, the best teams in baseball right now. Yeah. 
I mean, as it sits currently, absolutely. Look, Brady Singer, they their scoreless inning streak out of the bullpen ended last night. Brady Singer only went five innings. He had the bases loaded in the set and the third inning. He had runners on second and third with one out in the first inning. Like he was in trouble. He was in a lot of trouble in the early going. Let up one run. Only struck out four, still has a sub one ERA. For a minute, can we talk about Vinny? Because I see people on the text line, which I appreciate. Someone says, Cody, I need you to sing your heart out today. Got a Vinny home run, and the Royals on the money line parlay. The the rule is as long as Vinny stays hot. We can't get in the way of, of Pasquantino being sung on the show. That's right? correct. We'd, we'd establish that. I wanted Binkley to get a live version of it today. I'm sure he's um, thrilled. Binkley loves my songs. That's a well-known fact. Uh. I don't know if it's a well-known fact, but it's a fact. <laughs> that Jay Binkley loves my songs. So today during Club 610, we will do another live version of Pasquantino. Uh, I told you yesterday I, I offered you 15% extra gusto. Mm-hmm. What are you promising today? We're going to take it up. Okay, not just the gust. <laughs> Further like, than that? We're we're adding elements. I'm not, this, oh. this isn't just me showing up to perform. This is like Vinny. He's got, the better he plays, the more responsibility. By the way, two games, two, just two games. Vinny did not hit for like 11 or 12 consecutive games to start the season. And in just the last two games, he has raised his average to 222 with a 308 on base percentage. All eight of his season RBIs, which, by the way, puts him in the top 40 of Major League Baseball, 45, I think, in Major League Baseball, came in the last two days. How about that? Since the Pasquantino song, he has seven worked. of nine with a walk, eight RBI, two doubles, and a home run. He's not just good. He's unstoppable. Hell, his offensive game would have looked huge last night if it hadn't been Bobby Wood Jr. going four for five with two home runs and a spectacular defensive play. So he's only the second best offensive player yesterday, but Vinny was still pretty No, great. since since the song, you can't deny it. Since the song, Vinny's been hot. The team was already winners of five in a row, but he has gotten out of his slump. And uh, as he said, we asked him in the clubhouse. Keep singing it. That's all I got. Just keep doing it. And so who am I to argue that at this point? You don't have, you know, I mean, hmm. really, there's just no choice. That's what I the, said. When his first two at-bats went again last night, two for two with multiple RBI. I mean, it was over then. It wouldn't even have meant when they were already up nine, nothing. Cause by the way, it's not just Vinny's back w- woke up and then the offense decided to start like pouring runs on, not just scoring the last two games. The Royals have what they scored yesterday. Uh, 13, didn't they? And they scored 11 the day before they scored 24 runs in their last two games. I mean, that's why they're the best run differential team in baseball. You had said earlier that there wasn't an amount of wins that would make you feel like you would lock you. You would say, this team's making the playoffs, and I, you know, I know. In April, you you said, is there a win total yeah. in April where I would say 100 percent they're making the playoffs? I said no, no. I mean, Why not? this this is an unbelievable start. It's fun. It's so refreshing to to finally have a quality baseball team to 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 go and watch, and hopefully, fans starting next weekend when they're back at home start showing up to the ballpark. But uh, no, because it's April. I mean, I, I think what happened is we have seen in the past this team struggle for two weeks, at the beginning of the season, and we've all said, hey, the season's over, and it has been. On the flip side, what makes it, the baseball season so challenging, two great weeks at the beginning doesn't definitively guarantee you a damn thing. So It's much easier to, to, to take yourself out of the race the first two weeks of the season than it is to put yourself in the race based on two weeks. So I had them as a 78-win team before the season, and I even have a bet on them to win the AL Central. But am I going to sit here after April, unless they just go on a 14-game winning streak or something, am I going to sit here and say that 100% they're making the playoffs? No, because it is still... April. What to me they have shown already is that no, this team has legit talent. This team is going to be good enough to be competitive all summer. The next step, which is like actually making the playoffs, to me it is way too early to, to be declaring that kind of stuff. I think that there's a record that would do it. And I think it's probably if they went 12 and 6 in their next 18 games, which would finish up April for them and then wrap them up and it would put them 11 games above 500. So I looked up 2003. And again, I, I'll tell you why those two teams are different, just like 2021 was different on the other end. I looked up 2003. That was the last time and the Royals won 83 games when all of a sudden you were like, oh, my God, are the Royals good? They finished at the end of April 17-7 and seven with a plus 30 run differential. So they were a really good team. They followed up that, that next month 10-19 and 19 with a negative 46 run differential. And then they were pretty much just 500 the rest of the way. Had two more winning months two more months at 13 and 15 and fell just short of a playoff hope in 2003, then tried to buy in and it all went disaster. But I mean, honest to God, there is no chance. I mean, like 2% chance that if we go back 
and we look at this team, we're going to feel the same way about the roster and the collection of talent and the age of said talent and the upward ability of those players versus 20, 2003, one of my favorite seasons of all time. That's an anomaly. Ken Harvey, Angel Barroa, and I know some of those guys were young-ish. Ken Harvey was 25. Angel Barroa was 25. Literally everyone else on that team was old except for Carlos Beltran. But it's like, come on, look at the starting pitching staff. It was Daryl May, Chris George, Runelvis Hernandez, Kyle Snyder, and Jose Lima. No matter what we think of this team, 10 years from now, we're not going to laugh thinking that what were we buying into at that time when those were the starts we were getting. Uh, it's just a magical uh, kind of – I just think yeah. if they were 11 games over – and they were 10 in 2003 and they missed the postseason, but they were 11 games above 500, you legitimately have to play 500 baseball the rest of the way to be a playoff. I, I hear it. you. No, and there's – clearly this team is better than that roster, and clearly this team, if you look at the the pieces and some of the young talent, I mean, they they also have a guy that has a chance at some point in his career to win MVP – on this yeah. team. Well, Carlos you know, Beltran so was a pretty great player. He, fair. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, Bobby Bobby would, won an MVP, but he's a yeah. great player. But we would all agree that Bobby Wood Jr. is going to have a real chance to win that award at some point in yep. his career. I don't know if it's this year, okay? But he's, he's probably he's the gonna, most talented Royals you know, player to ever put on the uniform. From a pure, yeah, just from a pure skill set, yes. Mm. Um, but I'm just, I just think, you know, go ahead and, and buy into this team for sure. I think you you, you can buy into what they're doing. I just don't think after one month, and right now it's April 12th, not even a month, that definitively saying that this team is making the playoffs, I think that's a bit much already at this point. Um, but if they're able to replicate this into May, that's a dif- different conversation at that point. But it is still April 12th, man. But if so, the winning streak got to 20, you'd change your mind. Yeah. yeah they I mean, win the next point, 13 games in a row, then you're then well, you're in. Well, sure, because they would be what? Yeah. What would their record be at that point? What are they now? So like the, yeah, They're 20. 9 and 4 now, so you would add on another 11, 22 and 4. Okay, yeah. <laughs> at that point, it's a completely different conversation. Then you're in. Uh, yes. Again, I, I'm in on the team. I'm just, are you saying 100% now that they're, they're in the playoffs? Is that no. what you're saying? No. I, okay. No. I don't think, and look, I, I also wouldn't say that you can't have those conversations and be realistic about it right now. It makes sense. Like, I don't have to go, um, I don't have to go like full morning. Sh- I think Bob said that they're going to win the division by 20 games. I don't know what number he said, but like a, a comical number that is not realistic. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't think you have to do that. But I also don't think that like someone's like, I'm not getting excited until June. No, you, you should, should be, be excited. excited. Yeah. They are young. They are talented. Cause it's not just fun. Like Vern's right in that sense. It's not just like, oh, thank, because like my initial hope going into this, I'm dead serious. My initial hope going into the season was just, please be competitive enough. So that when Alex and I want to talk a little Royals baseball in June, you're not just like, oh, God, man, I can't. Oh, you know, like just be competitive because like I love that I want to be out in June and July at the K and feel like they got a chance to win and feel some optimism about the future that is realistic and not misguided in nonsense. Totally. Please, Papa. <laughs> but now, yeah. But now, I, mean, I think there's an actual chance that they do, they can make the playoffs. No, this, this this is a team that's exciting, and there's plenty of reason to 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 believe in them. I just think that that's a diff, saying that is different than uh, being like, how can you not think they're making the playoffs already? That I <laughs> I think that's a bit much on April 12th. That's all. Well, update from Joe Burrow. He uh, oh he Uh-oh, says Drew. oh he says quote this is from Pro Football Focus. He was asked a question about the Chiefs rivalry. He says quote. I think we're built to beat them. So, what do you think? What are you clapping for? Over? Beat what them, what they think? beat them one yeah, time in the playoffs. For. You're built to beat them? Let's go, baby. Built oh, to beat them? Let's go. I also think the Browns are built to beat He, he was on the New Heights show yesterday. Everybody was loving it. Yeah, he was on the New Heights show with Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey. Yeah. They sold out Cincinnati. Kelsey got his diploma. Travis Kelsey got his diploma from, from uh, Cincinnati. That looked like a very, very cool show. Yeah, they, just the entirety of it, job, the production obviously. of it, looked great. Yeah, they did a, the show in KC last year around the draft, mm-hmm. and then this time they did it in their hometown, obviously, or their, yeah, in, in Cincinnati. Uh, I think Joe Burrow was again. How nice of them, by the way. Let Joe Burrow be around nice. some Super Bowl champions. That's very nice of both of them. Let, let him said, experience what it's like to be around champions. Let him know what it champions. smells like to be around. As Travis said, it's not the same when no Joe Three Burrow. Symbols. It's not the same. Oh, it's definitely not. It's a lot more enjoyable when Burrow's involved in it because it makes it that much more satisfying when, you, when, when the Chiefs As opposed beat. to Jake Browning. Yeah. That's why heck, we're talking Dyson about the Thursday up. night game, Drew. It's open the season. I know everybody wants Chiefs. I don't Chiefs. want it to be then. Everybody Please. wants Texans, Chiefs, and I get it. I'm telling you, you uh, for the TV world, you might need to be Burrow. He may not be around week 10. He Good might point. be hurt at that point. He might need to get that game in early. 
Um, you don't want to motivate a Joe Burrow week one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> They've gone off to such a bad start. The Chiefs start. lost to the Lions know. week one. The yeah. Chiefs lost to the Super Bowl. I don't the, care. The yeah. Chiefs it's a week one game. Detroit. I couldn't care at all. Yeah. Speaking of uh, the Royals winning, you going to go to something like this? I'm just curious now because we were talking about it. The Royals announced, or I don't know, uh, Union Station announced an event. Yeah, the Royals Foundation. So the Royals Foundation is going to have a Royal return celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the American League Championship team on Thursday, May 16th at Union Station. I'm curious what people's interest is. The reported players who will be there, Lorenzo Cain, Luz Coleman, Tim Collins, Wade Davis, Gerard Dyson, Brandon Finnegan, Frazier, Gordon, Guthrie, Herrera, Hochaver, Holland, Hosmer, Abanez, Kratz, Moustakas, Perez, Shields, Vargas, and more. It's a... That's the whole team, isn't it? Who the hell are they missing off of the 2014? I think they, well, because they're doing um, team. They're, they're at the stadium too. They also have a couple dates on the schedule. If you paid attention to the, you can get an H yeah. bobblehead, and you can get a, a replica championship it, ring from that year. I think it's in May against the Oakland Athletics, and so this this coincides with this. This event sounds more of a hoity-toity. You know, buy a table for eight. You know, for oh, a couple you think it's grand. Rich guy thing, huh? That's what it sounds like versus the stuff at the ballpark. But I don't know. I haven't seen the details. But that's what you described. Seems like a very nice found fundraiser for the Royals Foundation. The fact that it's at Union Station, I don't think this is an. Ev- you know, th- this seems like a, a ticketed event to me. You guys want to get a table? Let's just as a show, show fun. Do we have enough? Mm. <sighs> Better These hit. golf bets are going to have to go a lot we better. To, <laughs> this snooker bet's going to need to We better become uh, snooker experts. Hold on. You know, I actually haven't checked on that snooker bet. Is, is it still in a, in a Interruption break? is yeah. what they called it. Interru- it was interrupted. Again, I don't know what the hell that means. All right, what do we got here? Betting discrepancies. You think that that's why they would interrupt <laughs> they a, saw snook- a snooker game? A bet in from Kansas a City. And they thought this guy's Ipe. <laughs> They're like, hang on a minute. It's still interrupted. It's still 5 4 and it's still interrupted. What the hell's going on? What the hell? What are someone do some like what the hell? Why would this thing be interrupted for so long? This is insane. Here we go. I'm about to get my answer, by the way, on the, the tickets. Here you go. Uh yep, kind of pretty much what we thought. Individual ticket three fifty. A table three grand. <sighs> yeah, one of those. That's, that's, that's a fundraising. Maybe game. another Can one. Can we that's go a, on behalf of Odyssey Incorporated? I don't know you if know, we get a table. I don't know, know if the company the, has a we're table. The, we're the radio partner of the Kansas City Royals. Can we can we get a table? I don't know if the company gets a table to that. But anybody, yeah. Hey, anybody a uh, rich <laughs> business person wants to buy a table and <laughs> offer up a seat to Cody and Gold? No, I, th- this event sounded like very a, a very nice event, and that's what it's going to be. The uh, At the stadium, they'll do some stuff to honor the 2014 AL champion team, but this is a, uh, a fancier event benefiting Royals Charities or the Royals Foundation. Hmm. Okay. Just asking. It looks cool. I mean, I, I get why that would be. I mean, they got the entire damn 2014 team. And imagine, by the way, if that's what they're going to do for the 14th. I think so. They're going to do the exact same thing the following mm-hmm. year. They're going to get all these guys. Anybody who was on both squads are coming right back next year for the Royals Foundation to celebrate. I can't believe it's been 10 years almost since the Royals won the World Series. 10 years since they went to the World Series. But, hey, look, now we're in a different conversation. What's interesting about that is I, there's one guy that I actually think hasn't gotten enough credit. Because, like, it was easy because he was here for the bad years, too. Salvador Perez, the way Salvador Perez plays baseball still, despite his age and everything he's accomplished, he still plays like a tiny little kid. He shows up to the ballpark, could play every last second of every last game, and seems to be enjoying every last second of every single game. The Baseball has not soured on Salvador Perez, and he knows how to, like, put in the work and be a champion. Like, I think his energy on this young team has been kind of an underrated part of what has helped this early season. It seems like it's revitalized Salvi again, too. Like, both of them working together just feels like Salvi just feels so, like, never stops loving baseball in a way that can only help these players. Yeah, and I think that, as you mentioned, the 14-team, the, the bridge of, you know, success and knowing what can be done in this city and what it's like in this city when you've got a great baseball team and uh, a full of, you know, wins all summer and October baseball – and having still someone that was part of that. And it's not just some photo that you see on the wall in the clubhouse or whatever. Mm-hmm. You have a player that was part of that and that can directly uh, knows what it's going to take to get to that level again and yep. also can share those experiences. I think that's massive to have somebody still on the roster and not just somebody, one of the greatest Royals of all time st- that was part of that still on this roster that's also helping you win games today. He's not just happy to be on the roster. He's still one of, he's the captain of the damn team. He's one of the top three and, Royals of all time. Yeah. Like if you're ranking out, like he should have his number retired on a wall. He's had arguably the second or third best career of any Royal player ever. 
He's got uh, Brett out, has one currently, but yeah, is. got an outside chance at going to Cooperstown. He does. You know, a lot of that's just going to depend on if they just look at catcher versus other positions and mm-hmm. then just decide not to fight. I think if Yadier got in, it would help him. I think Yadier. I think Yadier's, I think Yadier's almost for sure getting in though. Yeah, I don't think that hurts him. Though, yeah, you know, or I don't know. Let's do something crazy. It's twenty twenty four. You just won a World Series again. Be a two time yeah. World Series MVP. That, that would help. Then how that the hell help. are they going to deny us? That would, that would definitely help. I just think he's had. An, I think he's had an underrated impact on the squad because of. It's not again. It's not just that he's there. He's on the team, or it's not just that. It's just it is his love for baseball, and that even after ten years, he will go out there and grind every single conceivable moment out. I just saw a tweet from Eric Hosmer, uh, who obviously is doing some media stuff now, runs his own site that does some player podcasts. He responded to the the event we were discussing on May sixteenth yeah. at Union State. He said. Dice uh, is going to be there? Question mark. We might have to run back McFadden. It's anybody that was around in Kansas City, obviously in fourteen or fifteen. No, some of those uh, well-known uh, stories and, and, and events that took place after some of those big-time wins at PNL at McFadden's, and uh, I know some of you were there. Uh, and so, uh, Draw Dyson, yes, he's uh, Draw Dyson is on the list of of Royals players that is expected to be back for the the twenty fourteen celebration. Sounds like Hosmer is excited about that. Hosmer, uh, you know, he's trying to bring back the idioms. He sent a quote tweet of something I, I sent out that. last night that said, that's what speed do. Are we bringing that's what speed do back? Are we bringing that back and, like, keep the line moving, or do we need our own new things? Probably new things. Yeah, probably like the Pasquantino s- song. That's a new thing. Yeah, 1738 sticks with the 14 and 15 team, you know? We got to come up with new, different, you had to be there things. Mm, there'll huh? be something new that comes around. A friend of mine has a keep the line moving tattoo. That's how... Oh, oh. I mean, come on. That's kind of a cool. I mean, they won a World Series first. We always said wait to get the tattoo until they actually win the chip. Don't just like, you know, yeah. get, hoping that they do it and get You can just wait. Yeah, if Drew's, they win it, you can still get it. It's not going to, like, age poorly if they get it. Yeah, Drew's already got a Joe Burrow tattoo for the Super Bowl. That's a I mistake. Do not. Make sure you know you got he one. He just keeps adding an, an eye to the yeah, end of it. Pretty number. soon, the Roman numerals are going to work. It's like this, there's a number. Yeah, like he's a three-year window. The, he's going to add the, the carrot, uh, the little, like, if, if you he know, did, carrot. Would, if they did win, I would not get a Super Bowl champion tattoo. That would not be – I would not get that. Someone said it should be Vinny's quote from uh, the game. Who gives a – we're winning, we're winning games. That would be a cool one. All right, if the Royals win the World Series this year, I'll get that tattooed on my body. Who gives a bleep? We're, we're winning. winning games. I will tattoo uh, – my very first tattoo in the history of my life, that will go on my body mm. if the Royals win the World Series this year. Can I talk you down to if they just get to the World Series? No, win it. I'm not getting tattoos for not winning world championships. Okay. If the Royals win the World Series, I will get, and you can mark it if you want. But I'm sure oh, I, I will. I'm sure we'll find it. No, we I'll don't. Get everybody this knows you said it. Tattooed on my body. Who gives? A we're winning. We're winning games. So that's all that matters right now. Mm-hmm. That's our motto. Oh, by the way, there's shirts up at Red Gun right now from the Cody and Gold collection. Yep. That have that exact quote on them. That in vibes are great, which is what Bobby Wood Jr. said the other day in post game. So if you go to RayGunSite.com, you can buy a shirt that says, Who gives a bleep? We are winning games. Coming up next, we'll get to the random question of the day and the focus on offense in this year's draft. Cody and Gold brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. There is a back-to-back Super Bowl champion, and it is the Kansas City Chiefs. On your official broadcast partner of the Chiefs, 610 Sports Radio. Do you like to shoot fireworks? How would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? J&M Displays wants you. Shoot 4th of July at Sporting KC and a variety of other exciting events in the KC area throughout the year. Like to travel? J&M covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. J&M offers free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part-time job. And seriously, there's nothing like hearing the cheers of the crowd at the end of the show that you helped shoot. Be a part of the action. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. Choice for lawyers is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Paid for simulated client portrayal. I'm attorney Mike DeBasquale. No matter how you've been injured, my law firm is here to help. Mike and his team handle all kinds of cases. Big truck accidents and wrongful death cases. Even defective product cases. Any kind of case, Mike's got this. No matter what kind of injury case you have, I promise we can help. Call me. I've got this. Mike's got this. All you need to know. 816-888-7500. Mike's got this. 
the Landing in Liberty, the largest sports bar north of the river, and the home of over 65 HDTVs with every sports package. Hey, our motto is any game, any time. 10,000 square feet under one roof to provide adequate social distancing. Our non-smoking patio is not covered, but in the winter, it's home of the only dine-in heated igloos in the Northland. Each igloo has its own TV and sound system and seats up to eight people. The Landing has a great menu featuring the best dry rub wings in Kansas City and the home of the Ben Mallard Chicken Fingers. Most of our menu items, dressing and wing sauces are house-made. Daily food specials, happy hour every day from 3 till 7 p.m. Live music on our smoking patio Thursday through Sunday nights. Make your next destination the Landing in Liberty. Food, fun, music, and sports. The Landing in Liberty, 1189 West Kansas Street in Liberty. Check us out online at thelandingeateryandpub.com. We'll see you at the landing. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. And right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, super secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? I'm so excited that baseball's back, and I know you are as well, and you know I love the NBA playoffs, and they are right around the corner. Visit FanDuel.com slash CDOT, use my promo code, and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook app. 21 and present in Kansas. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issue is novel drama bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas. Under agreement, Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem. You can help is your best bet. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Three little words no parent wants to hear. My tummy hurts. And it always seems to happen at the worst times. Like in the middle of the morning rush when you still have homework to check and lunches to pack. And of course, you're already late for work. Luckily, there's Pepto Kids. Pepto Kids gummies help relieve occasional stomach upsets, turning those three words into these three words. I feel better. Bad time for stomach upsets? Good time for Pepto Kids gummies. Fast support for little tummies. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Are you the parent of a two to seven year old? Listen closely for an exciting free radio offer. By now, you've probably heard of ABC Mouse, the Parents' Choice Award winning online learning program that's actually changing the lives of early learners everywhere. ABC Mouse is like a little one-on-one teacher. It has helped her so much. Right now, we're offering a special radio promo to try it free for a month. But you have to go to abcmouse.com slash radio to claim your free month. That's abcmouse.com slash radio. Sponsored by Age of Learning. Drowning in IRS debt? If you can't afford to pay your IRS debt due to economic hardship, you can now be free of IRS collection efforts by taking advantage of a special IRS tax hardship program. This program allows Americans who owe the IRS to resolve their delinquent tax debt once and for all. In some cases, maybe even reducing what you owe significantly. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Simply dial 800-485-7220. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back or have years of unfiled tax returns, help is standing by. Just call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-485-7220 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your social security check. Call 800-485-7220 to see if you qualify. That's 800-485-7220. The smarter way to clean your floors, it's time to make the swap. Swiffer Power Mop. Introducing the new Swiffer Power Mop, the all-in-one tool that gives you a mop and bucket clean in half the time. The solution's built right in, so no heavy bucket, and the pad has hundreds of scrubbing strips to get deep into grout. Don't mop harder, mop smarter. Swift for power mop, Swift for power mop. What drives you? At 303 Car Care, we're driven to put the best detailing products in your hands. We create every formula, fill every bottle, and test every batch of 303 at our Chicago headquarters, always with quality in mind. From cleaners and coatings to our flagship aerospace protectant, you can trust that every 303 product does what the label says it's going to do. That's because 303 is driven by quality. Available at most auto retailers and Amazon. 
Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off, plus save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances and save on premium two cubic foot mulch. Get five bags for just $10 because Lowe's knows spring. Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid to 417. Appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. Premium mulch offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Selection varies by location while supplies last. Chiefs coverage is brought to you by Dury Vision. Schedule your free consultation today. DuryVision.com. One of the best decisions I've ever made was calling up Dury Vision, and now I don't need contacts or glasses. You can schedule that free consultation and find out what plan Dury Vision has for you as well. 913-491-3330 or go online to DuryVision.com. Coming up in 25 minutes, we'll get to Club 610 here on a Friday. Jay Binkley from Character Concerns, our draft insider, going to join us in studio. We'll talk some more draft. He was on with a draft special last night. Looking forward to his perspective. He was here last night, this morning. This is his wheelhouse. This is his time. Draft. 13 Binkley's days. Moment, huh? Mock drafts. Him and Chris Uno Sarah have been doing a great job with that. And don't forget, thinking of the draft, coming up later this month, that's April 25th. That's the first night of the NFL draft. The entire 610 crew is going to be hanging out at the landing in Liberty. And it's all brought to you by hy V, the proud official grocery sponsor of the Kansas City Chiefs. And you can have a chance to win $610 plus some autographed Chiefs merchandise. You can go to 610sports.com. There's a draft form on there. Basically, you think you know how the draft's going to go? Pick it. Team, where are the players going? You get points for that. The winner gets 610 bucks plus some Chiefs merch. You got to bring that form to the landing, opening night of the draft, uh, and that's that, that simple. We're going to be hanging out, having a good time, waiting for the Chiefs to pick at 32, and when they pick at 32, if they pick and don't trade out, the offense has to be the focus more in this year's draft overall, right? Those first two so. days of the draft, Thursday and Friday, after going defense Pretty heavily recently, Felix last year, Karloftis and McDuffie the year prior. It seems like now the swing goes back towards the offense a little bit when you think about the needs after free agency. Wide receiver's still there, and you know how I feel about offensive tackle. I think you do as well. Maybe not as much in the first round, but still recognizing well, that I told is... You, I've opened up way more to yeah. it in the first round just because of the wide receiver. Although the wide receiver thing becomes really interesting because I still don't know the number of games because this goes back to the Aminahue dana conversation we had earlier. The police report now says Rasheed Rice was driving 119 miles an hour seconds before the crash. So obviously he hit the brakes, but at some point they're claiming he was driving 119 miles an hour in a car. He still has very serious legal things could to take care so of. So much more. 119 miles an hour. A, I mean, it could have honestly to God been he a Henry killed Rice himself. He could have killed somebody. Or himself, anybody else yeah. in the, involved, yeah. 119 miles an hour. I mean, that's just a, incredibly reckless. For someone who has as much talent and promise in their life as that. And look, again, hope he learns the very valuable lesson that is going to come out of this when he is having to spend every dime just to get out of the legal trouble he's in and then prove back to his team and coaches and all this stuff that that, that kind of behavior is behind him. But the offense, even without the unknown of Rasheed Rice, I would have said needed to be the focus this year. Because for two straight years, Gold, what the defense has been the 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 focus. That's what it is. I just think you go through swells. I think it's very rare that a draft, you just go through the draft and it's just like, oh, 50 50. We had six picks this year and we took three offensive players and we took three defensive players. I remember this very conversation you and I were having close to the draft last year and I told you I want him to go defense heavy again. And you're like, nah, I think I'm ready for the offense to kick it, which it doesn't matter. I don't think it would have been like bad. Obviously, the offensive player they took in the second round was the single biggest impact player, but they took two offensive players. Just Rasheed Rice and Wani Morris. Everyone else was on defense. The year before, three of their first four picks were on defense, four of their first five, five six of their first set. Like, I mean, everyone except Isaiah Pacheco and Sky Moore were on defense. It's time. It is time to load up on offense. Tackles, wide receivers, guards, maybe a late running back, all of it. It is time to load up. Of the picks you have available to the Chiefs this year, I'd like 70%. I would like 70% to go on the offensive end. I think the same as you at this point because the cycles come back around and now it's time. I'm going back through all the years. He has gone defensive heavy way more often than offensive heavy. Just in the course of his history, he has taken in the very first draft he ever took. He did not take a single offensive player. Just so you know, unless for whatever reason, remember it wasn't a 
Tremont Smith was technically like a corner and a wide receiver. So I guess I give him a half a okay. point there. You All remember right. that? He was technically both. In his second year, he took two offensive players, McCole Hardman and Nick Allegretti, of seven total picks he had available to him. In the third year, he took Niang, Clyde. Again, only two of six players available to him. He does not go offensive heavy very often, but it's time. I think it's just, so. It's I, you just look at the needs of the team and how you've built up the roster and, and looking at last year defensively. Yeah, you were, you were the top defense or one of the top defenses in football. You lose LeJarius Sneed, but because you brought back what you brought back on the defensive line, because you now have a linebacking core that has Drew Tranquil in the system in year two that you feel even better about that. You know what you're going to get. Uh, you're likely committing to Nick Bolton long-term, we think. We'll see. Right now, he's still under the final year of his contract. But we, yeah. we think that's the case. Trent McDuffie is maybe the best cornerback in football. So defensively, yeah, you, I'm you're not saying, set for a little while. Yeah, you go ahead and upgrade the offense a little bit more. I'm not saying that they can't draft a defensive player. But the first three picks of the draft... I wouldn't care if you win all three even offense, to be quite honest with you. I don't think no, they I mean, will. My guess is they'll mix in either a defensive line or a corner uh, in that. in that. But offensive line and wide receiver has to be a priority. I think it will be. I love the Hollywood Brownie signing, uh, Brown signing, but that's a one-year one deal. deal. It's a one-year deal. And if he has the year you hope he has, I guess you could sign him to a long-term extension, but that's going to be expensive. You might just let him walk. So who's the guy in line after him? We've all thrown out the names, A.D., Mitchell, Xavier Worthies, whoever it may be that you think the Chiefs would actually draft a wide receiver. I don't think the wide receiver has to be the first-round pick, but it better be one of the first two picks. It, it better be one of the first two picks. I'll be really disappointed if it's not. I, again, I don't think that you should dictate your entire offensive plan because of the Rasheed Rice thing, but that just makes it easier. Do you know what I'm saying? I would have already been interested in wide receiver because other than Hollywood Brown on a one-year deal, nothing changed fundamentally about your wide receiver room. The Rasheed Rice stuff just makes it easier to justify. You don't, yeah. I didn't need the justification, but if for some reason they needed a nudge in a direction, that'd be easy enough to give me the nudge, the legal trouble of my star wide receiver. Yeah. No, and one I, more year I, added on to Travis Kelsey's age. Yeah, the Rasheed Rice situation doesn't change my draft plan. That's a, Yeah, that's not why I think it has to be one no, of the first two before. picks. Yeah, it's just... Barring some other information coming out, it, it, you know, you're potentially going to be looking at four to six game or so suspension. If that, whether it's next year or the year after, I don't think that makes you rush and, and go spend a pick you weren't willing to spend, whatever their plan was. I see some people in the text line saying, guys, it's not even that fast. 119, uh, it's a Lamborghini. That's not the point. The, the point is that not that the Lamborghini gets to 119 really quick. He was going 119 miles an hour. 119 miles an hour. He's like, that's barely driving fast in a Lamborghini. <laughs> it's still 119 miles an hour, guys. And Sir, also, he's it, not on the Autobahn. This isn't like a, a, it's a not race a, track. It's not a country road. He's not either. at Le Mans. Yeah, it's not a country it's road. It's not an interstate in one of the lo- world's yeah. or the city, the, the country's largest cities, one of the largest cities in Dallas. Like, yeah, I, I, I hear you that I'm sure. Getting to 119 feels like it takes, you know, whatever the two seconds for the hypothetical. Someone will text in and be like, actually, it doesn't take two seconds to get whatever. 119 miles an hour in a, in a, in a blink of an eye. I'm sure. He's still going 119 miles an hour. I mean. Someone says their Mini Cooper can get 120 on auto. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your Mini Cooper? Okay. Well, some of those are juiced up a little the bit. The point is not how long it takes you to get to 119. You're going 119 miles an hour. Weaving through traffic. Yes. It's not just, smart. That's simple as that. And he's very lucky he didn't die, and he's very lucky he didn't kill other people. That's it. I mean, it's just he got lucky. He's still got a whole bunch of trouble. Nobody's arguing that. He's got a lot of things to deal with, and, and everything that's going to come his way is deserved at this point. But, yeah, I don't like. <laughs> it's so like so he probably, he just probably got didn't out of, get out of fourth is such a wild well, comment. Just, just, uh, I mean, I, that's fine. We talked about this once. That was a random question once was what's the fastest you've ever. Uh... We've, we've had this. We've talked about this 20 times, I think, on this show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the fastest you've ever gone y- in a car. Y- yeah. yeah. I, I've been in a car when someone's driving that fast and it does not matter the car. It is terrifying. Being in it and not driving it is. Now I mean, put yourself just, in a busy yes. interstate in Dallas. Crazy. At the same time. While racing another car. Although I guess he never got charged with street racing. So, but that's what allegedly was going on. Sorry, I got distracted by uh, a Nick Capel tweet who sent out the oh. the best run differential start out of 13 games oh. for Ooh. any team in the American League. Gotcha. And I was just curious what their end win total was. Um, 
and it was going there pretty good for a while. They were all winning like 90 games until the 2019 Mariners. It did not go great for that squad. Just so everybody knows. Yeah, someone says, you guys act like you've never been speeding. Okay, so again, this is the difference. Obviously, uh, we, we, I speed actually more than I should, as a matter of fact. That's not the point. And also, I, I, I'm also not going 119 miles an hour on 435, weaving in and out of traffic. There, there is a difference, yes. Everybody probably has sped in their life. That's, it's not a moral thing like, oh, my God, don't act like you don't ever speed. No, absolutely, of course I have sped. 119 miles an hour... A on a busy interstate is not the same as, well, I've sped before. It's different. I hit 110 on a country road where there was nobody, no traffic, no stops. It was, it's a lot different. So in Texas, that's only nine miles an hour over <laughs> the speed limit. I don't think that's true. I don't think the speed limit's 100 miles an hour. Look, I've driven through, like, Atlanta. And, like, Atlanta, if you're not going yeah, Dallas 87 is, is miles highway, an hour, yeah. Yeah. you borderline aren't keeping up with traffic. But, again, mm. I'm just going to let you know. There is, okay, so let's just put this in perspective of like a school zone. You're like, well, it's 20. I was only going 40 over the, like, like, everyone goes 90. So I'm going 30 over the speed limit of what people normally go on the highway. It's 90 to 120. What's the difference? It's the same as like going through a school zone at 20 or 50. Mm. There's a big difference in those speeds. 30 miles. And I'm being generous saying like 90 is cool. That's still probably 15 or 20 miles per hour over the speed limit, which by the way, had he caused an accident going 15 miles an hour over speed limit, we are not having the same conversation. He was going 119. He caused a six-person crash, and then he left the scene. I want Rasheed Rice to learn from this and be a great chief for a long time. We all want the same thing. This is not Goldeneye rooting against Rasheed Rice. He's just talking about the reckless nature of his behavior. Coming up in 15 minutes, we'll get Bink's perspective on on the draft, obviously. A great job he's been doing with Christian Nocero on the Character Concern podcast. We have a club 610. Uh, certain beverages will be consumed in the 1 o'clock hour as well. But in the meantime, let's get to it, Drew. Random question. I thought maybe he meant the Masters update. I well, that, sure. well I, I didn't was know that you were going to either. Update or was that is, for... I know we don't, that's why on the rundown it says at 45, <laughs> random question random of the day. Question. You know? Well, you know, we're not always looking right at it. For you, Gold, for you, Drew, over the text line, 913-586-7610. It's fine. I'm always ready for the random question of the day. Don't worry about me. And over on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, there's a lot of other uh, avenues to watch the show if you're interested as well. The question I have for you today is related to something that's happened this weekend. I got to go down to Wichita. Oh, wow. The air capital of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. To watch. Uh, my daughter's got a dance competition for the first one that she's got to, like, actually, like, not just like a recital at the thing, but like she's yeah. actually got to go do the competition thing. The question I have for you today is, have you ever house sat? And follow-up question, oh. what's an appropriate amount to pay a house sitter? Someone is watching yeah. my house. Someone who works in this building and has been on this show is watching my house this weekend and might watch it again in July. Have you ever house sat for someone? What's the level of responsibility you think a house sitter should do, and what's the pay? I have not. No, I have you not. You paid someone to house sit, or you just like no, take your dog? I don't have a house, so no. So well, I, or so apartment I sit. But in your uh, case, you you're lucky. You get a. What did you do when you went out of town before with your dog? Boredom. Yes. Because now your dog just goes to your parents. Correct. Yeah, it's very easy. Saves me quite a bit of money actually when I go out of town now. When I was living in other cities, boarding. Board the dog. But my dog mm. doesn't get along with other dogs really well. And so you can I get feel, the private room. I know, but I feel bad that they're just sure. stuck in this room by themselves yeah. with no companionship. That's why you pay a few bucks for the training. They'll have one-on-one, -on -one, well, not training, one-on-one This one -on -one is why I'm just going to pay someone to house sit for <laughs> yeah. me. No, I know, but... They I, live you, in an apartment. They can live in my house for a few days. I don't right. care. Yeah. Are you so, anti-house sitting? Because, like, we talked about this, like, Airbnb. You said you never Airbnb your house. You said again, you would never. This is a bad question for me because I don't... But you said I you don't would never house. Airbnb your house. Correct. Would you let someone house it? Sleep in your bed. Watch your dog eat your food. Sleep in your bed? No. Sleep in my bed. Where are they going to sleep? On the couch. Or just... No, they can sleep in my bed. I don't care. What's the difference? I'll just clean the sheets. I think it's just weird for like... Can you just say the name of the person who's... It's Kramer. Kramer's house sitting. Kramer sleeping in your wife in your bed is just... Clean the sheets this morning, uh, freshly really, made. I just, I just, a co-worker, I just, I don't know. I just, what does it matter? Yeah, I just, I, no, just, I'm with you, uh, It's just the vibe of it, man. Like, no good. I, a co-worker sleeping in your bed. Right, I, just, you, I don't know, man. I stock the, the fridge has food. Look, oh, I don't the fridge that. has beer. <laughs> I, I, I don't but sleep on the couch, it feels like, hey, we, man, want to sleep in my house, but only on the couch. Don't touch my things. No, we need to ask Kramer. You might have offered the bed. He still might not sleep in your bed. Oh, we should ask him if he's actually going to take up the bed. Even if you offered it, he might just say, I'm, I'm just going to be on the couch. If That's I were fine. him, I wouldn't want it. Like, I know you're exactly. good with it. It's just a saying. bed. I, you know, think about like a hotel. 
That yes. hotel bed has had I know. 15,000 asses on it. It's one bed. But you don't know There's the two people. people. But you don't, it, it, in a weird it's way. It's worse because no, you know but them? In a weird way, it's better that you don't know who else has been in that same bed in Las <laughs> Vegas doing who knows what. At your house, if we know who it is, Someone and he, and he no works with you. Bed. Also, at a hotel, I cleaned you know the sheets. I cleaned the sheets. They were washed this morning and freshly made. Yeah, I don't think so he's like sleeping the bed, in your bed. The bed's good. I, I don't think Kramer's sleeping. I, I don't think Kramer's having his girlfriend come over or fiance now, right? Are I think married? so. Yes, fiance. Anyway, uh, someone says fifteen dollars, fifteen to twenty bucks per animal, hundred bucks, and then fifteen to twenty. But he's only going to do it for like two days. Like that feels crazy because I could just pay less to the pay at the boarding place with all the extra stuff. I'm just saying, man. You, I, I don't. You offer Kramer. You have a guest bedroom. No, he's not. I sleeping. have a bedroom, and my kids have bedrooms. He is sleeping on the couch. Yeah, or I mean. Seriously, I would even bring an air mattress before I would sleep in your bed. And that's, that's, that's not you personally. <laughs> don't I, same thing at Drew's. Same. I mean, any. I do not feel that way. Nobody, Drew wants said, to, nobody wants to come to my place. And it's in just a bed, especially coworker. I think the fact it's a coworker also makes it even weirder. I don't. Somebody else sleeping in your I, well, bed, okay. man. I don't, so I don't think it's that big a deal. I've it, never it's just a bed. I've never house sat for any for anybody. My sister has okay. uh, family friends. She never. They have bedrooms as well but yeah. they were they i don't have a spare room otherwise that would be the logical they she she never slept in any bed she slept on the couch when i have guests like we've had people stay over we have like a really good quality air mattress and then there's like a whole bathroom and a shower in the basement so like you could hype it but like i don't why can't i don't I also understand the bed sometimes is this is am i the only weird one that doesn't think it's that weird i don't see anybody in the text on agreeing with me so the, let's uh, just be me. nobody's sleeping in your bed cody that's gross you never sleep in another grown man's bed. This I'm person sorry. says they require their house sitters to sleep in the nude. Yeah. <laughs> just in there. Uh, I, I, I think you might be in the minority here. I, I was stunned when you said that you told Kramer, sure, just sleep in my bed. That's total. Uh, in the yeah, email, I, I sent him with instructions. I said, yeah, go nuts. I don't know, man. I just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. I feel, if, you, if you wouldn't have said, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't have said that, I think Kramer, he wouldn't have even thought about Sleeping in your bed. He, he, that wouldn't even come across his mind. Sleep I don't think it would. Couch? That sucks. Does house sitting also have to? I've, I've yeah, seen, but you're paying. If you're, you're paying him. He, he, he was happy to sleep on a couch. I think. How sitting? In that case. Can't. How close does he live to you? Because sometimes I and brought minutes? this up on the text line. Sometimes house sitting. It's you. You actually just check in on the dog in the house a couple times throughout the day. You don't actually have to yeah. sleep there. No, well, that's true. I guess he wouldn't hypothetically have to sleep there. Uh, I don't, I mean, you know, the dog can just go in her kennel for the night and he can just come back and check on yeah. her in the morning. Be the same yeah. as being gone for like a work that day. That was a wee tip whenever. I think that's harder for this trip because it's shorter. I think so. But like in mm. in July when I'm gone for like a week, overnight for a week, and that's a long time for the dog. At that point, I should probably just board. Because again, the same issue is I don't want the dog neglected. Well, sure. Based on this. That's why I yeah. thought house sitter might be a better choice than boarding this time. No, I mean, this I get is why, like a, this I, is a house sitting trial I, run. I get why the house sitting would make a lot of sense. And your day, your dog is going to be more comfortable in its same space. It's, I, I just what we're hung up on is you said, sure, Kramer, just sleep in my, I just my, my wife's nice bed. No big deal. This text line says, I don't get the big deal. I'm on Cody's side. This person just said, sleep in the guest room. I don't again. I don't have a guest room. Have I have a three bedroom house. The other two bedrooms are taken up by children. Somebody brought up a great point. What, Someone said, hey, what, Kramer, what, I have my favorite stuffed animal. <laughs> what if what if Kramer starts squatting? And you come back and squatting, you, and you cannot get into your place. We already looked it up in Missouri. Missouri you squat for like a year. This oh, is in New York City. I get his ass out in no time. But not, it's not New York City. You're good. <laughs> good. Imagine the money someone says Drew would pay for someone to sleep on his couch. Drew would pay me to sleep on my bed right now, based on his current living situation. Uh, the the bed is okay, but if you if you said what's the latest with that, by the way. Uh, so I talked to them yesterday. They're going. I I brought presented them a list of uh, people who could potentially come in and uh, inspect. Um, <clears throat> that I'd looked up, and they said that they would send it to corporate. Of course, and that's Ooh, it. And then, and then, up to and, corporate. Uh, in that situation, who knows when they actually will reach out. So okay. I reached out myself to corporate, filled out one of those message box things, yeah. and they said somebody would get in touch with me. Then let us know, man. Regarding that. So I, we, we are mm. we are attempting to advance the situation. We have gone and we've looked Ooh. at other places, as a matter of fact. Wow. Uh, doing that again today. New digs. You're, doing, you're looking at new, more, new, more apartments now? You might not get out to August. You're already looking just in Potentially, case. Potentially, yes. Man. Well, I, I think sent the photo of that mold, didn't you? And that moved <laughs> things up the that moved things up the ladder a little bit. Yeah, they, they said somebody would come in and come to the apartment and check uh, the place out, and I, I haven't heard from. Hmm. Kramer does have full deck access, done. by the way. I let him know full, full deck, deck access. Where they are. Nice, full access. deck access, and it's going to be warm this weekend too. It's yeah, perfect. 80, 80. 
Oh, dude, he's going to be sitting out by the fire. It might pit, even be in the screen porch. It'll be toasty. Be 80 on great. Saturday. I think 86 I saw on Sunday. It's going to be beautiful. Someone says you should just dedicate one of your decks for a tent. <laughs> just sleep outside the house. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why would I do that? Someone says don't look in his underwear drawer while you're there, Kramer. Can't house sit. I would get too nosy. Can't help it. Wait, so you would digging through people's stuff? So do I not worry about that? Would you so do wait that? on. So that per, on or whoever I'd texted like in, respond the back. To see what's in room. I mean, I wouldn't like dig through Who, cabinets. Whoever that was that texted in, real quick. So wait, when you've house sitted, you can't help. You will go through the There's person's stuff? house sitting that drawers. No. I don't think. Again, this is another one of those. You don't want to know what's in there anyway. Like there's nothing weird in my drawers, by the way. It's just I don't know. Socks but you just don't. I don't think you want to go through stuff. someone's drawer. Yeah, that, that, that's a bit odd. I could see you would like you would walk through the house. Does that make sense? Like, oh, that's a room. Huh. Oh, there's a bathroom. Like, Fine, yeah. a quick self tour of the house. I could see opening up drawers and st- that's madness. Kramer, look. Kramer's for the- Kramer's too good of a person. There's just no yeah. way he would ever. Yeah, Kramer, look drawers. for that box of the poker money. Look through. There's a box somewhere in Cody's <laughs> yeah. house that has thousands of dollars in poker money. It only has like 500 in it right now. Don't steal that, please. I need that. I need that. <laughs> my, next time Cody's got an audit. He's actually marked inventory of everything. <laughs> now that we brought that up, you're going to take the box with you to Wichita. <laughs> I'm not taking it. That's no, when you are in Wichita, though, so I haven't been there in a while, admittedly, so it's probably changed. I, I worked there for a very brief period of time. That's the whole murder story we've talked about before. Um, New Way Burger. Might want to check it out. Crumbly okay. Burger, New Way. Uh, someone I saw did text uh, text in about this. He's correct, or he or she is correct. Uh, Duda Diner. Great breakfast Doodad. spot. Do do da do da do da do da is uh, like do, all the do da day yippee do da okay. yeah yeah uh-huh. got yeah. it that that one that place okay great New breakfast way spot. burger huh? n u w a y w a y I'll be honest photos don't make it look all that great it's a it's old school it's crumbly burger it's not like I'm not saying it's the best burger you've ever had my it's mom used different. to make something like this she called them loose meat sandwiches sure. yeah. which mm. is a way less appealing title <laughs> for that sandwich New way sounds better <laughs> way better New way burger way better now there's a uh, yeah. Wichita? Do, da, no, da, where are you yeah. staying in Wichita? Like, are you going? You guys staying downtown? Are you staying We're on the staying east side? Like, no, nah, it's like it's like it's like ten minutes uh, south. Yeah, ten minutes south, uh, southeast maybe of Wichita. Because it's like I think technically where the event is is Derby, but we're a little we're staying north of that. So. Mulvane, no, that's west. Anyway, so, I don't. Know. I mean, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know Wichita a, that well. Mul, there's a casino in Mulvane, Cody, called Kansas Star. I think mm. it's southwest. I wasn't planning. Oh, he's going to get in some gambling. I think there's a, a DraftKings sports book there, an a FanDuel sports book. I got to keep an eye out on the snooker bet before I can get into the game. If they let you in, they may not let you in anymore. <laughs> in propriety, in propriety with gambling, they they froze your account. I like the two texts in a row. New way sucks. Do not go there. And then the following text: <laughs> New way is awesome. <laughs> that sums up our text line, by the way. And you just <laughs> you'll get one text that that says one thing and the other completely different. That's the beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Talk I about still, Mother's Day gifts. I still don't think it's that weird. Uh, Go so during the that. break. We'll ask Bink too. Bink, who knows? But like, well, we should survey we'll people Bink. in the bullpen uh, during the commercial if they think it's weird that if you have someone house sitting that you you offer them to sleep in the same bed you and your wife sleep in. Sheets are clean. Okay. Well, I would hope. I would hope so. That's very nice of you, Cody. Coming up next, Club 610, Jay Binkley, our draft insider. We'll talk some draft. We'll talk about this dilemma as well next. Hey, it's Vinny Pasquantino. Don't forget to follow Cody and Gold on the Odyssey app so you can listen on demand to my terrific football takes throughout the year right here on 610 Sports Radio. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more. All with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash 610Bob and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 and present in Kansas. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Getting help is your best bet. 
Call 1-800-522-4700. That's 1-800-522-4700. Or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Spring is here, and it's time to spring into action to get into shape and feel great. Hey, it's Bob Fesco. I know there are so many options when it comes to home workouts. It can be overwhelming to pick out home fitness equipment, but not anymore. It's time to discover Johnson Fitness and Wellness Stores. Their expert staff will help you choose the best home fitness equipment for you, for your unique goals, space, and budget. Johnson Fitness and Wellness has a wide selection of top-rated treadmills, elliptical, strength equipment, rowers, and exercise bikes. Also, find the latest selection of massage chairs in Kansas City. Right now, get a free kit of massager with purchase of any massage chair or Matrix Fitness equipment by mentioning 610 Sports Radio. Soon, you'll be seeing home run fitness results to get in shape and feel great. Johnson Fitness and Wellness is in Overland Park and Lee Summit. Visit johnsonfitness.com. That's johnsonfitness.com. It's Johnson Fitness and Wellness. This spring, let Smokehouse Barbecue make your life easier. Many events are coming up, and Smokehouse can help with catering at home or with a party at one of their restaurants. And don't forget about Mom on Mother's Day. She'll love dinner at Smokehouse. Whether it's Independent, Zona Rosa, or Gladstone, make sure you ask about the new barbecue pizza. And if you're grilling out, don't forget Smokehouse has amazing sides that go great with everything on the grill. Check them out at SmokehouseBBQ.com. For over 35 years, locally owned, and family operated at Smokehouse Barbecue. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Another year, another Super Bowl. Did you know that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl in their first year of their partnership with Window World? And here we are, five years in. The Chiefs are a dynasty, and they're still going strong with Window World as the official window of the Kansas City Chiefs. Window World windows are one of two windows with a good housekeeping seal of approval, ranked number one in number of windows sold in the country by Qualified Remodeler Magazine in just over 20 years of business. They have improved the look and thermal efficiency of over 54,000 customers right here in Kansas City. So be sure to call this number, 816-799-0820. Learn more about the double-strength glass that gives the strength that's not commonly used in replacement windows. Learn more about their products that are not only durable, but offer security, beauty, and energy efficiency. Give my friends at Window World a call. That's 816-799-0820. 816-799-0820 to learn more or also go on the website windowworld.com. Hey, it's Kling. There are many reasons I love hy V, The great values, the selection, the service and I love to rack up fuel savers and you can as well. Shop hy V on Monday, earn a fuel discount equal to the high temperature on Sunday and the amount you spend. If the high is 68 degrees on Sunday, I'll save 68 cents per gallon when I spend $68 on Monday. Heat up the savings every Monday through April 29th only at hy IV. Must look up code 80007 to check out or promo code heat up when shopping online. See store for details. The best deals at the pump happen when you shop the aisles of Hy-Vee with help from the first Warm 5 weather team. This is KCTV5 Chief Meteorologist Luke Doris. Watch KCTV5 Sunday night at 10 for our official high temperature. Whatever it was on Sunday means you save on Monday with your hy V Perks card. If the high was 63 degrees, you save 63 cents a gallon when you spend at least $63. Watch First Warn 5 weather on KCTV 5 this Sunday at 10. It's a mystery where Old Spice finds its amazing scents like Himalayan sea salt, but I'm thrilled they have because no other body wash exfoliates and moisturizes 24-7 like Old Spice Gentleman's Himalayan sea salt body wash. Now, if only there was a mountain range separating the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateau where I could hide my Old Spice and keep my family from stealing it, my impossibly smooth skin will finally be safe. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. Next Guard Plus, a Foxal Honor Moxidectin and Pyrantal Chewable Tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef-flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about Next Guard Plus Chews. 
texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Haven't seen you around the gym. Yeah, I've really fallen off. Since I turned 40, I just don't get the results I used to get. Could be lower testosterone. I went through it a while back. I got Nugenix Total T, and it's made a huge difference for me. I've seen that ad on TV. Is it for real? Oh, yeah. The key ingredient is something called Tesnor, which helps boost free and total testosterone levels to help you trim up and stay lean. And it's made a difference for you? Man, I feel like I'm in my 20s again at work, in the gym, and in the bedroom. Are they still giving out complimentary bottles for people to try it for themselves? Yeah, you just need to send them a text. Text REP to 321-321 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total Tea. Plus, text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenix Thermo, our most powerful fed incinerator ever, to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. Text REP to 321-321. That's REP to 321-321. Products and statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or illness. You're listening to 610 Sports Radio from the Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Studios. Join us on Thursday, April 25th at the Landing in Liberty during the first round of the NFL Draft for your chance to win $610 plus autographed Chiefs memorabilia with our NFL Drafts Picks Contest. 610 Sports Radio, KCSB Kansas City, WDAF HD2 Liberty, always live on the free Odyssey app. One o'clock hour, that means it's time for Club 610 here on a Friday. Cody and Gold, Alex Gold, Cody Tapp, Drew Nixon with you. We got our guy Jay Binkley from Character Concern Show and Podcast, our Draft Insider, joining us. The Draft 13 days away. We'll talk plenty of Draft throughout this hour. We also, uh, because later on today, with Vinny Pasquantino staying hot, Cody gets to sing Pasquantino again. You brought in some uh Well, you know, Despacito. You know, it's got a Latin American vibe. I figured, why not? You know, why not a Corona? It didn't seem like a bad. Seem like I should lean in a little bit. Plus, I got a whole extra plan outside of that. I'm adding. Okay. I'm adding another element as we've continued to add elements. I'm adding another element to the song today. So prepare accordingly. Really? Thinkly. <laughs> Here's the reality. A new, How can a, I stop a, singing it now? Yeah. And I also told them you love my songs. Oh, uh, they're, they're they're very good. Is it gonna be like Garth Brooks where you had this verse? You go. Where he goes, I go, I go by Garth back home. I go by Cody back home. I go There's by a separate Cody verse back I wrote. Home. Uh, it's not a separate verse, uh, but the vibes are going to change on it. Just that's all. We, uh, we we were talking during the break a little bit just about uh, what's going on this weekend and everything. We can talk some Royals here in a little bit, but uh, tomorrow at Arrowhead, Messi, right? You got Inter Miami taking on Sporting Kansas City, and we were looking at ticket prices, and looks like about 130 bucks on some sites is is the price to get in still. Uh, for this thing tomorrow and all signs point to Messi playing he is in Kansas City despite playing on Wednesday night I think it was against Monterey and it's pretty rare like sporting events that what are you willing to pay to see one of the greats in your sports history right whether you know for some people like I still want to see LeBron play once in person I haven't you and I Cody have seen Tiger Woods in person that's a bucket list type of type of thing so for Messi that's that's messy for a lot of people why they're willing to spend money it's one of the few times in sports, though, where I think you, in, in a half way, are rooting against your Because you your want Messi team. to score a goal? But yeah, you want you want to witness Messi score a goal, but that obviously means it's not good for your team. It's, it's Other than, you know, Maguire, Sosa, home run chase, you wanted to see Maguire hit a home run, and it, even if it was at Kaufman, because it was it was history. I was starting to cling this morning about that. Did, did the Chiefs, have they entered this territory where people want to see Mahomes? But yet, Throw a touchdown the against lose? them? Yeah, maybe. No, no, not maybe not touchdown, but just, just go see him play. Yes. Oh, I yeah. think so. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Why I, wouldn't you? He's going to be one of the greats. Yeah. Same thing, you know, same thing happened in the career for Brady. People, you want to see Tom Brady. I, I want to see LeBron. I obviously never got to see Michael Jordan play in person. That'll never happen. Um, but there are certain athletes. And, yeah, Mahomes, I think, does fit, fit that already for a lot of people. Messi certainly does tomorrow i'm that way with the uh, joey chestnut you know, i'd love to see him eat <laughs> oh my goodness no, that's your just, guy it's like a bucket man. list item coney island he's going to his, july uh Ole you Miss. like to watch have you seen it in person I've have you seen, seen, seen real person. life real life joey chestnut in re, you know in person yeah he was in the studio with me here no i meant time. i meant to watch him eat that's oh no i've never hot seen dog here yeah have you ever seen him eat a hot yeah, dog joey in came in here. i'm gonna see anything the twinkie contest was like <laughs> took down a hundred like 10 minutes i'd like to see it we had so to get, get too close. Let's get big to Coney Island. Well, here's the one thing about that contest, though. If people throw up, they have to eat it or they're eliminated. Uh, so what? If, had, if they have something coming out, yeah, you can throw then up, just, but you can't, then, but you got to eat it. What? what the I mean, just. Okay. If you start to throw up, you're eliminated unless 
it goes so back you in eat your mouth. the vomit or that's you eat right. the that's terrible. I want to be that close. That's disgusting. I want to be that close, though. You I don't want to be that close. Oh, I thought oh. you said I want to be. I was like, wait no. a second. No, that's a bucket he, list I thing. I think Chestnut's doing something at uh, the Ole Miss spring game. Isn't that right? Lane Kiffin, I think they invited him, and he's coming. Is he? I, I, I think, know that they different teams. I guess what well, I know, like, during by. the break, they're just going to lay out a bunch of hot dogs for him to eat in front of everybody? Or, or? Well, was it the Cavaliers game when and Jason Kelsey was maybe eating against him or something like that? I forgot. Huh. We've had him on the show before, or at least I've had him on a, on a show of mine at some point in, in the last 10 years. Have but you? like that, that the, the hot dog thing, know, it is what it is. I mean, some people are disgusted by it. I still think it's hilarious and, it's and unbelievable. You you are a huge fan of it. I know that. Well, I, used to, have, I used to have him on every year back when like he was nothing. I used to have Joey on every year at the 4th of July tradition. He didn't come on one year. It was the year he lost. That's where the streak ended. And then it started again. Bigley, do you think they're going to finally go more offense? Like, we looked at the... Red Beach has never had a draft in which he took more offensive players than defensive. Close he got was three to three. And a lot of times it's been a blowout. Defense is won by a mile in the drafted I, player department. I think is, he will. I, I, I mean, his history has never been that case. No, no. I think it's time. I think they're due to have an offensive draft. Because I think it'll be three pass catchers in some respects, whether it's one tight end, two receivers, uh, an offensive lineman, or two, they would put you at five, and then you get two more for maybe on the defensive side. And defensive line is not going to be such a priority this year because the whole band's back together. Hmm. Everybody is coming back. But if they get one lineman and three pass catchers, you're at four there. So, yeah, I can see it being slotted towards offense. I think it needs to be, knowing where they've been in the last couple of years. And also just the biggest needs for the team. Biggest needs for the team were offensive tackle and wide receiver. So why wouldn't you attack that with your first couple of picks? Yeah, I think so. I, th- I think the... Uh, Definitely the first two picks, I think, will end up being pass catcher, unless they go offensive line in the second round. But you don't have to. Again, they won the Super Bowl last year without any first-round picks on that team. None? What do you no. mean? Well, the team Patrick didn't have any. Starting. Any. The Chiefs won a Super Bowl with right. zero Patrick first Mahomes round picks. was a first-round pick. No, no, no. A I'm quarterback. Sure. Uh, offensive oh, line. I was, I, like, I, was I was like, Bingley? No, I don't want to like, Patrick, I don't want to put no, a hole in your theory no, here, but Patrick no. Mahomes was definitely a first-round pick and the is starting. offensive line. I said they, oh. they made it through, won a Super Bowl without zero first-round picks on that offensive line. Patrick Where was Mahomes, Joe Tooney taking? Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes was like the only first round pick they had. And I challenged someone to find me another team that's won a Super Bowl in the last 20 years hmm. with only one first round pick on offense. I mean, guys, that's just so much research. I don't even think I could possibly start. I don't even know where I'd start. I'd probably start with the Patriots years because I feel like I could find one in the last 10 years for them, maybe. Because their quarterback immediately is not a first well, round pick. It was pick. almost the Rams a couple years ago. It was Stafford and then OBJ were their only. They were loaded with second round picks, but. Bigley, where was Tooney taken in the draft? Third was he round. third? Okay. Who's the, who's the guy at this point? We're 13 days away from the draft, and I know you guys have a lot going on with character concerns coming up over the next week or two. We obviously got the party at the landing on the 25th. It's going to be a great time. Who's the name right now? If I just, one name that you, you, you think, if he's there at 32, have to draft for the Chiefs. Obviously, Brian Thomas, if for some reason he ends up there and several people have mocked him to the Chiefs, I, I seriously doubt He's still there. A.D. Mitchell, if he were there, I think it's going to be a... I think the receiver group that will be left, Xavier Leggett, Devontae Walker, I think the Land McConkey will be in that group, and obviously Roman Wilson and all those guys, but I think the top guys that will be available, maybe Xavier Worthy, maybe he'll be available at 32. I kind of doubt that one as well, but I think Xavier Leggett, Mel Kuyper had him in his uh, mock. We got excited out. about him yesterday. We were talking a little bit about him, just size-wise and what he brings to the table. Uh, he, he's a stud, and he's, and he's fast. And not only that, I did 41. Well, I didn't do 41 mocks. I read 40, you did 41. 41. No, he said he read 41, no. which is, in a way, worse. I well, don't. on the show, I, we, we, I took 41 mocks, and I went to see the, just recently with the, you know, the Rasheed Rice news. And, and all aggregated that, them to see what's most and common. see what direction people mm-hmm. were going. And? Eight was Lad McConkey. Four was A.D. Mitchell. Seven was Xavier Worthy, but Lad McConkey had him. What's funny is Ennis Rakestraw, a junior, great player, the cornerback from Missouri, had three on there, and Jordan Morgan's like, Pete Prisco, he had a receiver in his first mock, and then yesterday he changed it to a corner. It's like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? I always said this, to talk to Kling this morning. You have Patrick Mahomes. This will be the best quarterback this town ever gets, ever gets is Patrick Mahomes. 
Yeah, why won't you feed him weapons? Why won't you give him that fuel? Because Don't waste because that they're winning. You know, like the thing is, that argument always held up when like losing organizations didn't win. They have three Super Bowl titles in five years. They're giving him it. plenty. They're giving him way hey, enough. You, you got to keep on the roll because they were hitting. He's on one of offense. five quarterbacks ever with five Super Bowl titles. Hey. He won one more. He'll be one of three ever they were, to they were, accomplish they what he's accomplished. So they I were, mean, they're not like leaving him high and dry. It's either. like the Patriots. They were off or defense, then offense, and back to defense. Chiefs were offense back. They got switch back uh, to offense. Make it easier for them. You know, like Peyton Manning, Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison. I mean, sometimes it's okay to have stud players. This offensive line, is fine. if people make the same argument and they say, well, they didn't have a first round offensive lineman and they won a Super Bowl. I mean, is that really what you want to do? No, you, you load it with talent. Well, that was some of the conversation we had the other day with they're this exact conversation. Like the Packers, that was always the thing with Aaron Rodgers. Why not help them? They, they, win. they, they weren't winning while that conversation mm-hmm. was also coming up. Bink, yeah. we, uh, I got to ask you about an important wide receiver. He's not a first round guy that I'm aware of. What are your thoughts on Johnny Wilson? Florida State. Hey, he's tall. He's like 6'7". Six, six, uh-huh. six, 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 Is he too tall? You know, some think that the Johnny Wilson can actually turn into a, a tight end. That's what I said. That was my whole argument. I said he's too tall, Bink. He's too, he weighs too we, much. He's too tall. He should just be a tight end. Uh, he'd be a fast tight end who's a good height. Yeah. Or he could be a slow wide receiver who's too tall. You don't have to improve the blocking we, we, skills, but... We said, hey, he's mocked in the sixth round. It's hard to get upset about the pick anyway. But also, he's officially weighed in at, or measured out at 6'6". Six, six. And then it got us down a rabbit hole bank of 6'5 six, and 6'6 six, six wide receivers. Uh, guys like, people are bringing up Carmichael, who was 6'8". Uh, Plexico Burris, Calvin Johnson, Mike Evans, all 6'5 and taller guys. I said I couldn't find anybody who was 6'6 six, six other than that one Carmichael guy from the 70s. I like Luke uh, McCaffrey in the mid-rounds. He's going to be seeing? really good. Like Luke McCaffrey from Rice. Yep. Rice yeah. Would you like him as much if his last name wasn't McCaffrey? <laughs> well, look, there's a long history of McCaffrey. No, I mean, yeah, no, I'm, I'm being serious though. Like, <laughs> like if his name wasn't McCaffrey though, would we actually feel that way? I get why you should, because Cody's correct that uh, the vault turned out to be pretty good in the pros. There's a tight end that might be available in fifth or sixth round, Jaheim Bell. That was at Florida State. He's six two. He's kind of a hybrid H back, fullback. Uh, well, he's not gonna play fullback, but you can put him back there. He's a decent blocker and he catches the ball well. I like Ben Sennett of Kansas State. That's my every year I have like a favorite guy in the draft. It's like Hunter. Luke I'm not D surprised that that's your guy. Well, I mean, think about it. Yeah. You gotta come he up with a name very, with very well. Broad jump, like more big than boys. Anybody. Vertical, you know, more than anybody. Three cone drill, big more than boys. any tight end. <laughs> you gotta big. It needs a name. Your drafting needs a name for the guys that you stand by. Binks boys or <laughs> Binks bros. I don't care what it is, but you need a thing. I just want my favorite guys. I need suggestions. Nine one three five eight six seven six ten. I know, but if you got you got Top like thirty visit to the Chiefs. Well, you know, Therese, the late great Therese, had his old juice team. We need Binks boys. Every year, you got a couple of guys you stand behind. It doesn't have to be Binks boy. I'm not married to that. I'm open to other suggestions. Nine one three five eight six seven six ten. No, I know you're a big Deshaun Watson fan in 2017. No, no, it's pretty wild how that turned out. Aren't you glad that they didn't draft him? Oh, man, man, after picking him, that was crazy. Can yeah. you imagine, like, this team, this town, if that's what have been the direction? I know your and mock had him taking him. No, it's crazy. I that is not true. Were you doing mocks back then? Were you mocking in 2016, 2017? Watson. I've been doing them for years. It was not Deshaun Watson, by the way. The first article on the new 610sports.com was me <laughs> and why they should draft Mahomes. I did it during the uh, Big 12 tournament that year in 17. All right. I, I want to sidetrack us for a second on purpose because we, it needs to be addressed real quick. And then we can get right back into draft or some Royals. Okay. But when you said, uh, uh, it's not like, what would you say? Not married to one of the guys or something? I think it's the I way. I said I'm not married to Binks boys. Okay. okay. I'm open to and other that remi- And that reminded me of something about 15 minutes ago we were discussing. Cody is going out of town this weekend and at some point might need a house sitter again. Kramer's so he's having house Kramer sit. house sit. Watch out for squatters. That's exactly what Drew said. We already looked up in right. Missouri. We're good. So that I can kick Kramer's ass out the second Cody I get back. Cody said he told Kramer that, oh yeah, you can just sleep in, sleep in my bed, man. Would you do that? Hell no. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I, care. I, I will say this: <laughs> the sheets are clean, washed this it's morning. It's weird. Man. I will say this: washed this morning. We had, I had a fraternity brother, and he was always gone, <laughs> and so all the guys like to. Uh, 
That's uh, where they would, yeah. Have some mm. love. Uh-huh. In, yeah. I didn't say please in have my... sex in my bed, Kramer. I said you can sleep there. Yeah, but you've had sex in that bed, and you're asking him to sleep in that bed. That's the problem. Do you know how many beds you've slept in your life that somebody else had sex in? This it's is not... so many but as, beds. Big, but as we said, it's not a hotel. At least you have no, you, no it's idea. It's so easy. Like, Kramer knows for a fact the bed that you're asking him to sleep I in, think you wrong had with you. sex in it. I think there's something wrong with you. Text That's lines, the first thing you think about. That, oh, the text line's been all over it. <laughs> Bing's baddies oh. instead of Aaron's, instead of Laddie's baddies. Bing's baddies. You know what? Uh, Bigley's bunch. Kramer watched somebody else's house too. I think oh. it was maybe Nivens or something when he left. And I don't know. They asked Kramer to watch it. You know what? Can someone is? Oh, Nivens on the air over there. I was yeah, like, let's ask him. Let's ask him if because like I don't know how big Nivens' place is because I don't have a spare bedroom. I have three bedrooms. Yeah. Two that, kids' you bedrooms. Have a nice and place. You have a nice place. Thanks, you leave Bing. in the day. That basement of yours is awesome. You leave in the day. Bigly's trying to squat at uh, my place. No, I'm not going to stay in your bed, but uh, <laughs> you'll stay at my place. Your poker room. <laughs> he just wants. Uh, he just wants to play poker downstairs. Well, yeah, Kramer can invite you over. You get a nice TV. Down. He's watching the place. There's oh a TV down goodness. there. Leave, leave some of that cheese dip. <laughs> leave some cheese dip. You can stay down in the basement when Kramer Ooh, sleeps upstairs. Fun party at Cody's, man. Let's go. Let's see. These are the suggestions for Bink's uh, uh, favorite players in the draft. Mm -hmm. What we're going to call them. We can get a graphic made maybe for you. Uh, <laughs> Bink's bunnies. Bink's, Bink's bunnies. big winners. Binkley Bink's bunch. Uh-huh. I kind of like that one. How about we just call them all pros? No, that's not. That's, yeah, Binkley's yeah. bunch. I like it. Or, or Bink's bunch. Mm, Bink's big Winners? That's nice. Well, Chris, they, just, uh, they just wanted the acronym. Chris what they were going for. Oh, well. Uh, that's, Isaac people Garindo. are now just going for the acronyms they think are I funny. See. Yes. I see. Hmm. Multiple people searching Binks bitches, but I mean, that doesn't imply that he likes them. <laughs> I don't think you'd like that. Hey, Ben, guess what? By the way, not, a single, one one of, <laughs> not a single one of these has been better than Binks boys. Not a single one's better than that. <laughs> Binks boys. That's good. Let's keep it. I don't think it's that weird. You know, we got to ask Kramer if he's actually. We you should find out. Should we text Kramer and see if he's going to actually sleep in the bed? Yes. Should we find that out? Yeah. Kramer might, though. I mean, that's the <laughs> thing about Kramer. Like, he might do that. I don't care. I don't, I don't think he will. I've seen him sleep in the studio before. What's his apartment look like? Have you been to his apartment? No, but. I was uh, going to say, what's Kramer's setup typically? Can I expect him to keep a clean house? <sighs> well, it's your, it's your house. I would hope that he can. Can you keep it clean? His car can be messy sometimes. But his car. It's different. Cars are different than houses. I, know, I keep a clean. Keep their house a lot like their car. I keep a. I, mean, I keep a much cleaner house than I do car. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, now I got the new car, so I'm trying to keep it clean. But I've never been in a cleaner place than Alex Gold. Try to keep the apartment clean. His place was spot. You also were there though when I just moved in, so like every. I mean, it was. Yeah, real clean yeah. real clean at that. Yeah. that was i always found when i lived in a one-bedroom apartment though that was the easiest time to keep a super clean place ever. and also it was yeah. also yeah. Much just me what's that you had no food but like tostitos yeah and it's still kind of that way bank but that was you you also were doing the show with me this was around covid time so yeah, it was COVID. Yeah. i had just i had it was right after COVID. i had just moved in the apartment so it was not nice. that was there was nothing there i mean it was i didn't even my the couch i have now wasn't even there you yet you didn't have beer I think he had one beer. Yeah, there was like, uh, I don't remember what. This you anything was... to drink in the fridge right now? Uh, a couple of the mango fantasy things from uh, oh, there Four go. Hands yeah. and maybe a couple of Coors Lights. He told me and a water pitcher, right? and that's it. It's Did... like, well, I just eat it all the time. That's what he said. What's that? You don't cook. You eat out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we've talked, yeah. yeah. Totally. It's, not, it's warm enough now where the Traeger is. This is a good Traeger weekend. Yeah. I don't make know. sure. It's have you, like 88 tomorrow. Yeah. Have you gotten better at cooking, Bink? I remember no, you no. trying to make a quesadilla <laughs> once, and it was a disaster. No, it, it's it's a disaster. <laughs> Everything I do is a disaster in the kitchen. Terrible Everything cook. you Ter do? Terrible cook. Absolutely terrible. Pathetic. Oh, that's too bad. I can't do it. I can grill. It's, it's the fun. simplest form. We've it's cooking it in its simplest form. Mm. Gold, you can't cook either. He can, but he can no, grill. Can grill. Grill and smoke. Okay. Well, same That's here. It. Yeah. We're not like Cody in the kitchen. No. The dude can make anything. With Sometimes with green onions as well. That's one thing. If that was one time. Reese's peanut butter cup dessert with a green was onion. Was the rest of it great or not? His I didn't eat dip. the rest. I don't remember. <laughs> His cheese is dip, though. It's phenomenal. Trust me. So much, uh, more people giving you suggestions. Are you buying the, the, the rumors this week, though, draft-wise? Not related to the Chiefs directly, uh, but towards the top of the draft, not the quarterbacks as much as the wide receivers. And, some, you know, there's, there's a lot of speculation around Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze. And, like, everybody for the last year, so Marvin Harrison, no doubt, are going to be the first one off yeah. the board. And I still think that's the case. 
But in the last five days, there's been this push by some folks to be like, no, you know what? It might actually be neighbors or it might actually be a Dunze. No, it's Marvin Harrison Jr. Emmanuel Buka was supposed to be the other guy that was going to be that first round pick at Ohio State, but he had some injuries. He's going to go back to Ohio State. Malik Neighbors, I mean, he had to kind of share things. I mean, Jaden Daniels kind of took over that offense. But Brian Thomas Jr., that same offense is Malik Neighbors. So they were both drawing great coverage at times. Brian Thomas led the nation in touchdowns. Same team as Malik Neighbors. I'm going Marvin Harrison Jr. is, is the guy. I think he's, I mean, we. This is a classic case of a prospect is too perfect that they're trying to overthink that there's People some flaw with him. Like there is not a huh? single flaw in Marvin Harrison Jr.'s game. No. He is a near-perfect prospect at wide receiver, which means you should probably just take him rather than overthink the upside of some other player. I think they're looking for a flaw that doesn't exist in that player. Nah, Marvin Harrison Jr., I think uh, not testing at the combine, doing those things kind of scared some people. But hell, that's been most of the guys. Why would he do that? It only can hurt most him, guys frankly. Most of the have been that way. But Caleb Williams is like that at first, too. Everybody found yeah. the flaws, and all of a sudden he's you know back to being that first guy. Things will sort themselves out, but Marvin Harrison Jr., hey, if he's not the first pick, guess what? <laughs> You're going to regret it. You Teams think he's that regret. much better than Neighbors and, and Dunze? Yeah, I mean, he do everything. The size, the speed, the skill. Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. Malik Neighbors is a great player. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's a Marvin Harrison Jr. How many Chiefs first-round picks would you give up for Marvin Harrison Jr.? Well, Clay asked me today, I said three. You'd give up three? Well, here's the thing. you give up this year and the next two? But you look at 32 Woo! through history. Oh, You're talking go. about here like Lewis Seed, Clyde. I mean, there's there's been. Also, Carl some... Loftus, also McDuffie, though, trading up with that for the third. Yeah, but not at 32. Pick. Right. Like everybody only well, brings up range, the you know? everybody only brings up the negative though. They're like, well, if you could trade, look at their, you know, Felix and and Clyde edwards helaire for would be two of those picks. Like that's just that's not also realistic. Was it, wasn't T.J. Watt taking it thirty two or something? No, Lamar Jackson was. T.J. Watt was like thirty, I think. Okay, but I mean, like that's the range. I don't, like if we just like number two over like thirty two overall, like that's just too specific. Like I gotta know anybody who's taken within like I, five I would, picks of that. I would do it if I'm the Chiefs, only because they're they're drafting at 32. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the Cardinals 30. are taking three first. That's not gonna get you. I don't think that gets them up to. Do you think that even would get it's, you to it's four? Like a second round pick. I don't think that gets you to four. Three? Usually only about 20, yeah. 21 guys uh, have first that's a lot round of grades round on them. Does it get? Does that? Do you think that? I don't. You have the draft. Because you're gonna chart. be picking at 32 every year. Yeah. Is the problem. The point says it will. Yeah. I don't know if they would actually do it, but the point says I would, yes. I just wouldn't do it. Like the, the exact reason people are talking about like how great Brett Veach is, isn't that the reason why you don't trade up to to pick four? Don't you want to have picks for the future to extend the dynasty? All right, Bank, I got pick 32 here by every year. You ready? Yeah. Uh, Drew Brees was pretty good. He was picked 32, by the way, because there was missing a uh, a pick. So there was 31 teams just like two years ago. So Drew Brees was pick 32 overall. Benjamin Watson was pick 32 overall. Uh, Bridgewater, Ogba. Ram check. I mean, there's some pretty good players at 32 overall. Let's just go to two, last year. Joey Porter Jr. Let's go to 2010. If you want to Patrick Robinson, Derek Sherrod, David Wilson, Matt Elam, Teddy Bridgewater, Malcolm Brown, Emmanuel Ogba, Ryan Ramsek, Lamar Jackson, the kill Harry, Clyde Edwards, Lair, Joe Tryon, Shoinka, Lewis Seen, and Joey Porter. It's pretty good players, man. Yeah. Some pretty good players. At 32. Canton's not going to be loaded with 32. No, but I mean, there's at least one Lamar. Lamar was great. Yeah, again, if I go back to Drew Brees, that's Those two. are essentially second-round picks. I mean, that's essentially what 32 is. <laughs> I give up three, ah, three second-round yeah, picks. Yes. Yeah, that's right, Bink. That's what? <laughs> it's a pet, personal pet peeve. <laughs> what is? That we what? call these basically second-round picks. Or basically Cody hates third. when I say that, so There's that's no why rules. I'm laughing. They just say it blindly. I hate it. Well, Emmanuel Ogba was pick number 32. How far, how far, hey, by the way, how far into the third, how far into the second round is it basically a second-round pick? Pick 29, 30? 34. Like, so. No, he's asking. How high up? 27? Yeah. How high up in the first round do you have oh. to go for? It's basically a second-round pick. Probably 22 or 23. Okay, by the time we get to the third round, then they're all basically undrafted. Well, there's only, first, there's only so many guys. Rookies. There's only, let's say, 17 first round grade players, and there's only so many second round graded well, players. City, there's only 12 to 15 first round graded players. Usually he's about McDuffie started to slide a little bit. Where they grade them is different than it's like basically a second. I hate, I hate. Because then by the same logic, shouldn't I be allowed to say to pick 34 is basically a first rounder? 
And everyone's like, no, you can't do it both ways. It's only my way. Because there's only f- to, the great thing does the great thing does matter. Because it, you're, if there was a, a year in which there were 32 first round grade picks, that'd be the first NFL draft ever where there were yeah. 32 actually but graded by that first logic, round picks. There are literally only like 40 players available that are worthy of a four round grade. The rest that, that of them might are actually fifth be, or worse. That may not be far off, actually. Well, then why do we start calling second-round picks basically fifth-rounders? You can if you want to start that trend. Well, Go right ahead. The best thing about it is Veach hit a home it. run. He had one chance at a receiver last year. It was at Friday Night Rasheed Rice. It turns out to be the second-best rookie wide receiver. He was basically Puka. a fifth-round pick. What a P- steal. Puka was number one in yards and, yeah. and receptions. We know that. It set the record. Rasheed Rice was number two of all rookie wide receivers in catches and yards. And Puka, by the way, was the Rams' third fifth round selection. It's not like they picked yeah. in the fifth round, first or second, the, the third fifth round pick of the Rams. We got Jay Binkley hanging out with us here. It's a club 610 Friday. He's our draft insider. We'll talk a little more draft. Then let's talk Royals baseball. They've won seven in a row. They're in New York this weekend. And Cody gets to sing one more time at least. Hey, it's Brady Singer. You're listening to Cody and Gold. Weekdays starting at 10 on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more. All with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. It's Rawhide Harley's Keep the Same Payment Event. Trade your bike for a brand new 2024 Harley with no money out of pocket and keep the same payment right out of Rawhide Harley with the same amount of cash you walked in with. Finance specialists are on site with the best financing in Harley history. You don't need perfect credit, don't need a cash down payment. Rawhide Harley has hundreds of bikes in stock and the largest inventory in the state. Trade up today for a new Harley and keep the same payment at the Keep the Same Payment Event only at Rawhide Harley. On approved credit and some you have drafty windows in your house? Hey, it's Rob Brenton from The Drive, here to tell you guys about Renewal by Anderson. They manufacture and install some of the nation's top quality windows and doors. As you guys know, I'm about to get married, which means house hunting time. The last thing I want in my new home are drafty windows, which will all be looking for a home with Renewal by Anderson windows and doors. These windows are built for homeowners who want to get their project done once and never worry about it again. Their Fibrex material is twice as strong as vinyl and backed by the nation's best warranty, covering windows and doors for 20 years. Renewal by Anderson offers free home appointments seven days a week, and they'll give you a quote that's good for a whole year. Call right now and save 20% on all windows and patio doors, plus take an extra $500 off your entire project with no interest for the next four years. Call 913-364-0200. That's 913-364-0200. 913-364-0200. Men, this is Jeff for Heartland Men's Health. And though I generally talk about medicine and effective treatments for erectile dysfunction and other men's sexual health issues, today I want to talk about love. Because love is the best reason to get treated for your ED. You see, ED can cause major relationship issues. In fact, men often push their partners away when ED becomes a problem. The condition can cause depression, arguments, breakups, and even contribute to divorce. But the good news is that if you're like most men suffering with ED, you can be successfully treated at Heartland Men's Health and put a stop to the relationship stresses that ED can cause. I say this with all confidence because we have treatments that are effective in well over 90% of cases. Truly, it's likely you'll find you're performing like you haven't in years. So make an appointment and get the love back in your life. Your initial visit is just $99 and includes blood work, a medical consult, and if medically advised, a test dose. And if that test dose doesn't work in the office, your visit is free. Call 844-447-6600 or go to heartlandmenshealth.com. We have two offices, Overland Park, Kansas, and Independence, Missouri. Here's another Outdoor America fishing tip presented by Wholesale Batteries, the right battery the first time. Here's the host of Outdoor America, Tommy Bench. There is nothing more frustrating than going out there fishing. You just spooled your line up the night before. You got brand new line on that spinning rod. You get out there halfway through the day. The line is so twisted up, you can't even cast. What in the world is going on? More than likely, there's a couple different ways this could happen. Depending on how you spool the line on, if it's coming off the spool clean to start the day, it's probably not, that's not the case. What that happens is you got your bell. Whenever you flip your bell over, a lot of people will use a real handle to click that bell over. Don't do that. Use your hand. That's going to prevent that line twist. The number one cause of line twist is clicking that real handle instead of flipping the bell over with your hand. That's going to put more fish in the boat, keep him less frustrated. That is your tip of the week. Outdoor America with Tommy Bench. Heard every Saturday morning at 5 a.m. on 610 Sports Radio. 
Presented by Wholesale Batteries. Three little words no parent wants to hear. My tummy hurts. And it always seems to happen at the worst times. Like in the middle of the morning rush, when you still have homework to check and lunches to pack, and of course, you're already late for work. Luckily, there's Pepto Kids. Pepto Kids gummies help relieve occasional stomach upsets, turning those three words into these three words. I feel better. Bad time for stomach upsets? Good time for Pepto Kids gummies. Fast support for little tummies. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Are you the parent of a two to seven year old? Listen closely for an exciting free radio offer. By now, you've probably heard of ABC Mouse, the Parents' Choice Award winning online learning program that's actually changing the lives of early learners everywhere. ABC Mouse is like a little one-on-one -on -one teacher. It has helped her so much. Right now, we're offering a special radio promo to try it free for a month. But you have to go to abcmouse.com slash radio to claim your free month. That's abcmouse.com slash radio. Sponsored by Age of Learning. When people have a craving to explore new and traditional Asian cuisines, they head to P.F. Chang's, where scratch-made dishes come from the 2,000-year-old tradition of wok cooking. P.F. Chang's wanted to explore new possibilities for their website. They turned to AmericanEagle.com. AmericanEagle.com re-architected P.F. Chang's website, integrating multiple third-party systems to create a unified digital experience. The results? Improved page speed and performance, personalized content, Content based on users' location, intuitive online ordering, an increase in organic search visibility, and a 40% increase in new users. For scratch made Asian cuisine, visit your local PF Changs or go to pfchangs.com for website design, development, digital marketing, and hosting that produce efficiency, revenue, and results. Visit AmericanEagle.com. PF Changs and AmericanEagle.com, another example of the best businesses in the world. Turning to the best in the business for websites, go to AmericanEagle.com or call 877 877- Web Now One. That's 877 Web Now One. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from passiton.com. Club 610 continues here on a Friday. Cody and Gold. We also got Jay Binkley hanging out with us, our drafts insider from Character Concerns. You heard his draft special last night. He's going to be hanging out with all of us on April 25th. That's the first night of the NFL draft. We'll be at the Landing in Liberty. It's all presented by hy V, the proud official grocery sponsor of the Kansas City Chiefs. And so you and Chris will be doing your show. We're going to be hanging out. Everybody's going to be trying to pick the draft, right, successfully because you get points for that, a chance to win $610 plus some Chiefs merch. You can go to the 610 website right now and print out that form and bring it to, uh, to the Landing on April 25th. And, look, you listen to Bink, give his mock, we get texts all the time. People agree. People disagree. You think you got figured out? This is your chance to prove it. Fill out a little mock draft of your own or an actual draft of your own. I can't wait. To be, is if they trade down, the place will go crazy. The place will go crazy. We'll <laughs> wait around. Going. It'll be 10-15. Don't oh, mind it as a strategy, though. It'll be 10-30 at night, and we're all waiting. Pick 32. We find out the Chiefs have traded out of the first round. But write your picks on anything, even Powerball tickets. Just write your ticket, write your pick. Yeah, Sean, Sean Barber's in a group chat of ours. <laughs> He, he does a handwritten mock draft, which I'll give him credit, I guess. Yeah. But it was written on the back of a Powerball ticket. Like, a I guess one, a losing probably. one, yeah. 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 <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't have, that's a different way to sign your name on it. I hope it wasn't a winning one. He doesn't like to waste paper. Sean Barber likes the earth. That's what this is. <laughs> which Royals player you got on that card He was there, saying buddy? put anybody with Mahomes. What's it? So what Royals player you got on that card there? Oh, this was the Hal McRae card. Oh, I'm that's sorry. That's the same Hal McRae card from the morning show, if you're wondering. Let's talk Royals baseball, though, Bink. Seven got, in a row. I got a text about that last night. Talk baseball. I was like, this is a draft oh, show. Oh, during the draft show? <laughs> during the Man. draft show. Talk how, how Tough audience. <laughs> talk Royals during our NFL talk draft Royals, special? Yeah, yeah. How how different is that, though, right? I mean, you you, you guys know these Aprils, we, very early on in April, we would get texts that said, why are you talking about the Royals? They stink. Here they are. They've won seven in a row. And everybody's got some excitement around this city for this team. They're the hottest team in baseball. And other than the Yankees, they've been the best team. It's April 12th. I understand that. Yep. But how real do you think this is? We were, we were talking earlier because I think you can buy into this team being competitive all year. I'm not willing to sit here and tell you, oh, they're making the playoffs. I think it's way too early for that. 
It's fun. I mean, it's definitely, but uh, I heard uh, Kling and Fesco argue the other day. Is it fun or are they talented? Because Vernon both, was talking. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it is both, but they're very talented. I mean, you look at defensively and Bobby Wood Jr. I mean, for this town, you get the best player in the National Football League. You might have the best player in Major League Baseball right now. What he leads in defensive war and offensive war in the American League. It's fun to watch, but they're a talented group. And when Benny turns it, turns it around, you see what that I wonder why, is. why do you think he turned it around, Bank? What's your, your what's your what's your working theory for why Vinny Pasquantino turned it around? The other day that Rob and I were talking about was like, hey, when he turns it around, that Yost like, man, you'd be three guys in the lineup to hit. And Vinny eventually he's too good of a player not to turn things around. When he gets hot, this lineup just goes that extra level. But it's fun to see him just destroy people too. And I know Houston came in, they've got some injuries with their pitching staff. I get that. But they have beaten the Astros now eight of the last nine times, which is funny. But they're not only just beating teams, they're destroying teams. It's not like they're eking out these 4-3 wins in the 10th inning. No, they're killing them. So the Royals have a plus 39 run differential through 13 games. It's like one of the best ever in like the last decade. Yeah, it's it's one of the it's it's tied for the fifth most ever in the last 25 years 25. in baseball. Of those teams, if you're curious, they won 99, 101 games, 96 games, Let's get the playoff 68, yeah. which is what the Mariners got, and 80. So four of the five won 80 or more games. Three of the five won 95 or more games and won the 2019 Seattle Mariners. Stunk. They stunk. Remember, they got up to that super hot start, and then they just stunk the rest of the way. So I don't, have to, I don't want to go back through the roster on them, but, like, that's – Four to five times, it was pretty damn good in the end results for teams that start this hot. But look, they they jumped that win that that run margin up significantly over the last two games, where they beat team they beat the Astros by what like twenty combined runs or whatever the hell it was. This division's not fifteen combined runs. I definitely think the uh, the Royals will be in the wild card contention when the Chiefs start practice. So again, I don't think a wild like card, so I don't think a wild Here, card's coming out of the AL Central because the division's not great. I, so I hear you. I think they're going to be in the. Wins. I think they're going to be in the AL Central race. That's what I'm willing to commit to already, based off of watching this team. But I, I don't think you can say definitively they're making the postseason. I just also think one team is coming out of the Central. So to me, you're going to have to win the AL Central. If you look at the AL East and what you know, that'd be a little different animal. Yeah, I just don't think a wild card's coming out of the AL Central. So to me, you got to go win the AL Central if you want to get in the postseason. I mean, Baltimore has been a very good team. They went and swept the Red Sox mm -hmm. coming off that, and the Royals. Yeah, they're eight five. Won that four. series against the Orioles. Mm -hmm. No doubt. No, I mean, we were talking about that. Like you can. You I was can, talking about that when I was worried that this team was like I was just hoping they were going to get back around five hundred. Hey, we asked that question before. Remember, it was too early, and I was like, why are people bringing up the fact that, like, well, the Royals are going to be 500 again? I heard someone brought that up after they were 0-1. 0-1. Someone asked me if they were going to be above 500 again. I'm like, we don't have to do this. We don't have to let this consume us. Follow-up question. Will the Royals ever be below 500 again? Mm. Will the Royals, who are currently five games above 500, ever be below 500 again this year? Got a week schedule. You're really asking if they're going to win at least 81 games, too. Well, they got the Mets and the White Sox. I'll say, I'll say yes. Yeah, I'll say yes. We got three against the Mets. The White Sox are next week too, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the it's the Mets, then the White Sox. Yeah. Okay. Well, then the <laughs> Orioles back at home. There's some there's some wins in that group there, man. I know, but I'll still say yes because again, unless you suddenly think they're winning 88 games, like there's a good chance they're gonna be right around 500. Meaning, yeah. Like if you Which think they gotta flirt with 500, somewhere so they're along gonna the be way. one yeah. game with it. I'll I think I think the the odds would be in my favor to say no, and I'll, I think I'll, I'll get, go with that. Uh, I think it'd yeah. be minus money to take yeah. the uh, you know like to say the like. Nope, they're never going to be under 500 again. That'd be incredible. I mean, Look, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all rooting for That'd the same. That'd be awesome. We're all yeah. rooting for the same thing here. Well, we can already, you can already, it's it's so early, but you already can feel the buzz. Imagine if we get, it's June or July, mm -hmm. and this team is in a spot like this, and, and the energy can can carry the city through the entire summer, and, and we know what it's like when the city is feeling baseball. It's un, it's unbelievable. All right, I'll be right back. I got to go get uh, changed. I'm going to do Pat. Go you change? I got to go get changed. I'll uh -huh. be right back. To sing oh, your song, you gotta go get changed. Yeah. yeah, I gotta get changed. Okay. Look, you gotta, you can't just right, roll have, in here and not give people what they you want. Have a Pasquatch outfit? Well, I have. A, I would call it a Despacito outfit. Uh, I've got okay. a go, so, go so I'll be right back. Go change. Do you think at least one game they could let you be the Sasquatch that walks out there? I asked to sing as the opening. The I, no, I'm no, fine no. with either. I'll be the Sasquatch if they let me. I'll be the Pasquatch. Yeah, you be the Pasquatch for one game. Sure, if they let me. I'll take that as a make, side gig, but I want to sing. Make I Cody, do it, in, make Cody do it on July 25th when it's 104 <laughs> degrees outside or something. That, I don't know how. I mean, that's what's crazy. You, you think about those summer months. So he's leaving to go change. Uh, mm. 
into a different shirt, I think. It's like that Casey uh, Wolf in I, Summer I, in St. Joe. I, I have no idea. I, this is news to me. You I, ever I, smelt I, the wolf? N- no. <laughs> With the wolf, man. When it's like 100 degrees in St. Joe. The closest we wolf, went, man, Bink, was it's pretty ripe. hot dog race last year. This show. Yeah. Somebody won his ketchup. I can't remember who. Um, but we did the hot dog derby race, and the costumes were it was hot. terribly smelly. Yeah. It smelled terrible. Imagine that wolf. Imagine slugger suit. Do you, someone says, do you think Cody's coming back with a shaved head all of a sudden? I don't know. It has mm-hmm. to do with him singing Pasquantino. Again, the rule is now, because Vinny has started hitting since the song, we can't stop him. We, we cannot stop the singing. So he gets to sing until Vinny has like an 0 for or 1 for 5 day or something, which hopefully doesn't happen it's, for a while. It's not only that, but he was on with Vern that night. We As we all take turns doing the uh, prop bets yeah. for the Royals. Yeah, I'm on tonight, I think. And... Uh, Cody said, I'll take uh, Vinny mm-hmm. one and a half bases, <laughs> more than one and a half bases. Yeah. He had that right away. I mean, he totally yes. nailed that. Someone said, if they lose, someone said, if the Royals lose. But again, this is a Vinny bet. It's not oh a Royals my. thing. Oh, my goodness. Cody. It's, someone says, it's the wardrobe change. If it doesn't oh. work today, they're blaming it. You got too greedy. Wardrobe? They're saying, the you've, wardrobe? Gotten too, they're saying you've gotten moment. too greedy. So what are you? Okay, you have. It looks like I just was at the Kane Brown concert last night. Cody looks like he was at the country concert. This last is night. a. And I. I I don't, it looks I like, like spot on. I want you to know that I took this shirt out of my closet and I cut the sleeves off for this. This shirt will never be worn it, by me again. It looks Just so like I can try to concert. match the energy of the lead singer from the Despacito video. Where's the beard? I can't grow a beard. I didn't shave, though. I left the stubble I had on my face for the Despacito I can't video. tell if it's Despacito or if it's just like, <laughs> can I just say it? Like we're just like some white trash like singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I don't know. Look, it is what it is based on the Larry clothes. Larry the Cable Guy like outfit right here. I'm cutting my own shirt for this. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy outfit. Larry That's the Cable Guy? <laughs> yeah. Cody the cable. Do I need all, to be more tan? All you need is the goatee. Oh, look, I'm, I'm pale as well. There's something about just the, you know, this is why we don't wear tank tops. You know, either you're not. Mm-hmm. When I you're got not, a bit of a farmer's when, tan. When you, <laughs> you know? He's got the beard in his head. It's Club 610, baby. That's what I'm saying. It's Club 610. You guys ready for Pasquantino? Or well, let's just get to it again. You get to keep singing until Vinny has a cold, yeah, cold, right. cold, cold streak or a game or something like that. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, and the rule is also you have to do this on Saturday and Sunday if it keeps going. Well, you know, I guess I'll find some way while I'm out there. Without further ado, the third straight day of a live Pasquantino. Get a call up in my direction. Thankful for that bat, it's such a blessing, yeah. Turn every situation into heaven, yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Italian breakfast you always slay. Got me dreaming of wins all day. Make me want to savor every moment slowly, slowly. You hit the baseball hard, love how you pour it on. Need Vinny on the roster, just put him on. Then let me whisper in your ear the only words I want to hear. No, take it slow so he can play long. This is the play-by-play part. I really should edit this out. I like. Well, it gives our ears a chance to calm down. It gives us a chance. I'm going to be honest with you. Just for this, just because it's a Friday, I will try to do the Spanish part without looking at the lyrics. Well, you got sunglasses on, so I don't know what you're looking at. I'm trying to look at the screen. I can't tell. Pasquantino. I want it now. It's time for Pasquantino. What else can he do? He's the great Balbino. It's a jackpot at the casino. Pasquantino, think of the kids, all the little ninos. It's like a shot of cappuccino. Give us what we want, it's Pasquantino. Quiero verla tu bat, quiero su tu bate. Que las enseñas a tu ritmo, tu ubicación favorita. Dejo me convivio muchos honrones. Hasta provocar mis gritos. To a vida, to nombre, Pasquantino. I want it now. It's time for Pasquantino. What else can he do? He's the great Balbino. It's a jackpot at the casino. Pasquantino. Look at the kids, all the little niños. It's like a shot of cappuccino. Give us what we want. It's Pasquantino. Pasquantino. That's it. That's all I got for you today. Thoughts? That was impressive, man. That, that was like one a, wasn't that was, bad today. That was like a no-look dunk. <laughs> you shut your computer, 
You read those lyrics. Or they didn't read the lyrics. He said the lyrics. Someone says, for some reason, I'm visualizing Cody dancing while singing. There's literal video of this. You could just go back and watch it on Twitter or Twitch. You wouldn't even have to go that far to find it. The beer in your hand, it was epic. I was going to say, if you had, if you had, for Gold's, uh, yes, explanation, or if you had a Coors Light, it would have totally fit. But I didn't. You did not. But I didn't, you know. Is, is that the, the shirt, one you want me to use, I had to cut uh, the Cody? sleeves off of this. Uh, the, the one with the Corona in the hand? or the, Yeah, or I think so. One? That's fine. Okay. Yeah, you gonna rock that on your trip if, this weekend? If you, if, you didn't, if you didn't get a chance to see it, we're gonna post a side by side with Cody. Yeah, and I guess do you want to clip out the video, Drew? We'll post the full video of Pasquantino heading into the weekend for people. Oh, perfect. You know? So you just want to clip out that little bit? Yeah. We'll we'll post the whole song for people going into the weekend. You know? Someone says this is definitely more redneck vibes. In fairness, he had kind of a looser plaid. I only had so many plaid shirts available in my closet. This one's probably like ten years old. The one you hadn't taken out. It was the one I had. It was the, the one I had that I was willing to cut the the, the sleeves off of. The Pete Sweeney collection. <laughs> the Pete Sweeney collection. Well, he can have it. This could be a Cody Gold Garage item if someone was looking for a plaid shirt with no sleeves. <laughs> a plaid dress shirt with no sleeves. Someone says, like a kid rock. <laughs> someone says, kid, now they're asking me to help other players. Can we get a Nelson Velasquez song? Is that my job to like make up songs for people in slumps? Oh, I don't know how many more songs I can handle. I think we'll stick New with this one. I think this we'll is, stick this with one's this good one. for you. I think we'll stick with this one for a while. Okay. Since I started singing, seven for nine, Bank. Eight RBI. A walk. Two Royals wins. Is he like third on the team now in RBI? Yeah. Third or fourth? He's like 45th oh. in baseball all of a sudden. He's one of the higher RBI guys in the sport. So it eight worked. RBI and, you know what? 13 games will get you. It worked. That's all that matters. Is that it worked? Singing wearing the Pasquatch costume. Above the Hall of Fame. Well, I don't. I mean, I would. Look, if I know that would be an amazing moment in this show's history. Best ever. If they would let me sing the song live at the K. And yes, if they require that I do it in the Pasquatch costume, yes. Yes. I'm in. Have to wear the Pasquatch. Even even gold as you requested. It's July and it's 105 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Got to do it with the Pasquatch with the sunglasses. I'll do it. You know, whatever it takes. I gave it my all today. I'm just a couple more of these beers. I'll be, I'll be feeling great. I think I got another one in there if you need another. Oh, do you? you drank yours fast. I'm sorry. I didn't. Gold and I sometimes drink a little too slow on Club 610 because we still talk. Way too fast. Yeah, it's I drink way too fast. Think what a. Way too fast. How how many wins do you think the Royals actually get? If they made you re-guess right now. And we can do this again like when they get maybe a quarter pull into the season. Gold, I think we'll give an official yeah. like win total update. 110. <laughs> that feels right. No. Yeah. Is but that eight, what they're on eight, pace for? I would say 84, 84, 85. I think they're on pace for like 107. Yeah, or something. they are. But what do you think? 84, 85? Is that realistic? 87? Well, I, I, asked, I don't think it's out of the question. I asked Cody if I could just, you could just lock in 83, would you right now? He said no. They're on pace for 112. I still would lock in 83 right now. I, mean, I want to lock in like a I guaranteed know I know race that, at the division. I know 83 is not fun because people are like, well, I want a fun summer. If they get to 83, that'll be a fun summer. I don't know. Like, what, they're not continuing on this current pace. That's just, that's not going to happen. They're not winning 110 games. Let me ask you guys this. Like 2015, would you take that World Series or that they made the playoffs three or four times? Obviously the World 15? Series. Well, but 24, like, would you take a World Series this year to have 10 more years of mediocrity? Yes. Media, okay. be, by okay. the way. You just said mediocrity. I've definitely no lower up. than mediocrity. Yeah, I was about to say they were worse season. than yeah, mediocre. So this has been the whole thing with like the the Rays stuff we've discussed. Obviously, the, you know, it, fifty six win seasons suck, but I still wouldn't trade a world, the fourteen and fifteen season for seven and years of. I know I wouldn't trade two if you, two years of going to the World Series, including one, for eight years of coming close to winning. No, I'll I'll, t I'll take the ch championships. Absolutely, absolutely, I'll take the championships. But with that said, when you haven't had one, it's already been almost a decade. Yeah, now now give me some competitive seasons. That's where that's where I'm at now. But I don't I still wouldn't trade with that. 14 and 15, the, the the fall in the month of October in 14 and 15 was as good as it gets, man. And that was also pre Chiefs winning titles. So that's what made 14 and 15 so special. People my age and others like had never experienced what it's like to have a championship pro no, team. 2003 was like my, my World Series for my entire life. Curtis I was born a year after they won that. Dude, I love that. Scanning. I was at the K thirty times for that two thousand three team. I would have, I would have gone to every single Jose Lima start they would have let me go to at that time. But now I understand what it's like to have real winners, and that's way more fun. But that's the so, other thing. It doesn't have to be either or. The Rays haven't won a World Series. You guys aren't yeah. wrong. But they've made it to World Series. They are in the mix for World Series in a weird way. Are lucky. 
if you just say, hey, you like either take a World Series in 2024 or for the next 10 years, I guarantee you they will be in the playoff hunt every single year for 10 years oh, sure. and take your chances well, in that's World different. Series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take my chances at the World Series knowing that it's kind of an unpredictable monster. Yeah, if you're letting me roll the dice, like I get in the dance, I can see what happens. Someone says, why, why are you saying they can't win 110? Well, there's been like <laughs> six or seven teams in baseball history to win 110 or more. So that seems unlikely. That's, that's why. Speaking of World that's Series, fairly obvious you one see they're going to honor the 2014 team that's yeah, how long that's been there. Yeah. Ready to have a, like, yeah. They're going to do bobbleheads the and they're holding like a, championship team. a fancy event at at Union Station as well uh, for Royals Foundation and, and charity. Have a great weekend, fellas. Hope everybody has a good weekend. We're back at it on Monday. Let's see if this winning streak can continue. A sweep of the Mets? Why not? Let's get to 10 in a row. Get to 10 in a row. That's, that's the nice. goal to talk about on Monday. We'll also see how our Masters bet goes. Hopefully, Tiger makes the cut. We at least need Tiger to make the cut with a strong round two today. So we'll, we'll check in on that on Monday. The draft.